Cheers, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's the me and the lads, and we are commentating the prime card. Come on. Ah. I've got Josh here, my right hand man with us. We've got Joy, the finest the kickoff has to offer. Lawrence Oswecki, the pro boxer, and of course, the creator of YouTube boxing. It's Joseph Wella. Hello, mate. All right, mate. How are you doing? Uh, I'm bloody good. And uh, first question's for you, bro. Yes. How does it feel mm -hmm. six years later? after you thought this idea up, that it's now putting on events like this and it's gone this far, mate? Honestly, I think more than anything, it's like being proud. Like the fact that, you know, influencers are known, well, from back in the day of just like faking stuff, you know, just, you know, pretending like they're the real deal or, you know, that they're going to commit something, but it's not legit, you yeah. know? And the fact that we've got so many that are like putting their like lives committing into it now and mm. it's on this scale... <laughs> Mate, it's, it's unbelievable, and mm. it is, like, phenomenal to see. So, yeah, man. You started it, and you fought, obviously, you fought KSI after mm -hmm. you fought uh, Theo, and KSI got the win over you. He's yeah. now gone on. He's now fighting a pro boxer, lad. Mm -hmm. Like, this, like you said, this is another, another level of fighting. Is anyone in the, on the table expecting him to win or gives him a serious chance of winning, other than me, because I have? I think the best person to ask is Joe, seeing as yeah. you've been in there with him. Well, this is the thing. Like, I'd say the fighter that he was against me is different to who he is now. Mm. Yeah, you were kids, right? Do you know like, what I mean? Like, I kind of look at you like kids back bruv, then. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, as in, even when people talk about that fight now, I'm like, bruv, that, I, was a, I was a little boy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, no, it's like a school fight. Yeah, do you know it? what I mean? It's yeah. like, well, this, is, oh, you, this happened to you. It's like, mate, that, I was a little boy back then, yeah. and, and so was JJ, mm -hmm. right? And obviously, the fact that he's now training with people that aren't just, you know, obviously, Vidal is a good coach, but he's not professional boxing coaches like he's got now. Mm -hmm. I think the game that he's bringing is something that pff, I think he's got a chance tonight. I'm just mm -hmm. going to throw it out there straight up. And it is only by knockout, I will say. You know, the, the thing that uh, really dawned on me when I was making my preview was, okay, so he's fought these guys, Joe Fournier. They're not on the level of Tommy Fury, right? The skill gap between a Joe Fournier and Tommy Fury is massive. So JJ is multi-millionaire. He doesn't need to take this fight for the money. If anything, this is a lot of hassle when he could be making money easier ways. So in order for his boxing coaches to go, yeah, take the fight. You, you can win that. You win that they must have seen something because if he goes in there tonight and what Tommy Fury says will, ha will happen actually happens and Tommy mm. Fury is levels above and there's a gulf in class and he humiliates him, well, then JJ is going to turn around to his boxing coaches and be like, well, what the fuck did you put me in there for then? If I, if I, Because they must have seen a lot in training. So yeah. their reputations are on the line big time tonight because he's going to turn around to them if, 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 they, if they're completely wrong. What do you make of it, Loz? I can't see him winning, to be honest. I mm. mean, I, in the day, I see Tommy Few as the actual professional boxer. Um, mm. I mean, he's kind of not in that world at the moment, but I see him as the real deal more so than KSI. Um, and there's nothing that I've seen from KSI that's really impressed us, but I suppose the, the guys that he's been fighting haven't been that great either. Mm -hmm. Whereas Tommy Fury, I just think he's a little bit more of a real box and I just think how's he going to get past the job like KSI's got this low guard yes he's meant to have a bit of power mm. but is that enough I can't say it but uh, that's just no no I, I've, I, that's what most pro boxing mm. guys are saying and you're the, more of an expert here than anyone right so I, and I, I'm not disagreeing with you in terms of logic yeah. but like that's where my brain's like what the fuck have these coaches been saying? Because yeah, they've yeah. been getting them in there with pros. Yeah. They have to have. But then, like, there's being in with pros and then there's actually, like, delivering against pros. Because uh -huh. it's like, you can get beaten up and whatever, or these guys, you know, being in there with them, but are they really going for it if mm. they're on a payroll? Yeah. Do you well, know what uh, I mean? Uh, apparently, they were putting bonuses on the head, saying, oh, okay. if, you, if you hurt him, we're going to pay you even more. That's the sort of level we're talking. So, okay. And I watched an interview with JJ, and you know how he normally gives it the whole, like, KSI! Yeah, Tyson yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Like, gives it the whole thing. Uh, I love it, but th th there was one interview with TalkSport where it was just dead ass. He's like, I don't even need hot for this one because I've got my game plan. I know what I do to these guys, and I know he won't be prepared mm. for it. And it was so calm and logical. Mm. I was like, what does he know? Like, because yeah. why Why do you throw your reputation on the line? But that's what I'm saying. It's like that, the way in which he talks, it sounds like someone that is absolutely confident that they've backed it up. Yeah. But we haven't seen the evidence yet. Yeah. Like, admittedly, that's because he ends his opponents so, so early quickly, yeah. that we haven't had to see it. But like, you know, if he's really getting it stuck on him, can he 
cover up mm. and then you know counter punch and work on the inside and do do things like that like we haven't seen it but he's so confident bruv let's let's pause it here because uh we, i want to recap the the prelims fun um we seen the heavyweight title won by tempo arts anyone disagree with that decision I personally didn't think it was going to go Tempo's way mm. at the end of the fight. I sort of looked at it and I thought, do you know what? He did really well in there. And actually, despite uh, physique and maybe some of the run of how the fight went at times, he definitely actually looked like the more comfortable man in there. You see it when he was backing up on the ropes and he was trying to roll with the shots, almost like a Poundland Tyson Fury at times. <laughs> but obviously that shows that you're comfortable in a ring. You're not, you're not massively daunted by the occasion. Um, but I did think come the end of the fight, I was actually surprised to see it was a split decision. So to then see it go that way, says somewhat of a shock, to be honest, yeah. Yeah, I just felt like even though he was more of a fighter and Chase didn't really know what he was doing, Chase was just landing more. Mm. Yeah. yeah. His, his engine didn't stay with him, did it? He kind of ran out after about the second round. It was just his, the batteries had run out. But uh, he definitely looked more of a comfortable boxer in yeah. there. But just the sheer size difference. I think it was the other guy was just more of a natural athlete. I don't think there was... If, if it wasn't for the fact that that guy was an athlete... He probably would have won the fight, but he didn't have the engine to steer with him. I think that's what yeah. it come down to. Yeah, I think as well, like, you see this in, say, the Astrid Wet fight. Like, where it is a bit messy, like, it's not great technical boxing. Like, it is a bit difficult to go, was that a definite punch yeah. that landed? Was it not? And I think, like, maybe there's a little bit of that, because I, I sort of do feel like Chase landed more, but... Obviously, Tempo did look maybe a little bit more technical. Maybe they were a little bit more flush, his let's punches. Talk about, let's talk about Swarms. Gets a change of opponent. Yeah. Been training for probably at least a couple of months. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan Taylor got arrested in the, in the run-up to the fight. Actually. What do we think about that, by the way? Like, surely you, d you he must have known what he was doing in terms of, like, getting arrested. What was he doing? Trying to get into the Big Brother house? It, 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 I don't know what he did. But, like, if you're... Look, like, Misfits have agreed... Uh, from a Misfits point of view, like, I talked to the guys, obviously, and, I, and they're like, we've paid you a salary to be mm. here. You're... So, like, I get you're a content creator, but, like, mm. this is why you're here, and yet you managed to somehow get arrested in the days running up by doing silly content things when you're supposed to be having a boxing match. Mm. I just think he'll kick himself when he looks at it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's the sort doing? of thing that like, when he gets to being an old man and he's like, I had the opportunity to fight at that venue on that card mm. I, and I just did what I did, he'll, he'll kick himself, I think. Yeah, like I don't know how old he is, but I think at this age, like from, from the age he looks like, mm. I think he would be over that by now. Yeah. Um, and the guy who turns up, Ed Matthews, mm -hmm. you on the run-up, on the, on the walk down, you were like, he's going to win this. Yeah, I thought Ed Matthews would win. Like, I look at the fact that, I haven't watched all of his fights, but I know he was in there with Blueface, the rapper. Yeah. One of his, one he was of very his, game. Yeah, one of his mm. last fights, obviously, he got stopped, but he went out on his shield in that fight. And I sort of looked at it and I thought, right, Blueface, probably 6'3", a lot more intimidating I'd say and swarms obviously um, and you showed heart against him you kept coming forward you kept even hitting him with shots even in defeat and I sort of looked at it and I thought this is quite a step down in my opinion from blue face to swarms mm. in terms of the, the uh, influence of boxing world so I looked at it straight away and I also think that when someone does come in at late notice and you know they haven't had to sell tickets they haven't almost had to because you know like preparing for a fight mentally is exhausting do you know what I mean like as much as anyone can say yeah I'm able to block it out mate I can only speak for myself I check my opponent's social medias I look at stuff you know what I mean you do do it people don't like to admit <laughs> they do it yeah. but it can be draining you know what I mean and I think like the the fact that you've come in at late notice, it's almost like a free roll of the dice, isn't mm -hmm. it? And obviously then you sort of see the character that we see from him on social media and by all accounts, he is like that in real life. I just sort of thought, yeah, this, this fella's going to go in there, throw hell for leather, and he's going to end up he's going to end up beating Swarms in this fight. So that's and, what and, sort, and of, Swarms, sort of happened. The, the saddest thing is, is I, and my criticism of Swarms in the, the run-up was, He's so defensive minded, like mm -hmm. he's he's not aggressive. Mm. It's backwards. Let me throw the jab out and just hope you stay away from me. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly he went straight back to what he knows. And Ed Matthews threw a few to get him backed up, gets him in the corner and unleashes him and knocks him out with and 
it's for swarms, you got to think to yourself, I didn't even get a shot off. Mm -hmm. I just ran away and got knocked out for it. Like, I think Ed Matthews can definitely be in some fun fights as well, you know. Like, I'm not putting him at a level where I'm thinking, I, I think he's around the same weight as, like, Gibb and people like that. Yeah. I'm not actually putting him at that level, but I do think so long as he gets through the ropes, he's going to be in fun fights as well. He's good value yeah. for money, I, I think. think. I think a big thing about him is his game, like, the way he comes forward and he's just like, I just want to fight. And <laughs> I feel like a lot of these influencer fights it is who is the more aggressive one yeah. who's willing to just get in there and that's you know the biggest person we've seen so far do that KSI right and I feel like you know the fighters like like Ed Matthews like Gibb that are just going in there like going I don't care I am going to go for this mm. like they have like, a lot of success and the maddest thing is is KSI didn't even get swarms out of there that quick no yeah that, so that is the thing true like, that is mad right? man <laughs> like fucking hell so swarms when he's had actual no training overweight Lasted, wait, how many rounds? A two. With three, KSI? Three rounds, something like that. I, think it was it, two, I can't remember if it was two yeah. or three. I think it was th third round. Something, something like that. <laughs> and then there we go. Got 13 seconds against Swarm, uh, against uh, Matthews. Yeah. Can we talk about that knockdown, though? Was it, was it a true knockdown, or is, he, well, is the, his leg okay. got it? Oh, so this is a good uh, point. Let's talk yeah. about it. So this is the thing. I've just seen footage posted by at KSI News, <laughs> right, that says that, well, no, that shows a video of almost his leg or ankle breaking. It literally looks like it snaps. Mm. And I don't know whether that's what has caused him to go down or whether it's the left hook. But what's difficult is that we didn't really get to see an angle where you can see if that punch landed. I, I think the, the hook put him down and yep. on the way down, he's gone down awkwardly and then he's really fucked the ankle. So he was on mm. his way down anyway. Mm. Like, he's probably fucked anyway, but the ankle's... And it really reminded me, I broke my ankle as a kid when I was like 15, 16 playing football went in a sliding tackle and I sat my arse down on my other mm. ankle yeah. and it was just like that. So, yeah, fair play. Like, it yeah. could just be the ankle, but... When, uh. you, when you looked at him when he went down, he, he didn't look really hurt, but he, like, he looked like he was in shock. So, it, there was obviously something else going yeah. on which we couldn't see at the time. So, <laughs> I do think it was the ankle that kind of stopped him getting back up. Yeah, it's just normally like, say in football, like you hurt your leg you grab it immediately. Like, your brain thinks to grab whatever you've hurt, right? Yeah, and it's the way that there was not. it was about like two and a half minutes later, he's like, oh, it starts hobbling. And that's why I thought, oh, maybe he's pretending like he's hurt But his you've leg. been in the ring, right? You get the yes. adrenaline when you're fighting. Yeah. Do you, is it some of those things you've walked out of the ring and you've gone, oh, fucking hell, that really hurts. For sure, you know I'd I mean? say there's an element of that. Like, when the adrenaline's going, obviously, yeah, you're not going to feel certain, I think as humans, we're designed for like mm. survival to not yeah. feel certain things when you're in that fight or flight state. So yeah, maybe after a few minutes he started to feel it but generally speaking if you snap your ankle you're going yeah, to I, mean, gonna, no, I pretty, was going to say pretty yeah, quickly so to be fair Lawrence if you, you do your like, Achilles <laughs> if you break a bone pretty soon you're yeah. thinking oh my god I've just done yeah, that correct. that don't feel right but yeah. I'll tell you what I do feel sorry for Swarms in a way because if it is a serious injury and that's mm. all the the only reason he's lost the fight he's going to have a long time waiting to be able to redeem himself. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's not going to be a quick turnaround of, oh, well, that didn't go. It's almost better to get knocked out. Because yeah. then if, you, if you're committed to it and you want to carry on boxing, then you can go, all right, I can't fight for 90 days. Or mm. With the border control, you can't. But I can't fight for 90 days, but at least I can get back in there. That's a, that's a six-month layoff or yeah. something if he has. Yeah, straight up. All right, let's bring it on to one of the biggest talking points. Go on, True Jordy. What are you saying? Dylan Dennis. Mm -hmm. Did he go too far? I don't think he went far enough. No, joking. Ooh, <laughs> no, 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 you're not joking. Because I actually think there is an element where we all can see how in war, well, you're telling me there's actually any rules. Uh -huh. There isn't. And I think mm -hmm. like, you know, low key, most people are actually like, yeah, like take it there. What else are you actually going to get into the head of Logan Paul with? on a lead up to a fight but I, I think there's that unwritten rule where you kind of stay away from the family I mean I, yeah. thing, I personally you know I mean? wouldn't you know what I mean I, would, yeah. I wouldn't go near the family but there are you know if you're talking fighting can you say that there ever really is going too far but sometimes you know the fighters say stuff in the spur of the moment they get mm. carried away and then they have a little thing right they leave it there but this is a ongoing thing yeah kept going, like, this, oh, this is, is daily for months yeah yeah yeah, daily. yeah. This, it's that's, crazy that's every, it's every morning Good morning with a picture of this man's <laughs> fiance, yeah. and then repeated posts later on that day. It's commitment. It um, is. It can, is can, can, I, can I ask a question, right? Does anyone here think that Dylan Dennis is anything in this fight, a boxing match, but the underdog? He's the underdog, isn't he? Yeah. Dylan Dennis knows he's the underdog. Yeah. So, to an extent, if you ask me, would I do it? No, I personally wouldn't do it, right? But can I understand why, when he thinks he's up against it and the odds are against him, why he's gone down this route? Yeah, I can understand it. I'm not saying I'll do it. I can understand it. Because when you do feel like you're the underdog in a fight, 
any edge yeah. you can get, any little edge. And this isn't just a little edge. This is completely, this is almost life-changing what he's done, you know yeah. what I mean? And it's a massive thing. But I can understand why he's done this because he's probably thinking, right, my best bet is to make this guy really, really angry. He doesn't stick to the almost methodical style of boxing that we've seen from him in maybe like the second KSI fight where he was very cautious almost. A lot mm. of stuff behind the straight shots and whatnot. And Dylan Dennis is probably thinking, I know we've got a pair of gloves on this, a boxing match, but the last thing I really want to do with this guy is have a boxing match mm -hmm. because athleticism-wise and just the fact that he's done boxing longer, better striker, he's going to get the better of me. So if he's doing it to gain an edge... Again, I'm not saying I'd do it, but I can completely see why let he's me, gone down Let me pull route. you up on a couple of things, though. Is Dylan Dennis, uh, I don't think, is anywhere near as smart as you're giving him credit for. Mm. Like, I think, you know, remember 6 9 Yes. I think he's the fighting version of 6 9 He just loves to chat shit. And, uh, the, and this is the maddest thing is, is like, in so many different scenarios... It, he proves that that's just who he is. So Logan brings out the to catch a predator guy, Chris Hansen, uh, at the weigh-in, and you, and 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 Dylan laughs at it and is like fair fucking play, that's good. And then he goes to Chris Hansen, "You paid your taxes yet?" Mm. And he straight away yeah. goes in on him, no. and he's like, "Yeah, I heard you were going to jail because you didn't pay your taxes." The guy was like, "Oh shit!" Uh, uh, and he <laughs> yeah. he literally had him on the back foot, and I was like, Logan Paul. Went to all this trouble, and now Dylan Dennis is just destroying the guys put in front of him verbally. And so you're like, okay, this is who you are then. They put him on a lie detector test. Have you ever done a lie detector? No. Right, I've done one for YouTube before for a bit of fun. But even when it's a bit of fun, you get the lie detector on, and you're on. All of a sudden, mm. you're like, fuck me. It's like, uh, who wants to be a millionaire? Like, the lights come on you or whatever, you know? And you feel like, okay, I can't fucking bend the rules, bend the truth or anything. Right. Yeah. That man was ice cold on the lie detector. Mm. Do you respect Logan Paul? He says, no, tell him the truth. Do you think you're going to win? He says, yeah, easily, tell him the truth. Like, do you think you shouldn't have said any of those things? No, tell him the truth. Like, everything you'd think that would be coming back as bullshit all came back as telling the truth. So he genuinely thinks Logan's a shit boxer and that he's going to win tonight. Like, it, mm. and he barely even flinched. I mm. was like, I was kind of like, it's Impressed. like when you're watching a serial killer on yeah. Netflix and yeah. they're like lying, Just but they bloody. believe their own lies. Mm. Well, that's the thing. So far, like he has demonstrated, like he does believe what he's saying. Like mm. you think, oh, we'd be able to tell at the press conference or at the weigh-in, oh, he's acting a bit like, oh, he doesn't actually feel it. But he's he's seeming almost like the more controlling force, the mm. more the more composed, the quick-witted one that's coming out with like... He's in his flow state. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Mm. And as well, like thinking back to, uh, well, thinking why he, he may have, done such an onslaught like he's done with the whole fiance thing i think this is him well i don't know whether it's for his first like proper time but it seems like he would never have had it on this scale of getting the interaction on social media oh that's and that is drug. so addictive yeah so addictive that i think he's like you know that's why he says it's just business it's not personal this is just a way for me to get that fucking dopamine every day it's probably it's giving him that good feeling on the door and the dough, mate. Do you know what I mean? So I actually think there's an element of that. Like, he's falling for the almost social media trap of loving the interactions. Do you know what the funny thing is as well, yeah? The sort of outlook doesn't, doesn't align with the storyline here. So say we hadn't sat through this and I just described it to you and I said, right, these two guys are fighting and one has started posting pictures and everything and bringing up, digging up the past about this other guy's missus. You go, gosh, bang out of order. And maybe I've just got a sick group of friends or something. But the reaction, especially like amongst my group of friends that I spoke to about it, everyone's gone, oh, Dylan Dennis is funny, isn't he? I like him. Yeah, yeah, I like him. Maybe it's because we've got a weird sense of humour or something, but I actually do genuinely think that it's going down quite well amongst people, like the way Dennis has gone on. And maybe that's got something to do with Logan Paul's character and, and potentially for right or wrong people, maybe not warming to him as much. But it hasn't, it hasn't been a thing of like he shot himself in the foot by doing no, it. I actually it, think it's he's turned. gained followers yeah. At the start, this. though, the, the other fighters, like UFC guys, like Bisping were coming out and going, no, you don't do that. That's out of order. Mm -hmm. And then a, a month later, Bisping's like, God, you can't say he's not funny, can you? <laughs> and it was that change. And, and and I do think like it's not just uh, Logan's... Pro Obviously, Logan's pissed people off over the years. And there's the crypto thing. And there's all these other reasons why people are you know uh, don't like him right now. But it's also them as a couple. I think what they represent present to a lot of people is here is two people you'll never look like them you'll never have what they have they are perfect in every way and to watch someone try and destroy that it, it plays into the negative it, it feeling that a lot of people have within them that 
some people just want to watch the world burn, and that's why mm. Dylan Dennis is the joker of this whole thing. And people kind of like the Scarface type attitude. Mm. That's yeah, wild. Yeah, without a doubt, I think people. It is sad that that is a fact, but like when people are doing well, like Logan Paul is, like no one's doing better, bro. Like, do you know what the I mean? The going to be a billionaire. There is yeah. an element where, 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 when he like announced, oh, now I'm getting, you know, married to the girl of my dreams as well. It's like fucking hell. What else can he get that's yeah. perfect, right? So almost, yeah, there probably is an element where they're like, oh yeah, he fucking deserves it. It's actually, you know what, fucking Logan Paul. Yeah. So yeah, man, the world I, is weird. I, I think uh, Dylan is clever to feed into that part yeah. of people's brains. Yeah. And Conor McGregor, I mean, he watched his best mate did it for years, right? Like, mm -hmm. not in the same way. But if you watch the way Dylan is talking shit now, it's quite Connor-esque, actually, in these press yeah. conferences. I'm thinking, I'm watching him going, you know, if you actually had hands, you'd be a, mm. a star. Yeah. You really would be. He'd be but massive. unfortunately, you throat punches like a 90-year-old fucking arthritis patient. Well, that is the thing. Like, any sparring footage you see of him throwing hands, oh. there's not a single one that has any poppet on at the yeah. end of it. Not None of them snap. They're all just sort of these pushing up, sort of pushing hands to set up almost his takedowns. Mm. And, you know, like you were saying this morning with Wade, mm. his distance management, he just keeps getting clocked. <laughs> like, it's almost yeah, like he doesn't in, know his in, range. In the MMA fights, he gets caught in that. Like, MMA fights, obviously, completely different distance to, to boxing because boxing's so close up. Mm. Whereas MMA, there's a lot of jumping in in the middle of yeah. up, But he's always in that dead space. And, whoa. And, like, he has to back off and go, oh, fucking hell. And I'm like... Mate, if you're struggling with MMA distance, there's a reason why, you know, MMA fighters struggle with boxers because mm -hmm. their distance management is even better. Mm -hmm. So I, I personally think he's getting, I, if I think he's getting destroyed tonight. But if I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to be Logan right now because it's mm -hmm. such a lose lose. Like so much you, pressure. You have to almost knock him out in the most brutal, perfect fashion to satisfy the storyline. Hundred percent. Let's not get if it wrong. If he gets out there with the d decision. If, if Logan Paul does not humiliatingly knock this man out, it's a loss. Uh, straight up, he needs to demolish this bloke. Um, my thing is, though, is I feel like Logan does smother his work a lot, right? So look at Mayweather, yeah. okay? Diving in a lot. And I feel like with the tangling up, that could play into the jujitsu side. Yeah. Just trying to see how it could work for Dennis. But I feel like that could be an element. Well, he's convinced Logan's going to gas. Yeah, so that could be a way to knacker him out. Yeah. He keeps tying him up and just getting him in like the slight chokeholds oh. and stuff. Like that could actually be what ends up knackering him out. The thing with Logan gassing, though, is we're neglecting a big part of the job. Someone can gas. You've still got to finish him off. Yeah, You've yeah, still yeah. got to outbox him. Yeah. So I think we're going to see a hug fest, if I'm honest with you. Yeah. And it doesn't really sell the fight Look, that well, but that's I what said I think. That. I said that in my prediction. I do feel as well the element of how stressed out both of these blokes probably would have been on the lead up to this. Logan, for obvious reasons. But the lawsuit element onto Dylan, like if he's really losing all of his money and some, like by hundreds mm. of thousands, like you're not going to be like fucking relaxed as hell you know what I mean with, with all that going on so I do feel like we could get both guys get into actual fight night and just being spent <laughs> and it being actually quite yeah like you say a bit of a cuddle fest is it a real lawsuit like, have we seen oh, yeah. the legal papers oh, yeah. like, it is, it is actually real. happening going for the life yeah <laughs> Yes. Um, 150 grand she's suing for for damages now there's been a few people who've passed comment on this uh, other MMA fighters have spoken out against it and said you know you shouldn't be doing that uh, Brendan Sharp did. Logan Paul bit back at him. Chael Sonnen said something funny, which he goes, how can you sue for damages about your reputation when no one knew who you are before this happened? Mm. Like, you had no reputation to damage sort of thing. But to be fair, like, it's it's not good. You know what I mean? So but say I, we're in Dylan's going to lose that. He's got, He shouldn't even <coughs> show up for that. He should just pay the money and accept the fee. So how much he'd have to pay? 150 grand. But the, he has my thinking of, of someone who knows a little bit is if you then try and fight it, you're going to lose anyway. So you're going to pay a whole load of lawyer costs and then 150 grand as well. But is there the element that it's already public content? Um, the issue is, is I feel like they must know that at least one of, you know the video that went viral, I think that the 100 million view video where mm. she's talking into a camera, the claim is, is that maybe that or something else was a private video that was hacked that then was given to Dylan and uh. Dylan somehow posted it unaware maybe uh. that it was a private video. Right. Um, and yeah. But this is when you're talking about taking it too far. Like if there's a legal element to this that's <laughs> happened, then obviously it has gone to a level which is 
not allowed. <laughs> like it's mm. it's illegal. So if he does, if we're saying that he is going to win the, uh, sorry, that she is going to win the court case, then surely he has taken it too far by the definition of mm. of the law. But like, like, is that not is it not but, as simple as that? But there is the fact is that the amount of information that she's put out there, it's like she had no respect for herself when she's talking about <laughs> having. You know what I mean? She's talking about I want uh, a fat. Yeah. Sausage, well, apparently, <laughs> uh, I mean, apparently that was a private video I don't know how uh, you know. Well, but, I don't know yeah, at this but, point I don't know it sounds like she's talking to the world but yeah. what, what about the when she's uh, the YouTube clip when she's just getting a getting a breast so yeah. I mean she's she's got no respect it's for awful, herself so like, awful can you all, send me that <laughs> <laughs> I've got it saved this guy. Um, but exactly so I just think although it's too far but with her in mind of what she's already been doing and putting out there I think fair play really to an extent because uh. He, he's got to get every advantage he could, and I think it's worked. So I personally think one, one interesting thing he dropped on a an interview recently was that. And that, look, with Dylan, you take everything with a pinch of salt. But that lie detector test made me think maybe he is fucking telling the truth <coughs> sometimes. He goes, "Yeah, uh, I know Leonardo DiCaprio. Now Leonardo DiCaprio was the most famous of the guys that she'd mm. been with." And he went, "I don't want to say too much, but he's very aware of what's going on." And I wondered, like. Did he give you the fucking tip after all of this? And that's when you started digging. What, did you have a really? conversation? You know what I mean? Like, really? You know? Because yeah, who is supplying him? Well, I, I think at the start, it was him just digging. <laughs> but then I'm pretty sure... The it, <laughs> he's the king of the trolls, right? So his DMs must be flooded with his minions helping. Um, yeah, at that point, I would imagine. But how would they get them? I'm just sort of like... To have you know what Reddit's like in places just, like that? Really? I'm, I'm just asking for a friend. Yeah, yeah. in it. I don't know, fucking hell. Um, yeah. Oh, and, and one interesting bit was he was out last night. Yeah, mate, I saw out. that. So I sent that to you this morning, right? Because mm. I, I saw it and I was literally like, so this bloke is being pictured, even if he's not drinking, right? He's surrounded by shots, different random people, different influences out late at night. If he is doing that, like surely he is not taking this seriously and he is going to get seriously what are you hurt. Josh? I've, I, I was just thinking about there's a bit of footage that I saw, which was Dylan asking Tommy Fury how to box. Oh, how to I, I feel, I feel that like that can't be real. You know, that looked that looked a little bit like oh, look, oh if I like taking the piss, I felt yeah, I yeah, can't yeah. actually be, not, be asking how to, how to jump. I don't. Yeah. But this is the thing; it seemed so dead. He's doing. He's doing. He goes, yeah. So can you and 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 Tommy goes like, well, yeah, like you know how sometimes Tyson. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, yeah, Tyson sometimes does that. So because I like the. <laughs> You're just watching him with yeah. these three D glasses. Yeah. On. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What are we watching? Is, is there a possibility though that he's got in his head in the same way that Connor got in Aldo's head, and he just comes out and he just absolutely just throws a punch mm. and just gets clocked and done? But Do you, got, is that not, not a well, possibility? Which person, which Dylan's person? gonna clock him. But like Dylan is the Conor McGregor here. Okay, mate, well, I think Dylan's be become fair, the star of this show. I actually do. Yeah. Without a doubt. And I believe actually that could be the thing. Logan, if he really does lose his head from the get go. That could be. That's. I feel like that's his only just, real downfall. downfall. Just a, a note from the uh, everyone following us. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. We're underway for the tag team boxing match. Uh, B. Dave starts us off against Nick LMAO, and uh, B. Dave lands a decent Ooh. shot. And Nick actually called for B. Dave to be the first one in there, and he was like, "The minute I hit you, you'll want out of there." And Dave is going the opposite way. He's actually like pushing him into the corner, and and but but um, Nick has actually got a really good win over Jay Swingler. Um, Wait, did he win? He, he beat Jay Swingler, but I think. Did yeah. it, did, I swear, didn't it officially get announced as Jay, though, but it was a robbery? Oh, maybe, but I, I, think I, I remember like him beating Jay. Just in my, I probably put that right <laughs> in my head for him. <laughs> Brian, Brian, can you explain to us who have never seen tag team boxing before, considering you are a member of the Shadow Government? Yes, Shadow um, Government member. <laughs> can you explain to us how this fight is going to work? Okay, so basically one dude is going to tag out when, he's get, when he doesn't want to be in there or gets tired. Uh, Pineda here, who was one of KSI's first opponents on Misfits, uh, has definitely gotten a bit better, is basically going to be the one who's going to try and put the beating on these two. But the issue, and Pineda's actually hurting Nick here, um, Alex Wasabi, who hasn't been tagged in yet, is a pretty good boxer. He's got a win over Deji, uh, which is a really credible win at this point in uh, in Misfits. Um, and I think he's actually from the same part of the world as Salt Papi. Um, I actually love this concept when I'm watching this. I was yeah. about to I mean, ask you, do you want to see this I mean, in real... In, in real box? Whoa! Wasabi puts him down! Pineda's been dropped and he looks bad. Oh! oh. 
That looks Oh, bad. he's really hurt. Nice. This is a real bad night for previous yeah. opponents of KSI. They all <laughs> yeah. get dropped. Like can you, flies? Can Quicker. you tag your mate here, though, and get him in? Like, yeah, yeah, away? You, yeah, you can tag your mate in, but the problem is, is Pineda was the one they were hoping would carry this tag team, and he is really uh, struggling here. So if your best guy is struggling, you got to worry tagging in the little guy, you know? Tagged out. Do you know what confuses me, or I can never get my head around with a tag team boxing? I agree with you. I think it's a good concept. I think it's, uh, I think it's a lot of fun, right? But uh, a few of us around this table uh, have been in the ring boxing, even in sparring, right? Sometimes you'd be getting battered in sparring. Your coach goes, another round? You go, yeah. I couldn't imagine being in there, someone throwing punches at me and thinking... I'm going to tag out now. Yeah, it kind of goes, it kind of goes against the whole premise of like being a warrior, being yeah. a fighter. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, I've had enough. Oh, Please. wow. They're all, you know what I mean? oh, yeah. they're all around. <laughs> you see, B. Dave, what, what B. Dave's trying to do is he knows they're in trouble and he knows he needs to hold this down while Pineda gets his uh, shit together. So he's just wrestling these guys. Yeah, it's, 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 it's an ego thing, generally speaking. When you're in a spa and the law was be so, uh, your coach will go, one more round, will you just do a few with him? And you're thinking, oh, I'm absolutely not good here. But yeah. you will not say no, it's just an ego thing. But um, Oh, he's getting counted. So there was a slip for Wasabi, but they, they're counting it as an actual drop. It was just a slip. So right now, they've had one apiece in terms of being dropped. The punch so ha wait, how does this get scored then? Is it that it's now 1-1? One, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is how it works. So no, knockdown not, for knockdown. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be, it'll be what, 9-9 nine, nine or whatever, I guess. Uh, okay. Like that. So essentially the scoring is exactly the same. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, but you don't have, do you have to tag out once you've been dropped? No, you can no. do what you want. Okay, okay. Yeah. But I think it's a wise move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to need a whiskey soon, like, because fuck, this is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, Loza, would you ever see this in professional boxing? Could you see it happening? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all right for a bit of fun, but uh, box, like, like, like you've just mentioned there, you don't actually, but even if you're tired, you're hurt, you don't want to have to get out and let someone else kind of finish up for mm. you. It's just not what you I want. I feel like it's more, I don't want to say it because it sounds like I'm sticking the knife in on this. I really like this concept. Yeah, yeah. Uh, misfits and influencer boxing is in a world of its own. But exactly. when you talk about the professional side wow, of boxing that, or, or really sort of competitive side of boxing, I just think like... It's almost worse than taking a knee yeah, if you no, didn't need yeah, yeah. to. It's but this is why, like you've just said there, you can almost put it in a category of its own. You don't put it mm. as it's its own thing, you know what I mean? So You also don't see the more serious YouTubers do this. Well, I was going to ask no. that. Who's who's the uh, sort of top name that we've seen compete in one of these? You're watching them right now. This is the right, best okay, version yeah, they've yeah, ever yeah. done of it, really. Like these two guys who are struggling, they're fighting a newly formed tag team, but they beat the shit out of these two guys last time. Mm. And what you had was kind of what you're describing. The two guys who were getting beaten up, they kept getting beaten up and tagging each other as quick as they could. Yeah. It, was, mm. it was funny as fuck because you're like, these two are getting battered. And when one of them got tagged, the other one was like... Shit, I'm back in here. You know, you know what the problem with it is, though? Like, say, for example, um, you liken it to a football. If you're a goalkeeper, you could be having a brilliant match, but your defence is absolutely <laughs> rubbish. Yeah. Imagine your partner's just getting battered at every opportunity, but you're doing quite well, well. Well, I've suggested a new one to them. Now I'm on the shadow government. Yeah, what's I've, that? I've said... Um, boys and girls versus boys and girls. So like a couple's version. Because I'm just thinking, right? Just so go with us here. Okay. Right? Imagine oh, your good. girlfriend's watching you getting the shit kicked out of you. Mm. And then you have to tag her out in shame. And she's beating up the girl for you. <laughs> yeah. Like that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, this is going wild so far. Wait, There's been a, a few drops. He's, this was a football tackle here. This like another, this was a slide tackle that he did. Is this another ankle down. injury? This no, no. It was a slide tackle. He's crying. He got stamped on. Was he crying? Did he get stamped on? <laughs> yeah, he literally, he literally looked like a slide tackle. The referee I'm not even, I'm not even like. I feel sorry for the referee because he's really not in a. Uh, he's literally like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> and the funny thing no, is, you're I mean, sad about that referee. That's a British boxing board of control. I was just going to say, yeah, this is the real deal. He was thinking, Grace, what am I doing here? Yeah. I really went to new laws here. <laughs> I've seen this guy ref in like British title fights, probably higher. Yeah. It is good fun. Oh, he's done all levels. Yeah. This guy's. Mm. Oh, uh, nice. and Alex Wasabi's fighting well on the back foot. Yeah, B. Dave is yeah. getting lit up big time. I don't know how many more of these you can take. And B. Dave is. He's, he, his thing is just to break the rules. He's like, fuck it, I'm going to tackle you, mm. do whatever I have to do. Think out the four fighters that we've seen in the ring so far. Alex Wasabi's the one that, it, to me, looks is a sort of level above the other three. Yeah, he's legit. He was supposed to fight KSI. And then KSI, um, he pulled out uh, through injury. Concussion. But, yeah, which was serious, to be fair mm. to him. And I, I, I think that, that was when they tried to get that Nazi. 
Remember that Nazi who was coming? At first, yeah, they, they drafted in a new opponent and he had a big Nazi tattoo. And then they were like, oh shit, we can't get yeah, him. We can't we've just really... seen the Nazi tattoo. <laughs> yeah. So then they ended up with two in one night. Yeah. And that's how that came about. Um, but yeah, I think Wasabi's decent. This is crazy. Back this. the headshot, yeah. So how long has this been? When did this come in, this, this just, tag team? Just, just in the... Uh, this since Misfits last few uh, months yeah. and, and as a small council member like are there certain things I'm a very serious small <laughs> member, right? as a very a small senior member of the four of us <laughs> right so do you have any inside info right <laughs> that, that you could like let us in on, on what may be coming up like as in I don't know like is there going to be a triple threat match or anything just sort of tables, ladders and chairs yeah uh, like yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can let you know one thing tonight exclusively on this stream <laughs> what's that true uh, Jordy Conor McGregor is in the house tonight oh. and they're definitely working on things I don't know how, what but he'll be involved in something tonight okay so this right so you've got Conor McGregor you've got Jake Paul you've got KSI Right? Surely we're going to see something kick off. And Logan. I mean, a and Logan. how can one arena contain those egos? Yeah. I don't know. Um, I already know that, uh, wow, Pineda's just clocked uh, Wasabi, to be fair. I don't know. I think McGregor must be aware. There's there's money and entertainment in this for me in mm -hmm. the long term if the UFC. If he goes back to the UFC and, they, and he gets clocked by Chandler, mm. this is his next best thing because yeah. there's an actual relationship there between... Prime and the UFC. They sponsor the UFC. So it's not like other situations where people have wanted to make dream fights with Connor and Dana shut it down. Prime are literally putting money in the pocket of the UFC. So if they go, look, let's just put on a huge event. UFC can... Because Prime are wanting good advertising, right? So And McGregor will want advertising for his whiskey brand. There, there's so much opportunity there for them to create a big event around a... KSI versus Conor or Jake Paul versus Conor McGregor. I just think that will happen because yeah. when there's too much money involved, like Floyd with Conor, it just happens. And you, you, you reckon in your heart that Conor McGregor would take on a YouTuber? I do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I do because I think with his leg, I think the reason it's ah. been so long delayed since he came, well, he was supposed to come back a while back. They announced the Chandler fight months ago and it keeps getting pushed and pushed and pushed. I just think that if it doesn't go well and, it, and he goes, the leg, the leg, um, then <laughs> the leg. he's going to do what Anderson Silva did and take a boxing when his leg had the mm. same exact injury. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense. I mean, he loves fighting. He wants to have a scrap, but he just can't fight at the elite yeah. level that he was once at. Mm. And these YouTubers, in theory, shouldn't be able to lace his boots. No. But yeah, I think you're, I think you're right. I don't, I don't think he would be in attendance if he wasn't having the plan mm -hmm. of a bigger picture of that happening. And when he called out KSI, I was like... Yeah. Shouldn't it be the other way around? Yeah. KSI calling you out. I mean, that really said a lot about where his head's at now, in my opinion. He's thinking... And he's not stupid. Like, in terms of promoting fights, he's one of the greatest of all time. He's planting seeds, like, mm. you know, when he's giving it... Brian, couldn't box out. you said that if he comes back and gets beat by a channel, this is the next best thing. Yeah. You know, quite a lot of people, maybe not the sort of fighting purists here, but quite a lot of people would argue that this isn't the next best thing. This is the best option, including fighting Chandler. Because if you take away legacy, I think that, okay, say for example, if you do get beat by Chandler, the next fight's, the next MMA fight's not going to pay you anywhere near as much and you're not going to be in the line for a world title fight. It's not like boxing where there's different organisations and different organisations have got different agendas that they want to push. In the UFC, you're all under one banner. Mm. So you're not going to then go for a title straight away after that. But if you go in here and you fight, let's say, a KSI, you fight one of the influencers, I just think there's there's more paydays and potentially in McGregor's mind for probably a lot less work and a lot less risk. Mm. Yeah. You know, if you look at the boxing compared to MMA, no no matter what sport you prefer, you can't deny that there's multiple ways you can win an MMA fight. There's more risk in an MMA fight than there is, especially in the training side of it, for a boxing match. There's so I think... There's only one UFC fight left if he loses to Chandler, and that's Nate Diaz 3. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it, once that's over with, his legacy is done. You've won two titles, two different weight classes. Give it up. But um, if... Uh, if he loses to Chandler even, I think he should just fuck it off and come over to Misfits immediately. Yeah. Who's, he, who's he calling out, though? Like, if he's there tonight, who's he calling out? 
Because there's the, a lot of options. The biggest right? fish is Jake Paul, in my opinion. And that's not, gonna miss, yeah, but he's not, even not a misfits fight. That's no. the problem with it. And I was thinking that exact same thing. And when you were saying it, I was thinking the one I'd want to see is him against Jake Paul. But that's not actually a. That wouldn't be under the misfits banner. You'd assume. Yeah, it'll so. be under. It would be a, so. Conor McGregor won't do anything where he's not a co-promoter, regardless. So it'll be UFC. Conor McGregor, sports and entertainment, and then MVP. But the reason he's there, in my opinion, is uh, DAZN own uh, or have partnerships with both Mis Misfits and MVP, uh, the Jake Paul one. Mm -hmm. So, and he has sponsored um, Anthony Joshua fights. Remember when he's seen him down in yeah. the south? Yeah, Katie so, Taylor. Uh, he's sponsored Katie Taylor. He, he, so, Conor's got a good relationship with DAZN already. So, it all just fits in. Like, whoever he chooses to fight, he's, he's going to fight them. Mm -hmm. No one's going to turn. It's like Floyd Mayweather. If he wants to fight you, everyone says yes, mm -hmm. don't they? Um, we're in. Uh, we're, how many rounds are we? I think we're in. I think that we're in the, the fourth round now. Uh, do you want another drink, Joe? Another one? I, um, oh, do you know what? I'll, I'll go with another beer. We'll have another beer. <laughs> I'll have another beer, mate. Anyone want drink? Anyone? Anyone? I'll have a vodka lime soda. Yeah, there. vodka. Okay. I'm good. You want another one? All right. We'll, we'll have two vodkas um, for the boys. Um, I've got a super chat here for everyone to uh, answer. What are our thoughts on the UFC? So we've had two uh, fights fall through, haven't we, recently? We've got Volkanovski and Uz Usman stepping in. What do you think about that, Brian? Uh, I love it. I've uh, interviewed Usman once, and he was the, one of the coolest fighters I've ever talked to. And for him to rock up on a week's notice against uh, Hamzat Chemaev, who's like the biggest rising star, arguably, in the UFC, and go, yeah, fuck it. And it's a number one contender's fight. And I gave him a good shot. And I thought about him when you were talking about how it's nice to come in at short notice. Mm. Um, and also Mike Bisping won his title on short notice. Like they often talk about some people just psych themselves out and just kind of rocking up and, be, and having that when you're like, you know what, I've been fighting 15 years. What do I need a training camp for really? Um, aside from getting fit, but a lot of these guys, like Loza, for example, you're fit 24-7. Especially, yeah, if you're a disciplined guy anyway, yeah. it's a huge advantage because I'm exactly like that. You p you play the fight over your mind, you over and analyse it, and before you know it, you've drained yourself before you've even gotten there. Yeah. When you, mm -hmm. Whereas if you just rock up and you kind of just fight, generally speaking, you have your best performances sometimes. So just uh, de depends how you are, but I, I think most athletes become over overthinkers because you know this game's a science now so people are looking at the nutrition everything that from the strength conditioning to the sparring whereas you just walk in there there's just no pressure yeah. like you say it's, it is like playing the lottery it's just like it's a, a chance for you to perform and if anything you become even more of a hero if you win on the short notice mm. it's a win-win most of the time you look like a bad motherfucker for sure yeah. yeah. if you lose oh well you only, you only had a, it was short notice you weren't prepared mm. properly but if you win god you know and, what I mean and we're answering questions and that's what I love about that because Hamza is uh, dangerous and he really looks like I've, I've never seen someone so dominant so early in the UFC and if 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 he beats Usman like he's beating other people then we know he's the real deal but if if Usman beats him yeah. well because Usman never moved to middleweight out of respect for Israel Adesanya because they had the three kings the three kings of Africa being uh, Adesanya and Garnu and Usman they've all lost their titles now so Usman because Adesanya's taken a break Usman's like yeah fuck it because he has a win over Sean Strickland Usman so he's going to move up the middleweight if he beats Hamza all of a sudden Usman might be mm. a double champion because I think he's got a really good chance against Strickland. It's a coup, isn't it, to get that big a name in on such short notice? Like, it's a UFC, uh, isn't it? I, I'm a boxing man. I, I, obviously, I'm a casual MMA mm. fan, if anything. But um, even in boxing, rarely would you ever see that short a notice a not, week. To not, get a, a not an elite like fighter. Not an elite mm. fight. You no get way. it in the low level, but not at elite level. So but e even in even in this, what does uh, sort of play into what we we're saying and what favors Usman is like when we have seen it in boxing. I'm sure there's plenty of times when the opponent that's been bought in doesn't win. But we look at Andy Ruiz. Not that he won the fight, but do you remember when Klitschko got bought in a short notice against Lennox Lewis? I can't remember who pulled out now, but you know what I mean? That was a, that was a fight when he really made his name and put up a good performance. So it does often favour. In, in the advantage often is as well, forgetting your preparation, the other guy's been prepared for someone completely a different. A style, innit? Mm. It, so like, it's sometimes, if you've say had a 12-week camp and you've been tunnel vision on a certain style... Yeah. Even though you know you've got that new opponent, it's very hard to switch out of it because you've been drilling it in your shadow box and on the pads with your certain sparring mm. partners. It's mm. very difficult to change. So if anything, that's another massive advantage you've mm. got as well. So. I wonder if that, there's an element of that with the AJ Hellenius fight. 
where you know what obviously we were very critical of how he was in that fight but he was preparing for Dylan White yeah yeah do you know what I mean like, very I think different. we mentioned that on the stream didn't we it, it definitely plays a part mm. do you know one of the one of the main differences I'd say there though is um, AJ had sparred loads of rounds with Hellenius and I get sparring's uh, one thing and, and, yeah. and that's another thing but like I don't know why but almost like knowing someone and sparring with someone takes away that first level of like anxiety emotional investment just yeah. because like I know this guy, you know what I mean? I know he's not going to come here and start throwing tables and whatever, <laughs> like, you know, I sort of know this guy, it's fairly cool and whatnot. Um, so I do think when you've sparred someone, but I don't know whether Usman and... and uh... No, I, I, I don't believe so. Um, but on the AJ thing, I think that's a good place to actually talk. We're, we're getting a decision here soon. We're seeing the highlights. Credit to all these lads, because I tell you what, if there's one thing this card's shown us so far is everyone feels like I've got to give everything yeah. tonight like prime card everyone's watching mm -hmm. and these guys are literally f like there's nothing being left in the tank nah. so credit to them um, and the AJ thing obviously we've seen uh, he didn't have the fight that we were expecting against Hellenius uh, yeah he got him out of there in the end but it didn't look great up till then there's rumours he's going to be training with the old coach of Tyson Fury uh, Ben Davidson Really? He's literally secretly training with him because that. Ben got asked about it in an interview. Heard you training on the Joshua and he was like, um, well, it's not about that tonight. And he, he sort of, but when you're thinking about it, if your goal one day mm -hmm. is to fight Tyson Fury, well, who knows Tyson Fury better? Yeah. The man who rebuilt him up to the point of where he's now training with the Krunk Gym. And don't get me wrong, he's a different fighter now, but like Ben spent, mo like lived with Tyson Fury yeah. on the couch and all of that. Mm. So, and I think the thing with AJ is he's obviously got kids in the UK, being away in America, it's a lot of dedication. And we're not saying the results of a brand new and evolved AJ. So I think he's looking for options in the UK and that looks likely where it'll probably be. Uh, what do we make of that? And also what do we make of the fact of, the Deontay Wilder fight has since then been tucked under the... Well, I think uh, it's mental how you can have like the UFC doing what it's doing, like people jumping in at late notice of that scale, yet in boxing, like we've seen it for years now where it's just like the big ones, just why don't they get made? Like realistically, there's going to, you know, if it's a matter of a few hundred thousand or million, mm. like money-wise, like, but, but if, if they want to fight, realistically, surely they can just make it happen. So is there, a, is it that one of these fighters don't want to fight? I think, I think it's down to the promoters because they've all got different promoters, managers, and they all want to keep a hold of the, uh, the guys who are earning the most money. So they're like, they're all frightened to take these risks, whereas at least with the UFC, they're all under the same banner. Um, so it doesn't really, I mean, the guy who owns the UFC is going to oh, make really? money regardless, yeah. you know what I mean? So whereas if you've got the Frank Warrens, you've got mm. all these this, different... A lot of this is down to Saudi. So yeah. Saudi was supposed uh -huh. to be footing a huge bill for Deontay Wilder versus AJ. But it looks like they've gone in the direction of, let's put everything on Fury versus mm. Usyk. We're not that bothered about that. And I do think AJ's performances haven't exactly, like the fact that he's barely selling out the O2, the excitement for Anthony Joshua is, is going downhill rapidly. And that's someone, I really like the guy. I think he's a fantastic fighter and he's done amazing things, but it is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. Like tonight is going to shatter yeah. anything that Anthony Joshua has done for a long time. Yeah. So, and these are kids here, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Compared to him, like the legacy he's got. Mm. So unfortunately, the great thing about Saudi Arabia is they're bringing so much money that even Tyson Fury is willing to fight Usyk, mm. right? But now people like AJ and Wilder are going, well, we want some of that. Let's hold off. Let's not fight each other until we get that. But the problem is, is you're overestimating your value. You're overestimating the way people see you. When was the last time that AJ had a stellar performance that everyone raved about? It's been a while. Mm. Same for Wilder. Your value isn't what you think it is. So if what you're selling isn't getting anyone buying in the market, then you're overpriced. So I think uh, Eddie, if he really, I think Eddie, what he wants to do is manage AJ's career and build him up and cash out with a huge fight. If he wins, great, we've got another one. But if he loses, then we know where we are. And I think that they were hoping for Deontay Wilder to be that guy. But there's been a, that's, that's do we not hold to, off. Do we not have to ask a question here? What is going on with Anthony Joshua's training setup? 
If he does go with Ben Davies, training. If, he uh, does, if, if he does go Ben Davidson, that's what four no, trainers in no, 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 six I, fights. I'd say it feels like it, maybe it's while he's in the UK, he's f- training with him. I don't so, know. I don't know. Really? If ben, I don't know if Ben will take him on if he's then going to go back and train in America with a different trainer. Because one of the main things of why Ben and Tyson split in the first place was because Tyson said he wanted to work with Sugar Hill alongside Ben Davison, and I know this like for certain. I've had this on inside source. Like it was because Tyson said he wanted to work with them alongside each mm. other. Obviously, Tyson had spent time uh, a long time ago when Emmanuel Stewart was still with us out in the Cronk gym and whatnot, and obviously had obviously met Sugar Hill through that, and Ben Davison wasn't happy with it. So I don't think that that's a possibility. I think AJ's either with Ben or he's not with Ben. And actually, when we, when we look at Ben, it surprises me very much out of... Um, a loyalty factor that he would train AJ, uh, especially if AJ could potentially then go and fight Tyson. Mm. That's mad. But I think when you look at Ben as a trainer, you shouldn't really look at the job he did with Tyson Fury because Tyson Fury's Tyson Fury, mate. Like, you know what I mean? A lot of the work then without discrediting Ben is still um, the foundations laid by Peter Fury, obviously. But when you look at Ben Davidson as a trainer, you know, getting Billy Joe back into shape, Lee Wood, Josh Taylor when he was boxing with him for a bit. He is a top trainer and I do think he could get a lot out of Joshua, but it does concern me how many trainers he's going through now. It it comes back to something that um, Loza said years ago about... Anthony Joshua being unsure of himself and I think the constant changing of his mind is a problem and when you look like if you're training with a coach it takes sometimes years to feel the full effects of that if you're constantly uh, changing um, that could be a problem I think it's worrying because like you say um, this is just far too many changes like it it takes time to build a relationship with a trainer and to fully understand one another Um, so yet another change but it for the fact that if he's, if he's going towards thinking down the line I'm going to be fighting Fury maybe that does make sense but um, like you say for the loyalty side of things I would be surprised if that does go ahead um, but that yet again Ben might be thinking you know what it is he left me for uh, well, where was Hill. the loyalty for me where was the loyalty yeah. for me so you know what I mean I'll, I'll help well, Joshua I'll go against that though because there was loyalty for Ben shown in the first place because Tyson Fury did not need to give Ben Davison the opportunity when Ben Davison at that point was known in boxing for uh, coaching Billy Joe Saunders in obviously the very flat performance we saw from him that time at the XL I can't remember who he fought Ben Davison was not a name yeah, in, in, in boxing around that time okay. Tyson Fury as brilliant as I think Ben Davidson is because I really do think that I've actually been in gyms and, and seen him at work with his fighters he's brilliant Ben Davidson but I do think when you talk about loyalty here Tyson Fury gave him the opportunity in the first okay, place okay I, I think there's some truth in that for sure like it, be, Tyson made Ben however Ben was literally like nursing the guy practically when he was in the throes of his mental health issue. Yeah, I think more than anything, it's probably like he was a good friend. Yeah. And who helped you know who really mean? at the end of the day? Ben also helped him and look where Fury went from there. Yeah. So you could look at it from two angles. They both benefited. They both benefited. Yeah. So realistically, he doesn't owe Tyson nothing really. You know what I mean? He helped Tyson. Look where Tyson is. Come. But, but in, in life, you don't need to owe someone something to show that loyalty to no, them. No. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I'm not saying, I'm not, this is completely hypothetical. None of it might happen. But I think like sometimes if I want to show loyalty to you, it's not, it doesn't mean you, ha- I have to owe you something. You have to owe me something. Sometimes I just think, nah, come on, I've worked with him. I'm not then, okay, then let, going to go let's and... flip this. Let's say down the road, Ben does get another random heavyweight. Is Tyson Fury supposed to not fight that heavyweight because Ben's training? Nah, the game's like, the game. It's it, like it, Jose Marino goes and manages one team. It doesn't mean he's now not going to, face Chelsea or, you know, Man United. It's, 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 it's I, business in some I, ways. I definitely hear where you're coming from, Joey, mm. like emotionally. Mm. But also I try and put myself in Ben's shoes and think you've got the chance to say you've coached Tyson Fury and Anthony jo- Like he's also got kids to provide for and a life to Bills live. Bills to so pay, I, man, yeah. It, it, it is tricky to mm. say no to Anthony Joshua. The, mm. the, the only other thing I would say with it, and again, like I don't want to... I don't want to be misquoted on this because it sounds like I'm talking about hypotheticals that may never come to fruition, Mm. but the relationship between a a fighter and their coach is not purely, okay, once we throw the jab, we're going to do this. When this happens, we're going to do this. A lot of it is like, there's dark times in training camp and, mm. and we know full well the Tyson Fury story. There would have been a lot of dark times there. So if I was Tyson Fury, I'd feel very uncomfortable knowing that inevitably at points I'm going to have opened myself up emotionally to this mm. man. I'm probably going to have told him things that maybe I wouldn't tell 99% of the people in my life and stuff like this. I'd feel very awkward then or very uncomfortable then if I then knew that the, my arch rival almost who I've always been on a collision course with whether it's you know took detours in the roads is then going to be working with him and coached by that person It'd be painful I think, yeah. I think <laughs> as well like when we're talking about the loyalty aspect 
it is a business at the end of the day and Ben Davison knows fighters come and go. It's like, it's not like they'll have a fighter and that's their whole career. They'll have another career with every other fighter that comes through the door. So for him, and as, and as well, we talked about loyalty and, and, and emotionally side of things. Um, being loyal to Tyson Fury doesn't earn him a wage. He's got, a, he's got his own family to pay, like he's got bills to pay. I wonder if I mean? Sugar Hill's still even training Tyson after the things Big John's been saying. And even if you look at uh, Manuel Stewart, which is Sugar Hill's, is uh, Manuel Stewart's nephew, he, t he, he, fought, uh, he trained Lennox Lewis, then he trained the Klitschko. Where, yeah. So like, it happens all the time in boxing. If you look at the history of trainers going with different guys who've fought mm -hmm. each other, it's, it's nothing new. Shane realistic. McGuigan's done it multiple yes, times, exactly. hasn't he? Exactly, yeah. so it, it's you, nothing new. Have you new. heard what, I mean, we're, we're going on a detour, but the McGuigan stuff uh, about, um, what's it? Cole name? Frampton. Frampton's books come out and he's been saying that they've took money off him and all of that. That's, so, yeah, that's, that's been known ages yeah. sort of thing, but never, I didn't realise the book had come out to say that. Yeah, there's oh, been yeah. a lot of, yeah, there's been lot of legal talk. stuff there. I bet. <laughs> Yeah, it makes you think though because there's a lot of people saying the same things. You've got to sort of think this must be true. You know what I mean? <laughs> so um, yeah, well, that was a fucking good fight. It, I, I didn't even see who the fuck won. I think I it, was it, it was a draw. It was a draw. Yeah, yeah. It was a draw. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they both hands both hands. Yeah, oh, yeah. Shit, what were we watching? Yeah, yeah. Wasn't this geezer in the middle like WWE? Uh, yeah. Coach. Jonathan Coachman. Yeah, yeah. That was a good fight though. A lot of people in the chat are saying like they really enjoyed that fight. I, I, so I, tag I, team yeah, is back. Of the fights, tag, tag it was, team is it here was, to come. It was very even. Do you know when you watch yeah. both guys, it was a very competitive fight. We uh we mentioned WWE there. Yes. I looked up a few numbers earlier on, right? And this is this is crazy because like I think all of us around this table growing up probably grew up through that sort of golden generation of wrestling, oh, oh, WWE. <laughs> and 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 the funny thing with misfits, right, and influencer boxing is like the first place my mind goes to isn't professional boxing no. when I'm when I'm drawing comparisons it's WWE it yeah. always goes to WWE mm -hmm. Tonight, this this fight is projected to do over a million pay-per-view buys, right? Mm -hmm. That's a million pay-per-view buys when we know it's on at prime time in the UK, obviously a much smaller country than America. Do you know what the uh, record for pay-per-view buys on a WrestleMania was? Okay, I'm going to guess. I reckon, what, worldwide? What about if I give you the show? It was 2002, The Rock versus Hulk Hogan. Oh, that's going to be a nice, you know, like 20 million. 1.2 million. Shut up. 1.2 million <laughs> pay-per-view buys. Pay -per -view yeah. buys. That's the biggest one ever. On, on the biggest WrestleMania ever. For a bit of context, do you know what the last WrestleMania did? 500k. This is reported. 50k. No, we... 50k across well, two nights. Well, to be fair, a lot, a lot of them are subscription-based now. The WA things have changed a lot, remember? But this is a subscription base. I know yeah, they're paying I, I, for the pay-per-view. I, ju I just mean like the WA scenario is well, very... Also, in the whole world, deals. in the whole world, WrestleMania only did 50,000. Yeah, but I don't think that's like a... That might be people who paid for the pay-per-view alone, but everything else, mm. they are, they're on networks and the uh, WWE Network and all of that. It's I think different. the relevant one to draw a uh, conclusion to is more the 2002 You've one. You've broken Joe's car. I hope you're happy. Yeah. Oh. In the car. No, but, no, but you know, like <laughs> when we look at pay-per-view numbers now, a lot of people go, God, that's mad. It only did that amount of pay-per-view numbers. Allegedly, a lot of people have you know, different ways of watching fights. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So that, that's one thing I'd say ties in mm. with pay-per-view numbers. But it goes to show how big this fight oh, is mega. in the grand scheme mm. of things. Another thing, right? Conor Ben against Eubank, I'd say, I know it didn't happen, but that was probably the biggest British fight of the year, wasn't it? Scheduled Supposed in the last, be, last yeah. 12 months. That was yeah. the biggest one we had. They did a face-off, round table, Ade in the middle, uh, Eubank and Conor Ben um, either side. And that did 1.5 million views on YouTube, like as of right now, 1.5 million. It's had 12 months to accumulate that number. KSI against Tommy Fury in three weeks has done, I think it's 3.1 million. At least. Logan Paul against Dylan Dennis in the same amount of time has done about 5.6 million. Yep. So when it when you look at it and you see like the reach of these shows is absolutely and, and mental. And actually, if you now look at the likes of Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua, their, their face-offs, their interviews... Mm. Downwards, downwards. So, so downwards. then when we say about the Conor McGregor thing, to bring it back to that, why would it not be the better option in yeah. a way? Like, yeah. if you can get some sort of co-promotion, you can say, right, I ain't taking a flat fee. This is my percentage on the on the show or whatever. You would look at it and you go, well, if the UFC can pay you this. Speaking of numbers, this is a fight I made. Shout out to me. Oi, go on um, through, This is a fight between a guy called My Mate Nate and Winderson Nunes. 
the I think uh, my mate Nate is one of the biggest YouTubers in Asia. Uh, he's moved over there, speaks the language, got a wife over there, all of that. Uh, he's a huge YouTuber with like 20 million subs, something like that. Winderson Nunes has 40 million YouTube subscribers. He's got more than KSI and Logan Paul put together or something like that. Like, it's absolutely insane how popular these two guys are. Like, if So the idea is... If Winderson wins this fight, and it's very closely matched, it's not like I expect him to win. It's like I, I, I bet on him to win, but it could go either way. Um, Winderson will be setting up a mega fight in Brazil next year where they'll probably try and do a stadium in fucking Rio de Janeiro or something like that. They'll sell it out. It, it'll, it'll be absolutely mega because Jeez. he is one of the most famous people in Brazil. Like he's uh, but, he's a comedian, a musician. Yeah. So everything we see from the likes of a KSI, right. he does all of that over there. Why did you match them up like yeah. stylistically? Uh, they both lost to King Kenny, who's fighting later on in the uh, card, and they both um, showed good things. Like Winderson is kind of like an MMA style Muay Thai boxer. He kind of leaves his chin out to bait you in, and then pulls counters. And uh, whereas Nate's got a good jab on him and I'm like you know what I think you you guys should have a close fight and I, I, I couldn't like guarantee that guy could win so it's a good 50-50 uh, but also in terms of followers according to a guy uh, according to one of my mates uh, Wade uh, um, shout out Wade he um, has a friend who knows uh, about the social media analytics and they mm -hmm. said that the face off these two guys did was viewed when you talk about numbers this is a number Apparently, 840 million um, oh impressions uh, were done on that face-off, something along those lines. So, like, because you're covering South America and Asia, yeah. this is arguably the biggest fight, if yeah. you get what I mean. Like, yeah. in terms of eyeballs, there'll be more people that care about this. It might not be as passionate yeah. as the main event, but it's fucking huge. And, um, and Winderson, um, particularly has something uh, special about him. To be fair, already Winderson showing more head movement, yeah. showing in, when he threw the jab, then he got then back out of range. Yeah. Two things that he was doing majorly, standing right in front of King Kenny in his last fight. The thing that really impressed me about him against King Kenny, obviously he got the, he got the dog shit beaten out of him, uh, but Kenny's very high level, got a brother who trains pro fighters. So, you know, Kenny's evolved extremely quickly. And Winderson's only have, uh, I think this is like his third fight, maybe fourth. Um, but the thing about Winderson that impressed me was he stayed in Kenny's face the whole time and, and never like, you know, when you're getting a beating like that, and there's people around this table that know, like, you guys have been in the ring. You know how hard it is to stay with it and just keep a brave face and, and keep going. And I, I've seen enough to go, you're going to go away and learn after this. Yeah. You're, you're not a pussy by any means. You're hard as nails. But I don't know. Um, he, he's definitely trying to utilize good head movement there uh, for this level of fighting especially. He definitely has all the ingredients. He just, he simply was just outmatched. Like you, yeah. the, King Kenny was just a level above. That's all it was. Yeah. Kenny was looking like fucking Eubank in there, wasn't he? Yeah, he, <laughs> he was looking good to be fair. Oh. I think like what you're seeing my mate Nate do that maybe he, well, what Kenny did that worked was jab and keep moving forward, jab and and dictate yeah. the fight, take center of ring. Mm. What my mate Nate's doing here is he's, he's going away and I feel like that is what plays into Nunes. That's why he looked good in his first fight mm -hmm. and it's that that I feel like you need to nullify. Stop Nunes feeling like he's going to have center of ring. Yeah, it, it, if Nate doubles that jab up and like gets a bit more aggressive, he might be able to do a little bit of a job on him, but he's so far, he's, he, I think, but Winderson hasn't really thrown a lot of power shots yet. I feel like it's more about doubling it as you step forward as yes, well, exactly. though, because you can double it off the back foot, but that's one thing that King Kenny has over a lot of the YouTubers. I think um, if you look at all aspects of King Kenny's games, there's a lot of things that other YouTubers and other influencers that box on these cards do a lot better than him, but in terms of the jab, stiff jab, like mm. good, good stiff jab, moves forward with it and I think that's probably his biggest strength and I think that actually is so underrated isn't it like yeah. they say the right hand can take you around the block but the jab will take you around the world and that's one thing is with a lot of the YouTubers it's they don't like, know how no I look at it and I'm mm. like yeah but what you like against the jab so actually yeah. I do think that my mate Nate is uh, game plan wise I think I think he's doing quite yeah, well here in the I like stages. his jab for sure um, but N Winderson doesn't look too mm. phased by it. Uh, what Winderson, he's got solid head movement. He he loves digging those body shots in, mm. um, but he's too, it, it, for this, he's carrying a little bit of extra weight, so I think the guys he fights, unfortunately, are kind mm. of, 
They're going to be, they're going to have longer arms. They're going to have that reach on him. Um, but that was a really solid, yeah. like technically, yeah. for this level, that was a really good. Yeah. Best, uh, best we've seen. So yeah. Yeah. The thing I get from him, like his, his head movement's good. Um, he, he's, he's, his, his defense is pretty good, but his feet are slow. And I feel as if he hasn't got that spite. He kind, he's kind of just happy to make you miss, come back with the odd shot. He does, he's got no real aggression in him. Mm. Like even when he lost against King Kenny, he didn't look really upset about it. He just like, oh, well, you know, shrugged his shoulders. <laughs> It is what it is. Like, he hasn't got that fire in his belly. Um, and some of this is down to, like, how rich can you be and still have the dog in you? Like, this mm. man is rich, rich. Marvin you know? Hagler said it. He says it's hard to get up in the morning, uh, hard to get up for the runs in the morning silk when you wear silk pajamas. Yeah, yeah. I, don't know, I don't know if I said that exactly right, mm -hmm. but along <laughs> them lines. Yeah. He, he, what he doesn't want to do is give up another round like this, though. Like, he kind of... I think he kind of got outstruck there. I was really impressed by uh, my mate Nate yeah. in that round. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought I was very impressed by him. Stuck to it well. He's going to need good cardio because, I mean, it takes a bit less cardio to cut off the ring than it does to work on the outskirts like that. But uh -huh. I think if he can keep this up, I think that the game plan's working well. And if you're going to see any man have to go through the gears, it's obviously going to be Nunes. Yeah. You're right about the feet, though. He definitely Ooh, needs nice to, uh, good right he needs yeah, to close good. that distance now. Um, We're running a poll at the moment, and the majority of people are voting for Nunes to win. Okay. So keep your votes yeah. coming in. It, it, he, he he makes him miss and then doesn't make him pay for yeah, it. Yeah, it's yeah. almost like what I feel like's happened, he's looked at the King Kenny fight and gone, oh, I just kept getting hit because my head didn't move. So he's mastered this head movement but he's not following up. He's not actually yeah. gone, right, what do I do after that once, once I have made a miss? Oh, here we go. There yeah. we go, just he, as I say that. Yeah, he's definitely not punishing him enough, but yeah. Uh, um, and because Nate's got the longer legs and the longer arms, he's getting out of the way and then he's getting his off and then getting out of the way, isn't he? His borderline looks too comfortable. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know when he's just kind of not bothered? You're like, yeah. Mm. He's, like, yeah, but it's, it's, he's in there with a kid who's like, who he's just kind of moving around with. It's like, mm -hmm. mate, this is a real fucking fight, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you better win this. Mm. That whole thing of not, uh, that whole thing of looking too comfortable, though, yeah. does come from not respecting your opponent. And, yeah. and, and when I say not respecting, obviously the, analogy, uh, the terminology, sorry, for that is in a different way to in life. It's not about yeah, not yeah. respecting him, but it's like, when I'm in there with someone who I think, yeah, you're going to land some jabs and you're going to land some straight shots, but, but I will not, get to you. I will get to you. You're not going to hurt me, yeah. Yeah, you, you don't pay him that sort of respect because you know at, at some point your time's going to come and you're going to flip the fight on his head. And I'm not saying that's going to happen, but that looks he's like... He's clean. hammering the body now. Well, you kind of, even, even like Mike Tyson, you know, you, you look like he was fearless, but he yeah. had that fear when you, when you get interviews now. You've got to have a little bit of fear to give you that little bit of mm. edge, that mm. bit of sharpness. Um, it does keep you sharp, yeah. Yeah. He loves those body It's almost shots. like he's, he does a lot of sparring. And you, you know when you get that sparring partner mentality where you're mm. just kind of doing the rounds, mm. you're not really trying to win them. That's what I feel like Del Boy is like nowadays. Oh, without doubt, yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, before, like he used to spar with the Klitschko's and all them. You well should have seen him the other day. Wait, what? Del Boy, uh, Derek Chisora, he's in a fucking interview with uh, Elbrook. Oh, is this the choking thing? And, and Elbrook's been getting <laughs> Elbrook's been getting choked out as like a thing, like a yeah. gimmick. Cause as you do. As you do, as you mate. Do, yeah. Well, you know, she's up for a laugh, right? So Dylan Dennis <laughs> chokes her out and like um and anyway, it goes viral, becomes a bit up, oh, good good shots from there. It goes a bit it becomes a bit of a meme, and then Derek starts talking um, to her and uh, he's like oh so you like getting choked eh? like and there's a bit <laughs> it and it, it, you know when Derek like looks her in the eyes and you can see he's thinking all kinds of dark thoughts <laughs> and I'm like just get out of there alive will you um, <laughs> Because you know yeah, what Derek puts, he actually means, he, it, don't he? Puts yeah. that not a joke. Big fucking Francis and Garnu style hand he around that throw. No, but like I think he held her there for. I can't. I didn't see the full clip, but it, mm. you're like, okay, mate. Um, He's a bit dodgy. And then uh, then there was talk <laughs> about. She was saying like, do you want to come on my OnlyFans? <clears throat> He'd do it. <laughs> he wants Derek to come on a Gisora, lot more than just that. Yeah, hundred percent. I reckon he would go on OnlyFans and shag her. <laughs> hundred percent, hundred percent. Wait, he had OnlyFans on his oh, yeah. Yeah. stuff last time. Does he already do it? Yeah. <laughs> Brian, you're in the Shadow Council. Can you sort that out? <laughs> we'll work on it. Would we'll you do OnlyFans? Definitely not. <laughs> I thought he was going to say, no one anyone around the that. table? No one. Uh, no. Oh, anyways. Uh, <laughs> Jack, would you? <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. What? Well, no, I would set it up. You're set it up. No, no, no. I wouldn't. What do we think of this bloke? Anthony Pretty Boy <laughs> Taylor. <laughs> yeah. It was a quick one. What well, do, we what do, we, do we think that um, we've got two clear rounds there in that fight? Uh, uh, I, don't, I, I don't know. 
He's not. He's, not, he's, the, he's not really landing anything. I think. I tell I you what, Nunez's is... nose is bright red right now. Left is, is it all? Yeah, yeah. He's it, and whereas my mate Nate doesn't look like he's taking that much damage so mm. far. I'm just saying. He's just slipping a lot. Look but the odd when, one when is was landing those body shots in. That's yeah. all I will say. I, I, th th I think he might have outlanded. I, th I think he's got two rounds here personally. I thought like, Nunez had a much better round in that second round. And obviously, he, he, listen, boxing is subjective. It depends a lot of the time what the judge is like. If you like the man that's moving forward and almost in some people's eyes trying to make a fight out of it you probably scored the second one to Nunes. That's not necessarily saying I would, but I'll tell you what, if it does stay in this mould, come the end of four rounds, my mate Nate would be thinking, oh my God, thank God for that. You know, that went exactly how I would have wanted it to. Why is why is he not throwing to the chin though? It, he, he's not throwing, like uh, when you watch Winderson, you kind of like, you have got some skills there. You just don't really know how to put it together yet. Brian, you, you made this fight. What um, other influences will we know that are these guys' weights? Because I'd love to see my mate Nate win or lose in there with a lot more of the guys that uh, that fight on these shows. Yeah, I think they're 175. So okay. that would be Jay Swingler, a Nissan, Gibb, uh, obviously Kenny and um, Are they not a sit one six five, uh, one seven five. Um, okay, yeah, um, he's, he's boxing pretty well. He's, he does all the right mm. things, doesn't he? Yeah. Okay, so True Jordy, are there any other fights that you've got in your like fantasy? That you would like to bring mm. to life. That sounded dick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not his only fan to count. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about Elbrook versus Chisora no, again. No, no. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I'm talking about serious boxing. <laughs> right? Yeah. So is there any others that you Me want to see? Elbrook. Actually, uh, Gibble. Again. Uh, the winner of Kenny and... Um, and <clears throat> yep. yeah. Okay, so as a Misfits man, do you know if Gib is allowed to fight on Misfits? Because isn't there beef? Uh, I've spoken to Mams and he would want to make that. He's up yeah, for it. I, yeah. I think Mams is the kind of person where, okay. in the heat of the moment, he might say things, but like, you know, Vince McMahon, how he does what's best for business. Mams will always sort of bow good, to good that. Good business and yeah. good numbers are like Mate, override you put everything. Put your personal bullshit yeah. to one side yeah, and make yeah, the fight, yeah. right? And also, Gib is just so good, you can't yeah. deny him. Like, he's top five, in my opinion, mm. of, of the, the whole of influencer boxing right now. So Who it, beats him? Uh, who can beat him? Who do you think can beat him? Uh, can beat him or or will beat him? Well, yeah, in your opinion, I, I'll say would can. beat him. Uh, I think uh, I think the obvious ones like Logan, Jake, uh, KSI. You think Logan beats Gibb? I think could beat him. Uh, I suggested to Logan ages ago when I did a reaction with him to the Mayweather fight. I said, "Why don't you fight someone like a Gibb for your first comeback fight?" And he was like, "Gibb, I'd smoke Gibb." And I was like, "Gibb's really good though." And since then, Gibb has proven he's really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. You know, because I was saying things in the gym at West Ham with him, and I was like, I know that. So then he went and smashed, um, uh, what's his name, uh, the, the dad, the family dad thing. What's his name? Austin McBride. Yeah, he, yeah. Mm. sorry. He smashed him. He beat Jarvis comfor comfortably, and Jarvis is a solid. Yeah, mate, he's good, technically yeah. sound. Um, and Gibb just has a really well-rounded game. And I think that he is like a legit opponent for any of these guys. Like, mm -hmm. there's no one I'd go in there and go, I, I wouldn't feel, aside from Jake Paul, because it's happened before, but I think Gibbs improved leaps and bounds since then. Loads. So, um, Jake, so is Jake. Yeah, yeah, and so is Jake. So, you know, you know how he said stars make fights? I think the Gibbs style versus Logan Paul is all wrong for Logan Paul. Oh, really? I would, I personally, just for what it's worth, I'd make Gibb a. I, I think it's a really it's a great show because it just makes the fight more exciting that people believe that you want a fight where it's doubt but mm. the problem with Logan Paul is is he fought JJ years ago and then he's fought Mayweather since and you can't put anything under the Mayweather fight because you're like okay you've proven you've got skills like as in but you can't judge Logan fairly when he's in there against the best in the world. But do you know the problem? How much more do we find out after tonight? Well, we don't know how good Dylan is, but I think we get at least an answer of like, so this is the first fight Logan's fought where he's the heavy favourite. 50-50 mm. with KSI, definitely not expected to do anything against Floyd. The fact that he survived against Floyd is a massive bonus. This is the first fight where we're like, put him to sleep. So... We're going to find out. Mm. And how much boxing has he been doing? You know, he's not been in the boxing world. He's been like, flying through the air in the WA, mate. Yeah. So he potentially could have gone backwards, really. And he's actually had a <laughs> you know major I mean? knee injury and major knee surgery. Okay. And if there's one thing we all know is bouncing around in a ring takes a lot on your knees. So... I think that's another thing of like seeing how mobile he is. But in the WA, I must admit, what yeah. an athlete. Yeah. It's mm. unbelievable. I think in terms of athleticism, he might be the best athlete 
uh, in the whole show tonight. Yeah. He certainly Logan. looks at it. He said he looks yeah, it. Yeah, he looks at it. I just don't know how you can be like learning to be a WWE athlete. I think like, especially while he's learning, the recovery he must need must be like, they must say like, you're going to train this hard. You're going to get so battered that you must take these days doing nothing. You can't then just go and train boxing seriously because that will mm. batter you as well. It's yeah. like, it's like can, can he really, when he claims he's been like training all this time, I don't know how legit that can I'm be. I'm not expecting to see Logan do things completely differently tonight because he's training with the same coach he's had, that Milton. Oh, Milton. He's also his gardener. <laughs> well, he is. He self-proclaimed. He is uh, his gardener. Uh, Milton's such a cool guy, but the weirdest thing about Milton is he, they've sort of adopted him into the family. <laughs> and, and Milton's like cool with it because Milton's obviously getting a good wage. But also, Milton trained a world champion boxer. He trained uh, Shannon Briggs, right? Or something like that, right? So... Um, Milton's actually like legit as fuck. Yeah. But Milton has a, a very specific style, which Tony Jeffries did a video with him about, about the low hand style and why that gives you advantages and so. So I don't, I think we're going to see Logan come out with his hands down, but, but this is a spiteful, aggressive, angry Logan. So he's, he's in theory, should be going out there, put on a show and make a statement so that everyone goes, oh, we want to see Logan again against a credible opponent. What, who is that? Yeah, there may be... Who do we... Do you think Gibb is the, the best guy? I, I would say for the fans to watch a fight, yes. But I think for Logan Paul, no. Because what does he gain out of He wants the big Gibb? names, doesn't he? He wants a big name. It's got to make sense. I think, if anything, he may be a little bit traumatized from doing boxing again. I.e. like, what he's had to go through from all of this. He's probably like, mm, I don't have to do this. And when, you, when he gets asked, why are you doing this? He says, for Prime. I'm doing it just so it's what it's the only reason I'm doing it because I want to grow prime. It's like, is his heart really in wanting to well, box? That, that, that's my worry about all of these guys because if you're misfits, right, you've just mm -hmm. signed a five year deal with the zone. Yeah. That deal is I need to keep providing great events like this one so yeah. that the zone want to keep on. Um, oh, Winderson's really uh, coming good now. Um, it looks like it. I don't, could be this, wrong. This is the last 10 seconds of the fight. Okay. So. Um, it might have been a bit too uh, late. Could be a draw here, guys. I thought it was fairly equal the last two rounds, mm, so mm. It, it could very easily be a draw. I feel that my main eight, the, the, he, he won I, the first I two. I would say he edged it. He, yeah. won the, he definitely won the first two for me. The, the, the fear with these big guys is if they all at one point go, yeah, we've had enough of this now, fuck me, what the fuck do misfits do? Yeah. Like, because the real the reality is, is they need to, and we're talking about this behind the scenes, is like growing the stars out, but like, mm. it, you can only grow people so far, right? Like, yeah. you can't reinvent another KSI, Jake Paul, Logan Paul. There's only three of them. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Um, so, you know, when KSI took those two, three years off, whatever it was, after fighting Logan, he was burned out, he'd lost his passion for the sport, wanted to do music. If that happens again, well, then the show That, that is can on happen hold. after tonight. That it, could it, it, very easily. It, and this is what is, is so mega about tonight is the outcomes. Like, mm -hmm. uh, if, if KSI wins, maybe Jake Paul comes out of the audience. He got a face off. The hype is 10 through the roof. Or if he loses in bad fashion, he might go, ah, fuck this. What am I doing? But, but this, is, this is exactly what's happening in pro boxing. Do you know yeah. what we're talking about? These Wilders, the Furies, the Anthony Joshua's, all these promoters are terrified of their guy losing in because they carry the sport they, mm -hmm. they do like anthony the joshua cows. carried it yeah for the last however since 2012 after i think it was 2013 by the time he turned pro he carried boxing until his recent year losses mm. so the minute he's gone boxing dies and then they've mm. had like then obviously fury wilder kind of kept things up there and then once they've kind of disappeared a little bit it's like mm. you need the big names and once they go the sport essentially does yeah. die but with with boxing when we look at that right it's not just the inactivity of the fighters that are still active and still boxing yeah. it's also like you look at that crop of fighters especially from britain like when we were we were younger sort of thing or through our growing up you like you've got bell you've got hay you've got all these names here frotch groves like i could go on list of fighters that have now retired that other fighters need to come and take the mantle but the only way to take the mantle is by being in big fights yeah, yeah. and if the big fights aren't getting put on it's very hard but the good thing with misfits here like we were saying okay yeah ks and Logan Paul and Jake Paul, they could all step away from it. But the thing is, they came into this sort of foundation of boxing through being big names, whereas now the system's in place to make people big names yeah. through fights. Yeah, yeah. I've got a bit of an update, guys. Go on. On, on the Logan Paul injury from the, the microphone that was spiked off of him. Okay. Uh, we're just going to find out who's won, though. Um, we're, we're, we're hearing the results now. Winderson's got his hand it's up. It's got to be Nate, surely. 
Can someone let us know in our ears? Here we go. I think it's close. It sounds... Could- Unanimous decision. It must be Nate. Then. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well done, Nate. Fair play to him. Yeah. I think winderson has been found out a little bit in terms of he didn't really make the adjustments since mm. the last fight with the jab. He didn't deal with it. It I, doesn't mean everything, but Nate hasn't got a mark on him. Do you know what it is? I think he's going to kick himself again because it's he, what let him down is his fitness. His cardio is not there. Like as soon as he got to the second, third round, he was really he looked tired. So was wait, so is, it, is it true that that he was smoking this week? Oh, probably. Yeah, I heard Wade say that. Yeah, Winderson's a Brazilian, though, right? Okay. Um, so go, <laughs> going back to the Logan injury, right? We got guys who've shared the ring, yeah, boxers. How bad is that pre-fight? If that is that a, is that just a scratch? Is that actually? De- it, it looked quite deep. And when to be honest, yesterday you, it's nah. more the the, yeah, the black eye that, as well. That, that, that is just that, a more of a, like a surface graze because yeah. that wouldn't look like that if it was actually a cut. You'd what about the black eye? Doesn't. Black guy's not going to... But, but could he not... It looks worse than it is. Yeah, I'll tell you, not, the, the worst thing here would that? be if that was above the eye. Yeah, it's, If it's, that was above the eye, then we got a problem because that opens up pretty soon. Mm. Uh, Dylan Dennis can open that up in the first round and it doesn't affect his vision. It doesn't affect his performance. Yeah. What it might affect is how he's carrying himself emotionally and, and whatnot. But in terms of actually affecting his performance I don't think that does and the other thing as well is like even if it's bruised right we were saying about adrenaline it's one hell of a drug mate trust me like you might yeah. you might still feel broken bones but you don't feel black eyes of adrenaline no. No. The, only, the only thing that you would get is which if, if it was to keep getting hit it might swell up a bit quicker you know if it was mm. if he was getting repeat damage but in terms of that you know like when you're spawning you, you, you rub the ropes mm. you sometimes get them kind of like what like, like friction graze, burns friction yeah. burns I think so mm. but, um, but yeah but if he's fighting with one eye does that make a, like a massive impact to fight so say for instance it does swell up in the first round does that not massively impact it's not, yeah, in, that it's, could. It's not in a position to be able to swell up and block his vision you know it's, it's here it's here. It's not going to swell up and block his vision. It needs to be there or there. So it's not anywhere orbital. Like I'm relieved not- at that because I don't want any excuses. I don't want any issues. Uh, KSI is on our screens now. The next fight, I believe, is Anthony Taylor versus King Kenny. King Kenny uh, flying high after a big win over Winderson. Um, although he may, like, my point when, when Kenny beat Winderson in the style and the fashion he did was. Yeah, but the guy in front of you was nowhere near the level, and that f- victory flattered you. Yeah, and yeah. Anthony Taylor is a hard-nosed little bastard, you mm. know, and he's going to keep coming forward. And if you don't have the the power to really hurt Winderson when he's a sitting duck like that, are you going to have enough to keep um, AT off you? Yeah, and he's used to he runs at you. You know what I mean? So Bolony. That it's a total. Is he going? How's he going to be under pressure when mm. keeping off the jab when you got a man standing with the foot like st- stuck in the mud? You know what I mean? It's mm. easy, but this is going to be a different. I'm, I'm quite I, interested to see how he's going to react to be. I, I kind of feel like we've seen that King Kenny's got the ability to learn. Like the way he's developed so quickly is amazing, and I, yeah. I believe the tactics that will be in play from his coach, who is a very, very good coach, yeah. daily, right? I, I believe they would have figured out how to deal with the sort of bullish... Yeah. Bullish mm, matter doors. You know what should, I mean? Should be just I, coming I feel off like the angle. I the, think the only King worry is, did you see the Raksu fight? He ran away from Raksu. Yeah, but when was that? That, that's with, that? that was the fight before Winderson. Yeah, but that, I feel like time, time has elapsed now. He would have improved. I, oh, I, I agree. Do, I think like he... Yeah, I, I can't see but, a repeat. But the reason... Look, I'm sure that they've worked on getting him used to someone running at him, but mm-hmm. there was there was two questions in my head of mm-hmm. when it really is getting there and someone's putting when you're the hammer when you're the nail and not the hammer. Yes. Like it's all what like he when I look at people who style and profile on like fighters who are sitting ducks in front of them, mm-hmm. but then when a guy's running around the ring with zero technique, like Raku yeah. does not have good technique, but he's got power, and you're avoiding him in that way, I'm like, you can't style and profile and humiliate a guy mm. and then run when it's your time yeah. to stand up to the fight. Yeah. So that's why I'm a bit, I've seen that in him now. And I can't unsay it. I mm-hmm. can't until remove, you're proven. You know otherwise. I mean? So I yeah. need to see him do the opposite. I need mm-hmm. like, can he stick with it when the going gets tough? Exactly. And yeah. until he does that, I'm always going to remember yeah, that. Yeah. Of Naturally, when yeah. someone put it on you, you didn't want to be there. Yeah. And when you were in a situation where you could have gotten a guy out of there quite easily, you didn't have the power, and you kind of just you weren't willing to like gas yourself mm. to really hurt him and finish him. So I'm waiting to see the next evolution from Kenny and AT being that AT has been in there with um, Tommy Fury. 
he went the decision with Tommy Fury four rounds. He's he sparred Jake Paul. He sparred Logan Paul. And the interesting story about Logan is, and this is what gives me a little bit of, well, quite a bit of confidence against Dylan, is AT's a tough guy. He's tough. He's can tell. Uh, BJ Flores was in the gym one day where Logan Paul, and Logan Paul told me about this, and I, I was like, wow, okay. But then BJ was like, no, I was there. Turned up with a hangover, sparred uh, AT, and beat the shit out of him, and put him down within the first round. And that was when I was like, okay, well, what we're seeing from you against Floyd Mayweather isn't really what you are. Like, you are actually a good boxer for this level. You get that in boxing, though. Like, you get people who are great in the gym, but can you do it in front of the bright lights? That's that's the difference, and that's... I think and, Tommy's like that, you know. In some of the best fighters, in, in my personal experience, I've been around guys who are... Like excellent at the gym, not so good in the ring on, on on when the lights are there. And other guys I've seen get beat up in the gym, but on the night, on fight night, they just you know what I mean. That's my whole thing, really KSI, Tommy. Perform. Uh, and I know that people might think I'm a bit delusional, but like when you watch Tommy against uh, Jake Paul, yes, he was the better boxer. He was caught many a times. He was very nervous. He he, he cried at the decision because he was so relieved of all the pressure that had been mm. on his shoulders. Tonight, in front of twenty thousand people, what this this is like what KSI does, like whether it be music or boxing, he will walk out there just like in the zone. Flo- three, like for this for KSI, this is as close as anyone can get to being absolutely comfortable under the lights. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, he will be far more comfortable in there than Tommy will. And there was a moment, and I don't know what you guys make of this, but the, the, the face off they did after the weigh-in, when Tommy is in that uh, cage and Tommy is boom, boom, and he's actually screaming, fuck you! Ah! And there was a point where I thought, this guy's ran out of breath. Mm. He's so exhausted from screaming at KSI. Mm. And I'm like, you know, if you're really confident you're going to knock someone out, you don't act like yeah. that. Like. Ultimately, if you're not intimidated by someone, like you don't feel the need to do something to try and level it. And it, it seemed very much like he's being triggered. He was out of breath. Stressed. But, but and on. he felt like he needed to do something. The, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Look what he's done. It's almost <laughs> yeah, like but this what? is all he's seen mm. from being a young man. This is. I, I don't even feel like he's his own person. He's, he's almost like a puppet. Like He's just copying okay, what he's always seen. you made a seen. good point there, to be fair. Like, yeah, like, he, he does feel like a bit of a puppet. Well, he does. Most of the time, he, he sometimes he gets asked a question. He kind of looks around as if he says, is anyone going to answer for me? Then John pops up yeah. when he doesn't answer. And mm-hmm. it's just like... But at the same time, what I do think, he's probably learned and probably matured from that last fight with Jake Paul because, to be honest, I think the pressure there was far greater than it is for this fight. So, if anything, that was like his first big test in terms of emotionally how he was going to deal with it. And I think this time he actually looks more confident. Yes, he's shouting a lot more, but I feel like he is a lot more confident for this fight than he was in the previous fight. Yeah, so, I agree. I agree with yeah. that, for sure. And I think, like, I mean, the whole build-up to this, whether it be the face-to-face, even all the, the little... The like, face-off he won. Yeah, yeah, I'll by a mile. That. And then all these uh, other sort of build-up bits of content that Misfits have been putting out, he seems so relaxed and composed and, like, matter-of-fact, like, yeah, obviously, well, on the professional... I, 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 yeah. I agreed until that until, moment yeah. when <clears throat> he was panting. Yeah. <gasps> And I was like, fuck me, you're gonna mm. need an inhaler here. So. Mm-hmm. And then when the camera cut to KSI, oh, he's like, ladies and gentlemen, it's yeah. KSI. And he just, all of a sudden I was like, oh, that's the KSI that I'm used to seeing. Like yeah. uber cool, yeah. confident. He was in his flow state. Tommy's acting like irate. I'm not used to seeing Tommy like this. Uh, we got AT's entrance here with a bunch of OnlyFans girls and he's wearing <laughs> pink. He comes up with the cowboy hat on. It looks mental. <laughs> Uh, they're all twerking. What, what is going on? I'm not mad at it. It's fair. True there's, Geordie's dream. There's certain <laughs> characters that have so found themselves yeah. on Misfits. Like, Anthony Taylor is one of them. Look John Fury's another one of them. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, there's certain characters that maybe weren't real, um, like, you know, real draws in boxing or, or whatever. Or, 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 yeah, real contenders. But in this Misfits world, they have found their feet. Anthony Taylor is definitely one of them. Yeah. If he was a boxer like professional MMA fighter, whatever he was, none of us know him. But no. in Misfits, yeah. he, he's a ticket seller. He sells the show and he, he's very much at home here. Yeah, you know, he knows what he's doing. He knows how to play at the crowd. He's, mm. He looks very comfortable in this environment. He's, he's born for the, star, uh, the, the, the spotlight. But my only thing is, is his entrance is far more entertaining than his fights. Yeah. His fights, mm. he stifles, he hugs. He's, and... And that might help him in this fight, though. Yeah. I, I, against Saul Papi, I was like, oh, my God. Because I, I was hoping to see some more highlight reaction from Saul Papi. 
but he fought a really smart fight and I wouldn't be surprised if he does a similar thing against but, Kenny. But when, when you look at it, right, to, to see the other side of that, right, I think one of the biggest um, things you can have going in your favour as a fighter is to know what you're good at and to know what you're not really good at. Mm. And if Anthony Taylor thought, you know what, everyone might like to see me use the jab a little bit more than that overhand right that I seem to throw whenever <laughs> someone comes in. If, if everyone likes to see me try and be on my toes a little bit more, yeah, okay, you might be pleasing the, uh, pleasing the crowd, but ultimately you're not playing to your strengths. So I think one of the best things Anthony Taylor has going in his way, and I think we'll see him do that again in this fight, as he did against Salt Pappy, is he knows what his strengths are. And if he's spoiling, he's spoiling, because at the end of the day, your record just says win if, if you get that Ag win. Ag agreed, and one interesting fact is, and this is a little bit of insider stuff, um, Kenny's lot, they didn't fancy this the most. I'm not saying they they didn't fancy it or they didn't think he could win because they're here. They thought he could yeah. win. But it wasn't their preferred option because of the style and the just the hassle that Kenny, uh, sorry, that AT brings, right? Um, so I think they're well, well aware in Kenny's camp that this isn't um, an easy fight, you know? So uh, wait, so as a small council member, how do Shadow you... government, get it right. <laughs> How do you know if someone's not really fancying a fight? Like, can, like what, what tips it off? I mean, there's just a bit of chat in the group about what's happening with negotiations. Oh, does it come out? Are they basically no. like, yeah, basically. Yeah, I, but, this... but, but, but I'm not saying that Kenny didn't want to fight. Okay. He, it wasn't their first choice. Who was? There's a difference. I can't actually remember, oh. if I'm being honest. Um, it's, it's not that deep, but it, Kenny's here. He's, he's here. He, he's happy to fight. It, it's certainly not a case of the guy was scared or no. anything like that. It was just like, I think that there's certain styles that they're cleverly aware of that would be better for him. AT, mm. for me, is the hardest fight for Kenny. If, if Kenny does what he's been doing, we're kind of looking at a new star because mm. he's with Beta Squad, who are a yeah. massive group on YouTube. They like the sidemen. Um, and, and they're going to have their backing behind him so they could help the pay-per-views and stuff. And, but also, the guy can fight. That's yeah. obvious. And I feel like in terms of ones to watch and evolving, is there... There's not many people who've improved as much as Kenny. Oh, like, he he by far is yeah. the standout, I believe. Obviously, KSI is another one. Yeah. But him, him and Gib, for me, Gib. are the natural ones to meet after this. Uh, if yeah. if he wins, yeah, that's a. But I I want Kenny to win because I'm I'm very much team YouTube tonight rather than the, yeah. the pros, and I still view AT like AT fought Tommy Fury before he was even in Misfits. Yeah. And he went four rounds with him, but didn't look great. But he. Tommy looked shit in that fight, if I'm but being honest. Do you honest. not think this is one of the things that massively goes under the radar? And this is one of the reasons I hold sympathy for Tommy Fury at times. Is because his surname's Fury, everyone straight away will go, well, he's the pro boxer. He's the one that's been doing it all his life. I don't even know how old Anthony Taylor is. But I can tell you what, if I had to put my money on it now, my last penny on it now, he's been doing it since just as young, if not younger, than Tommy Fury he's has. But, 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 but people, But people don't immediately cast their mind and go... This fella almost shouldn't sort of yeah. be in there with YouTube. It's almost like because he acts all silly and acts almost like a YouTuber, it's like, oh yeah, he's yeah, not. He he's fit, not. He fits it perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's an element of that, but he's yeah, a pro MMA true. fighter, right? Yeah, for sure. Right, and a pro boxer. Mm -hmm. So, and that's another thing when we talk about Tommy here to go back to it is like. Look at the look oh. at the struggle that everyone's had with Anthony Taylor in comparison to what Tommy did with him. Oh, <laughs> by the way. Oh no, uh, Logan did a. Um, Instagram story and it's quite clear that his his face is really swollen around yeah. here. Mm. Um you can see uh, there guys. He's uh, got he's got oh. some he's got makeup He's on got makeup on, on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but who does? It looks lighter. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but his eyes are glowing. I, <laughs> 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 I, th I think this is going to have a significant impact on the fight today cuz let's be honest guys, you've been in the ring, right? How how do you target someone like that do you just go straight for it if you know someone's got an injury do you just go absolutely balls to the wall Lawrence would be a lot more equipped to, to answer this question than myself but I don't really target anything I just think let me lay hands on him <laughs> I have a little box and I think whether it hits him on the eyebrow the chin the, the cheek I don't care I'm trying to aim into that target have, so. you ever, have you ever fought anyone that had like a clear injury Oh, June, June fights us. I mean, if you you see a little bit of swelling, you, I mean, if you don't notice that your cornerman says keep mm -hmm. dabbing away at that eye because you know that's going to eventually. But before the it. fight even started. Well, it's it's very rare that you see yeah. that much damage mm -hmm. leading into a fight. Generally speaking, 
fighters are normally quite careful to wear the right protective equipment and stuff like that. We're, so we're, we're almost underway here, and we're out. Oh, Whoa, and Taylor, Taylor runs out and sprints. By the way, guys, uh, Logan Paul has arrived with his fiance, looking lovely in her dress. So she's showing out. She's like, "Yeah, I'm yeah. fucking here, loud, oh, oh. proud." Oh my god! I exactly what you were saying. Loud, He's proud, and ready. King to Kenny's <laughs> looking very uncomfortable. Yeah, that, that, if you've done your homework, that's what you would say. Yeah. Run at him. Yeah. Make him yeah. uncomfortable. And this and is the thing. Uh, um, his, his big brother said his inside fighting is a lot better than people would think. What well, we're going to find out. But um, when you've got an MMA guy who literally run at you with the head low, it's like... Yeah. Mm. I think stylistically, when you look at King Kenny, you're going to assume that he's only going to be better at range. But there's certain fighters like Callum Smith comes to my mind straight away. Good inside fighter. I, I, I experienced that a long time ago. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I remember... <laughs> I was on GB the first time I'd, I was quite new to the GB set at the time. Mm. And I th he was boxing at 75 kilos the weight below me. I thought, I'll get in there, I'll just outstrength him. Mm. I kind of got on top of him and I couldn't believe how good he was inside. Yeah. He was catching with shots, which I just wasn't expecting. So I went, actually, I'm going to have to box a little bit here. I used to but, yeah. think that. Yeah, you, but he's, he's excellent. Think, how are your arms so long and you're squeezing body shots? It's in weird there. the way he does it, but yeah. he's really effective on the inside. See, Kenny needs to get that jab guy, but he's almost, I feel like, tentative to let his hands go because. Yeah, like Anthony just runs in like that. And there's a difference between being good on the inside when you've got a mm. guy who's kind of just standing, but a guy who's running in mm. like a rugby player is a little bit different. Is that, the, is that the, the MMA is, element? It's a five-round fight, guys. So it's for a title. All the title fights are five-rounders, aside from the two main events who are six-rounders. Mm. So for, for AT to keep a pace up where you're constantly running, he's carrying quite a lot of muscle there. I mean, you'd assume he's trained for it, but it's, it's a lot. Kenny's trying to push him off right now and to keep it at range, but when it is at range, Kenny isn't even throwing the jab. Nah, he's he's out of his game plan immediately. It's because yeah. it he's almost anticipating the running. He doesn't yeah. even want to throw a jab in, in case he misses the guy running in. Yeah, this isn't what Kenny's team probably want uh, for a first round. But, I mean, it's not like AT's done major damage. Mm. But um, the referee's separating them and trying to turn it into a boxing match. Good luck with that. It's so, always harder, though, against a smaller guy because the, the general public will look and they'll go, well, you've got to throw your jab. Yeah. But the smaller guy has fought the taller guy way more than the taller guy has fought the smaller guy in sparring and whatnot. And when you look at that, you can throw that jab out there. But if he comes to your stomach, which most of them are going to sit under the jab and come to your body, if he does that, you've got two options. Oy. You either take another body shot or you bring your arms down. And when you do that, you know Anthony Taylor's going to look to loop that right hand over the top. So it can be a lose-lose at times unless you can stop him in his tracks with that jab. Mm. Yeah, you're 100% right there. Is this a situation? Right, we're getting the referee talking, lads. How long before we might see a, a point deducted here? Do you think that's an issue or...? A point for what, would uh, you say? It, well, holding and, and, and clinching you, you, rather than boxing. What I will say is, I think Taylor's looking a little bit tired already. He looks like he's suffering more for the pace that he's trying to set. So, be interested in come the second round how he comes out. Oh. Um, he's got on the rope. Yeah, he's jumped on the, uh, <laughs> on the ropes there as if it's a WA celebration. I mean... I'd probably give that AT round yeah, one. Yeah, and yeah. that's the game he plays. He's yeah. not trying to knock you out. He's trying to win the round. Yeah. Did Is that same. so... When he did, did MMA, do you know if he was like a grappler or a striker? I think he was a wrestler. Because what we're seeing here is he's deploying those sort of yeah, tactics. He he's just going, let me just grab you and just hold... You look at him, that little thick neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? like a wrestler. He's never been a stand-up guy. Has <laughs> <he>? <laughs> that's yeah. why it's amazing with those short little arms yeah. that he's actually making a go of it. Yeah. I mean, he, and he, he, he goes four rounds with Tommy. Theory, yeah. Yeah. With the lads, and the thing is as well like when he's getting up close like that those shots to the body that's what can really like that takes it out of you that takes your confidence mm -hmm. that you know what i mean it's those shots that we as a viewer can't really see too clearly mm. but when you're when he's that bullish in there like kenny will be feeling that i, I just had a flashback to when you had um connor ben hitting you with body shots mm -hmm. I, remember, <laughs> I remember that yeah <laughs> How was that, lad? Uh, oh, round two started and they're going at it again. Fucking 100,000 miles an hour. Jesus. Oh, Ooh. left hook. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, AT is actually doing some work now. Head and back. and, and Head Kenny's back. holding on to his arms. When we were one. talking about uh, Anthony Taylor's old career, obviously, in MMA, it's crazy to see him fighting guys like King Kenny because do you remember what weight he was uh, fighting at in MMA? Oh, I bet he was no. low. Competing at about 147, 150 yeah, pounds or something. Yeah, yeah. Really? when you're against wrestlers, Jeez. yeah, I mean, he, he, he's, a, yeah, he's a featherweight. For this, sure. is, this was at 170 tonight, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. 175. I, th I think they both weighed in under 170, though. 
uh, looking if, at the if, if I was to stand up next to Anthony Taylor, he's taller than me, but he's not that much bigger. You know mm, what I mean? Yeah. So to see him in there with these sort of guys, it's... Mate, he was in there with Tommy, can you That's believe? what I'm saying. You've Tommy's got to hold your hands up and go, fair play. Five, seven, I think he was. That, yeah. and, and it's that fucking dome head of his. It's so hard uh, to hurt. Plants <laughs> like, the cranium on the chest and just... And I almost feel like when you come from a background where you have got experience over some of the influencers that don't, it's the commendable thing to do is go straight in there and go, all right, well, I'll take hard fights then, or I'll give a bit of weight away, or I'll give something away in my advantage. And you can't say that he hasn't done that so far in the resume he's got. Yeah, he's kind of built like that. You know Volkanovski in the UFC? He's built mm. like that. Like he, he used to be a massive dude before he cut down as well. We've just seen Eddie Hearn come into the, uh, into the crowd. By no the way. way. Yeah, Eddie yeah, Hearn is there. Look, you see him. Oh, the my yeah, yeah. God. How must Which Eddie is, Hearn feel? This is interesting, because was he not before this fight just saying that YouTuber yeah. boxing is yeah. dead and that okay. it's so over? So he, so he hates slagged it. it off, and then he retracted that and went, only Kingpin. Actually, I love Misfits, because mm. Dizone. Dizone are his partners, and he has mm. to. I reckon he, he got told off for that, because he was saying how much he hates it, and but yeah, it's directly his yeah. you know business, almost. But then naturally, you'll see the figures and start. He's 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 not you're not, yeah, you're not the figures. Man. It's actually quite embarrassing for Eddie right now because if you think about the cash cows Eddie, ha Eddie Hearn has, mm. so AJ's on the way down. Conor Ben, uh, his career has been in absolute turmoil for the last year. Mm. And if you look at his other big stars, lost not, Canelo. He lost Canelo. None of his other stars, or even AJ and any of them, pull in these kind of figures. So mm. he's. The, he was support, He was employed by DAZN as the expert in boxing. To and I'm not saying he hasn't put on a great calendar. Like the Lee Wood fight the other night was epic. It yeah. was fucking unbelievable. We loved it. But Eddie Hearn must be like fucking hell. These make them make them look bad. The yeah. other thing as well is when Eddie was with Sky, he was the exclusive promoter. Uh, so it's not to say you ever saw a show ooh. from another promoter on a Sky card. But if you did, it had to have the OK by Eddie. And it, we almost were led to believe that that was going to be the way with DAZN then Oscar De La Hoya gets involved. Yep. Then obviously Misfits gets involved. Then a few of the other influencer boxer type things. And actually now you're seeing it where his his importance in the company a little bit is diminishing. But uh, what I would say to, to sort of defend Eddie a little bit there is when we're saying the, the comparison of numbers, that's not just with Eddie's stable, you know. That's with all boxing also, really, also, isn't it? It is, but when you look at what Eddie's going through and that Frank Warren all of a sudden is now the best mate of Saudi Arabia and he's mm. making these mega fights with Tyson Fury, you've got a guy in Mams Taylor who's never being a boxing promoter before yeah. this and is now doing events like this and, and doing bigger numbers than what Eddie is. So Eddie was the king, undisputed yeah. king, king on pay pay-per-view. And now all of a sudden, he's looking up at Warren who's doing more than him. The Misfits now doing more than him. And he's like, I ain't got Canelo. AJ is, is on the down and we're mm. struggling at what we're going to do. With. And... I'm looking at Conor Ben, who was supposed yeah. to be my next big star and no one yeah. likes him but, anymore. But not just that, Joshua Buatzi. Yeah. Lawrence Acoli mm. to a lesser level Chris Billum Smith yeah. uh, Eubank was fighting on Eddie Hearn cards at one point mm. you look at the amount of names he's lost out there Dylan White okay he was never under contract with him but his last fight was on uh, BT and show I think you know what young I mean? and like, up and coming fighters are looking at Eddie now and thinking are you going to navigate my career in the way I want take a Vidal Riley for example who went with Sky um, you know I, I just think Eddie is in a in a position where he needs to come out swinging as a as a boxing <laughs> promoter. You know, it's a bit it's a bit one. So, so why what, is he what, being so dismissive of of influencer boxing then? Well, what? it was right after the girl flashed the tits on Kingpin, and he was like, "That's trash," and I don't want to be associated with it. And I, and I understand like his point of view on that. Um, I think as well, it's it's not within yeah. his interest to be hyping up. Wait, one, is he going to take a point? A different industry. It, oh. it is. It's a separate mm. separate of boxing. He he wants the eyes on the box, like the professional box. I think so we've got a low blow. Yeah. No, no, no. no hit on the back head. of their head. Oh, was it? So this as well, right? So I feel like what you were saying about Mams Taylor. Okay, in that he will do what's best for business. I feel like Eddie Hearn's been guilty of doing what's best for Eddie Hearn. In that he will look if he can have a platform that can oh, go to the whole world, unlike Sky Sports, and he can be the in controller. I think that's what it was under, under the zone. They gave him all this control, mm. and he was like, yes, that's, that, that's perfect for me, whereas Ooh, in reality, shot. it's not necessarily what's best for growing mm. fighters, as we've oh, seen. Good shot by AT, by the way. Good hook as he was lunging in there. And, 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 and look, uh, Kenny isn't timing him. Kenny isn't landing the jab. He isn't landing the uppercut. The style and profiling against Wyndon Nunes is non-existent right now. That's because uh, Winderson gave him the time yeah. to do that jab. Wyndon, Winderson gave him all fucking day. Yeah, man. Like, and this is the difference. Like When you have an aggressive come-forward fighter, you yeah. can't deal with it when they know what they're doing. It's, it's the way Tiller fights. He's either miles out of range or he's right on your chest. And that's an MMA there's, fighter. There's no in between. Yeah. 
screen, yeah. whereas... <laughs> So he hasn't got time to kind of let his jab go and then let the backhand go. Yeah, he landed a nice little up there, uppercut. Kenny. But it's been few and far between so far. And uh, if you're just scoring it based on amount of punches landed, it is AT winning? I think he is. Yeah, all it's three rounds so far. It's very hard to score, but uh, Taylor's got the, the tactics perfect. But, you know but, I mean? but, but, <laughs> but this is the thing. Kenny comes from a boxing family. His brother's a boxing coach. Very smart people, right? They know what they're doing. They knew what was coming, How, so it's not yeah. like this is none of this can catch you off guard. But How, yeah, but on paper it's easy to say. But yeah. How, when he in the day, King Kenny, although he's improved massively, it's still hard to deal with because he's not that experienced. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, it's you, like I've, I've mm -hmm. listen, I've I've been in there many times. I've had nearly a hundred fights, and I know what to do with a little bull. But doing it is another another yeah. thing. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. it's a different kettle of yeah. fish. He, I, I, it's funny because. Yeah, Kenny kind of fights your your style, or, or I mean, not not on your level, obviously, bro. But like that that big jab and keeping people in control and knowing how to control them. But to learn how to control a bull like him, it does take a long time to be fair. Though. Yeah, confident. It's like that's why Tyson was so effective when he come on the scene mm. back years ago. Mm. He was so much smaller, but punching down is so difficult. Mm. You're wide open if you miss because your hands not really come back lower when mm. you're punching down. So I used to spar amateurs. And I'd know that they'd be able to ping my head off on the outside. And I used to think, why am I going to play them at their game? I'm not going to have a boxing match with this fella. I'm probably, there's a good chance I'm going to come off just as bad if I go in there and try and take the fight to them because they're highly skilled. But I've got a better opportunity doing that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in there, take the fight. I might be crude. I might make myself look silly at times, but I'll be able to put the pressure on them and maybe it'll create openings for me. And that's one thing is where we, where we could talk about Anthony Taylor's level, Anthony Taylor's skill set. One thing we can't deny is I'd actually scratch my head to see a fight where I don't think he's implemented a really, really good game plan. Okay, do yeah. you think do you think Anthony Taylor could actually be a boogeyman for any of these influences, I've got including, the including KSI? I've yeah. got the antidote for Taylor. Go on then. And he's on Gibb, because he's got that low centre of gravity as well, but he's a better all-round boxer. But he's also got an engine as well. Yeah. And you can see... You can't that outwork him. You're not going to outwork but him. The, like but the thing that AT is doing here is that he's he's grabbing. So it's like, yeah, he may work more. But yeah. if... if if Anthony, I would have thought Anthony is actually stronger. But so he, he can hold on more. And if he's holding on, if he's holding on against anyone at that weight, well, then it doesn't matter if you're a better worker or a better fighter or whatever. He's holding you. So you can't punch. He's strong, but yeah, but when you're doing it against a naturally bigger man, you mm -hmm. do tire. That's how you always see him yeah. start to fade slightly. So, mm -hmm. and I think Gibb works really well in multiple ranges. Gibb isn't uh, Gibb doesn't need everything here. No. He, he can go inside or outside. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. And I also feel as if a lot of the guys who Taylor's fighting who aren't as experienced panic a little bit when he runs at them. Yeah. Someone like Gibbs has got is a lot more ballsy and is willing to let his hands go as he's mm. coming in. That's the difference. And Gibbs' chin actually oh. would hold up. Like Gibb is one of the few chins that you could compare to AT like it's hard to hurt him it, and AT immediately is putting a beating on uh, Kenny again he's, he's he's landing shots on him and what he does is he, he, he goes in the first minute he goes I'm going to collect a, enough enough punches mm. and then I'm going to make sure you don't do anything after yeah, that hold on. and it's, it's kind of like what I mean I'm, I'm not comparing him to the skill level of Usyk but in the way he manages fights Usyk does a similar thing where he goes I'm going to win three rounds I'll take a round off I'll win another three I think this is where <laughs> it's difficult though because this is meant to be misfits influence a crossover boxing and Anthony Taylor is a professional fighter. No, this fighter. is why I was against this so fight. This is, oh, this did he just be caught there? Oh, oh, oh and I, he's just putting that and this is where I'm that, seeing like... Was oh, he playing possum? No, I think, I think, I, no I think AT got hurt there. Taylor got hurt there. I think then, we might be in for a treat here now. Okay. I if Kenny takes it to him, did he get hurt? I don't think he did. Wait, I, I, don't know, I don't know whether that was a, a playing possum type thing almost to a next extent obviously, but... Oh, AT is all over Kenny here. And it is a bit like the Raksu thing that, again. That was, very, that was very much over the top if he was doing that. But I know sometimes, like, uh, you'd get hit in sparring and you'd wince on purpose because oh, you it, know yeah, they're going to come AT is landing you. good shots on Kenny's chin. Is yeah. that classic? You're seeing the chin, the like, you're it? seeing it from the behind, like the fucking yeah. neck. Yeah. 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 Jesus. Oh, oh man, Kenny's in trouble by the look of it. I think the, the uh, phrase you used there, Joe, in terms yeah. of boogeyman, that's, yeah. that's probably the best way I could describe Anthony yes. Taylor looking at this fight especially. Isn't it crazy though how Kenny, for example, like you know, someone can look so good in the, in one fight against one fighter, Every time. and then in another fight look so. I mean, he looks like he, mm. he a novice again. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, isn't that you know, styles really do make the they fight do, yeah. and, and the levels. And this is what I, I said to the lads in the chat was, I'm just a bit worried that a, a bit like Idris Virgo, 
against Aaron Chalmers. There's there's skill gap there mm. where you've just got too much experience mm. for these kind of true YouTube guys. Like Kenny is unbelievable for a YouTuber, but I I mean, the, and the response I got was a, a fair one, which was when you look at how many fights Anthony Taylor actually had. Yeah. Mm. Had. He's not that experienced. Like he's just good. He, he he hasn't had loads of boxing matches. Like he hasn't had that many more than any of the lads in here. Mm. But the but toughness. He's, but he's been. That, I always say this. It's like he's had MMA fights. It's how yeah. many times you've stepped through the ropes. Yes, the the the. It's a different art, but he's still been inside the, that ropes, and it's mm -hmm. a fighting sport. At the end of the yeah. day, so and it's, and half of it is just experience. Mm. Whether you how go. You, how you deal with this And that's situation. why I give Gibb a real chance mm. against him because Gibb's the type of guy, he's a gym warrior where he'll go all over the UK, he'll walk in any gym without any fear and he'll spy anyone. Yeah. Mm. And when you're constantly getting that data and you're like, yeah. th that's why he made those massive jumps from the Jake Paul fight and that's why I think, and I also rate him as the, a better athlete than AT. Yeah. Mm. So that's the fight that, if, if this carries on the way we think, I'd love to see that. So would, would you have the power to make that happen? I don't have the power. Oh. I'm not signing the checks. However, oh. I will strongly recommend Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I will Push strongly recommend that. Because <laughs> I know um, Gibbs has been on holiday, he's been on a, a, his trip, and I'd love to see <clears> him <throat> take that fight next. Yeah. Um, Where is the next Misfits card, do we know? We've, we've got one coming up in London, and there might be a fighter sitting at this very table who is going to fight on the show. You're Shout joking. out to Joey. Joey? Hey, <laughs> Um, Wait, so what's going on with that? Well, Joey or Joe? We've, yeah, we've, we've, both. We've, tag team. To be fair. Both, wait, tag team. <laughs> Let's do it. The two Joes. Um, we we uh, we got in touch with uh, Miss Fitz, showed uh, Joey's skills yeah. uh, from his previous um, unlicensed bouts. And uh, there's a slip there from AT. And uh, the lads were very interested. And uh, Mams has said, yeah, absolutely. We'll get them on the card. Yeah. How do you feel? You're going to make your debut on Miss Fitz? Yeah, Fitch, good, mate? man. It's been a couple of years since I boxed. Obviously, the whole lockdown situation sort of ruined it for me but I was boxing unlicensed before as I say fought some good boys fought some shit boys but at the same time do you know what I mean I would uh I relish a chance to get in there mate it's the, it's the bright lights it's what you box for wait, really, wait, what so. the whoa that was an elbow wasn't it I think there's a little coming together there but um we're all right um, I think King, King Kenny's looking at this now and he's thinking I've got a round to seriously do some damage because he can win this round and all of us sat around this table are saying it doesn't matter whether he wins the round unless he gets a knockdown or something serious happens he's lost this fight oh, had, ooh. yeah we'll come we'll come back the to, to Joy as we're seeing this roundup. Uh, we've got two minutes left and it really does feel like AT has ra racked at least three of the four rounds. I'm going to be real. I think it's 5-0. Yeah, probably. 5-0 yeah, AT. Yeah. I agree. Um, I, I, and and it, it's not even like, it's much like the Salt Papi fight where, and to be fair, Salt Papi did a lot more damage uh, yeah. than Kenny has. Salt Papi was, was clipping him back. So can I just raise a quick question when it comes back to the way I obviously feel about the main event and what I think could possibly play out. Yeah. Does it not just open everyone's eyes up a little bit for those whose eyes weren't maybe open? And it doesn't necessarily just mean us around this table to go, look at what Tommy Fury did with Anthony Taylor. I'm not saying he bashed him up, stopped him. He nullified him a lot uh, of the time. So a you're saying this could be a premonition of what we may see in the main event when it when it's basically a professional the, fighter against a YouTuber. Levels at everything, mate. Yeah. And I tell you what, I can score some great goals down the park. <laughs> but if you stick me at Stamford Bridge, every one of them's hitting Rose Edge. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, levels yeah. are everything, mate. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, look, it's it's a fair point and, and we're we're hoping uh for the for the dream to come off KSI to pull off the impossible. Um and I think the only worry is for me is is um AT, despite him dominating this fight, he's not a really, really hard puncher, right? Tommy is a harder puncher. And, and mm. for JJ, him losing the fight isn't what I'm worried about because m m for me, I think if he gets through the decision, just like Jake, mm -hmm. it was a win and, and there's a lot you can be proud of there. Um, it's, it's, it's being finished, you know? Mm. I, do, I think for him, for a proud man, and he's a proud man, you know? Like, he doesn't want to... He doesn't want to see, seem to be losing in devastating fashion, and, and and that's what I'm worried about. And you know, when we talk about hard punches, a lot of the time we're rating that on records and records only. Mm. And I could think of so many Ooh. fighters who weren't regarded as hard punchers, and then ended up going on a spree of fights where they were getting like Josh Warrington comes mm. to mind. He he was never getting stoppages in his first twelve fights or something, and then went on a consistent run of fights where he was getting them. So mm. I think you could look at it and you could go, well, the powers of KSI over Tommy Fury 
Records aren't everything, mate. Trust yeah, me. Look. Speak to people that have maybe been in with them, and then you might go, oh, okay, uh, it's a bit Bisping more even. was a funny one like that as well. There was people like Chael Sonnen who fought Bisping and were like, Psh one of the hardest punches I've ever mm. fought in my life. Yeah, he didn't have the most knockouts, you know. Yeah. Uh, we're at the uh, the decision now. Um, Kenny clearly knows he didn't do enough. His brother Daly is explaining what went wrong. Um, but look, there's no shame no. for Kenny here. Like, I, you're, you fought a proper pro there. And I yeah. think it's quite obvious that as much as Kenny isn't, um, sorry, as much as AT isn't the most explosive puncher, the most, you know, entertaining guy at this level, <laughs> he's just like a, a wily old veteran compared to these guys. Like he he knows how to manage fights and get and make the most out of what he's got and to do enough to win rounds. Yeah, and ultimately, like on misfits, the good thing is is that it actually doesn't matter if you take a loss. It's not like your career's done. So true. Like you could lose. Yeah, it's like the UFC. You yeah, could, no. and honestly, like two, three in a row. If you're entertaining, if you've got support. If you know they're putting you on, you just, it doesn't matter, man. Come back, yeah. and if anything, people love the support um, to support. You know the comeback fighter that is coming back from a loss. Yeah, you know. And, and this is that's another good point when you when people are comparing to professional boxing. Mm. Yet again, this is where pro boxing need to look and say, actually, these guys are losing, mm. but they're entertaining and they're still fighting again, getting more opportunities. Like it's a positive thing, and this is one it's thing so much better than pro boxing. Like pro that. boxing just don't understand. Oh, like yeah. you know, like you, you, it's like years ago with the UFC, boxing never really learned from what the UFC were doing. And yet again, this is coming along. Are they going to learn again and say, look? We need to be doing what these guys are doing. Like, follow a business plan that's working. It's as simple as that. It doesn't matter what what it is. It could be a different industry. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Follow that formula, and that's what pro boxing are often often missing, basically. Yeah. Mm. So, shout out to the ten thousand viewers we've got live, motherfucker. But that, but boy, Cheers, that, that is like us being in, say, the Copper Box Arena and it being packed out right now, and there us in go. the middle. You've it, done that before, though. To be fair, I've, 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 <laughs> <laughs> that was only I think eight and a half thousand. Yeah. So it's even more. No, that's pretty. Nah, shout out everyone shout subscribe out. like the video we really appreciate you we've got the decision coming over King Kenny uh, looking like a loss to Anthony Taylor no shame in that and uh, next up it is the lightweights uh, Dean the Great versus Willie Sharks um, and we're going to get this decision now I'm pretty sure it's unanimous I mean it, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty clear and this is the um 49, 45, all three judges for the new light heavyweight champion of the world of misfits, Anthony Taylor. Is it? Uh, yep, yeah. there you go. Um, play. Oh, <laughs> and he's just collapsed. Um, it does mean a lot to him, to be fair, Anthony. Like, for him, this is a guy who felt like a bit of a reject in uh, MMA, certainly not a superstar in boxing, and he's found a home. He's shaking the ropes. <laughs> he's a fan of the Ultimate Warrior, yeah. uh, the old wrestler. Batista. Um, and going back to Joey, uh, Joey is actually um, going to be fighting in the division yep. of the title fight that's coming up next. So you're going to get a closer look at these guys you might be sharing the ring with at some yeah, point. Yeah, hopefully so. I mean, look, both of them... Both of them look good, you know mm. what I mean? And both of them would look to the untrained eye like maybe they were guys that had done some sort of boxing before, obviously the influencer boxing scene. D Dean the Great, if you don't know, he sort of got his come up in the street fighting YouTube style Kimbo Slice type shit. Really? Oh. Yeah, so he was like brawling and I believe Keemstar spotted him, I think. Someone, I don't know if it was Keemstar specifically, but they brought the footage to mm. Keemstar and mm. he, he signed him up. And he's regarded as the puncher in this fight. Obviously, he stopped a couple of opponents. Stopped Waleed, even. Yeah. yeah. The, 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 I think the only credible one you could say stopped is Waleed. Obviously, he stopped Arif, I think it is. Yeah, Arif, the, who, the first guy was, was bang average. Yeah. Uh, the first guy I seen on Misfits 1 didn't look yeah. like... I mean, he wasn't bad, but, you know... The, in terms of ticking boxes as well, like, he's come back from being dropped. He's been in a hard fight now where, obviously, he's... Uh, got dropped twice in there, the Waleed Got one. dropped in that fight, come back, and that shows heart, and that's something that inevitably going down that sort of street fighter type route you will pick up. Very interested because a lot of people I speak to are thinking that Waleed is winning this one. So mm. be very, very I'll interesting. I'll pick Waleed. He, but I, Dean's the favourite mm. by uh, most people. Um, I want to come back to the Logan Paul, Dylan, Dennis fight. There's just a few yeah. other things um, I want to cover. In terms of just general questions for the table... Do we think the mind games will take an impact on Logan Paul in this fight? I spoke to a friend of the show, believing Bruce, the body language yes. expert, and he said 
as much as he doesn't rate Dylan's boxing technique, the worry is is the adrenaline and the rage within Logan and the pressure on Logan to his beautiful fiance is here tonight. I'm here to defend your honor. If he can keep his mind in the arena while all of that is going on. You know, so many people have been chatting shit about you. Like one of these videos that was tweeted out by Dylan got a hundred million views. Like mm -hmm. this isn't something you can just have a spliff and a whiskey and ignore. You know what I mean? Speaking yeah. from personal experience. Mm. Like for that, it's it's a whole nother ball game. So do we think Logan is going to be able to perform as he would want to on the night? So, I mean, I personally think with the WWE experience, I think that will benefit him massively because when he first started with that, he wasn't used to getting booed. And he actually has said that that really affected him mm. because everyone booed the hell out of him. And I feel like that whole thing of having to learn to be totally present regardless of what's going on over here. And if anything, use it to your advantage. He's been doing that for weeks on end now. Oh, wow. You're so right. He's you, such a performer. And do you know what, what I mean? And I've seen how well he d uh, does in those scenarios. So now he'll, yeah. he'll look at the camera and be like, yeah, bitch. Yeah. yeah. And he'll egg the fans on. Mm. So it'll feel like home for him. And that's yeah, that's what I think. So yeah. I think I think Logan will be used to it. And if anything, having his fiance ringside, I think as a man, that's going to that's gonna evoke some fucking focus, testosterone, all of it to go, right, I need to do the job here. And I think you'll actually see Logan come out composed i think he's he knows ah oh, i can't come out here swinging and going crazy i think you'll see him be very composed and i think he's going to do a job you know Jab what if i'm him off. if i'm him yeah and i'm in front of the missus Ooh. i'd rather die than be taken out of there i'd rather you know what fucking I mean? die do you know what i mean kill me before i'm out of here yes. like if i'm breathing i'm punching do yes. like i'd be saying to the corner on some chris eubank shit no towel no towel. No towel. Mm. What are you saying, lads? What do you think? I think it's a perfect opportunity. <laughs> I'll because... set you right for that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I'm getting carried away. It was good. The alcohol's uh, sort of <laughs> taking an effect now. <laughs> Sorry. It was good. I just think it's a perfect opportunity for him to kind of use this and mm. go out there and do the number running because Dylan, like we've said, he isn't really a puncher anyway mm. from, from what we've seen. So if you can't do it against him, it's kind of did where's you, he going to go? Did you see any of Dylan's actual punching? I've, I've seen little bits of it, mm. not much of it, but like it, it doesn't look very great. It doesn't look very good. Do you know what I mean? No, but you, because you train guys, so you, you take them from literally know nothing to the ring. Yeah. So where would you put him on that scale? Pretty low level, re re like realistically. Mm. Um, it's, it is, I just think realistically, regardless of what pressure Logan's got, mm. he should go. Like I, I actually think Logan Paul's quite technical. Like he's got quite good technique, uh -huh. good balance. And um, what I've seen of him, he should go out there and destroy him. As when far we as first watched Logan together, me and you, you said he has the potential yeah. to be better than Jake and JJ. Hundred. I said that from day one because I think when I, one thing boxers often look at is someone's balance and how they move, like when they move on the front foot, back foot, when you're letting your hands go and he's kind of got that good balance and I don't know if that comes from his wrestling background Probably um not. but generally speaking he technically looks pretty good the only thing he was lacking like Jake was that little bit of spite in what he does if you could get if a you bit haven't of... got that tonight you're never gonna have it yeah. e exactly that's the <laughs> point he should go out there and do a number he's not got he's not like he's in with someone like a Mayweather who really knows what he's doing or someone else who's like a bit of a puncher like when he fought KSI he's in there with a guy who's not really from what we've seen, mm. doesn't look like he'd punch, so he should just go out there and my, just try to My only off. X factor on this is Dylan Dennis trains with big time MMA guys all the time. He's always in the gym, right? So the, we've seen him uh, with Alex Pereira, who's one of the hardest punchers in the history of MMA. Mm -hmm. And they weren't going full on, but he says on, on the on when the footage stopped, we went full on for six rounds. And it's been known that Conor McGregor basically used him as a punching bag uh, in exchange for um, to teach him teach him how to box while Dylan trained him how to do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And Connor hit him so badly that he broke his face. He literally broke his face. They had to have like surgery, some stuff mm -hmm. like that. So like in my head, I'm like, if Dylan Dennis has been getting beaten up by Connor McGregor for that long, probably not a pussy. Like you're probably quite yeah. tough. Mm. So I guess his hope is to just endure whatever's coming in the early rounds and hope you could take him late. I think everything you've said there is why I see a, a completely spoiled fight coming up here. Really? Why I see a bit of a hug fest. Why I see that at times. Because I think that when you talk about stars making fights, they sort of contradict each other in terms of, I think what you've got to do against Dylan Dennis is be really aggressive with him to be able to put him back in his shell. And I don't think Logan Paul has that aggression from what we've seen in his fights so far. Ironically, 
you can sort of write off the Mayweather fight because it's Mayweather. But the best I've seen Logan Paul was in the first KSI fight mm, in yeah, terms of jab was in great. terms of jab ambition and things like that. Yeah. So I think that when you look at that from Logan Paul's side, not the most ambitious and also not the most ruthless. Doesn't have that inner bastard about him type thing and then when you look at Dylan Dennis you think someone that's probably going to miss a lot of punches and therefore end up hugging a lot and holding a lot because you're in that range already from missing those punches so that's why I could potentially see it being a bit of a boring fight but I will caveat that by saying a lot of the time I think fights are going to go one way and they go uh, completely up, completely no, up the, the, so. the fact that he's like and this has been a regular criticism like people like Wade have criticised Logan for not having the spite the bastard this has got to change tonight, mate. You have to nail this. To, but it's knowing how to utilize the bastard, uh -huh. right? <laughs> because he could do that in a way that's just like tense up, throw really stiff. Like, like he did against uh, Floyd. Yeah, Floyd do you know what I round. mean? And you just gash yourself out. Yeah, Whereas yeah. he needs to use, if he, yeah, but basically he just Harness needs to utilize the bastard. It. Harness the bastard uh -huh. and it'll be all right. Do you, you, you know, uh, obviously, Logan on a personal level, Brian. What would you say, like, out of the two of them, when we were speaking about the build-up, who do you think's being more of themselves? Do you think they're both just level playing field, both being themselves, or do you think that it's coming a little bit less natural to Logan than it is to, to Dylan? Because that's how it looks from the outset, looking in. I think when you... I mean, Logan has, like... Like all, like we all do, he has several different versions of himself. Mm. When you're hanging out with Logan, he's just like anyone, anyone here, chill guy, shoots the shit, quite laid back, actually really laid back in conversation. Um, but strategically, he's he's quite a reptilian person. He's very thinks the long term, thinks business plans. He thinks how am I going to get the most at the end of the day. Um, and I think uh, he's quite cold blooded like that, and that 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 should help him, like you say. Mm. In but. M the only things that haven't helped him in the past is there was just this moment in the KSI fight where he says he was ill. I sneezed three times, uh, that, that, that line. But JJ's just got more of the dog, right? And that just took effect in that fight. Um, and I think he... Sometimes they say you need a... You need a killer in front of you to become a killer, like to yeah. actually channel that from yourself and go, I need... And I'm not saying Dylan's a killer in terms of physically. But he, he, you've got that man. If he hasn't brought the dog out of you and mm. brought the killer out of you, nothing will. Yeah. Like, this is the worst build-up I can remember in a fight ever. Yeah. That's why this is going to do the biggest numbers it is, is because Dylan's went the places you never, ever should. Facts. Uh, also, we've got Willie Sharks walking out now uh, wearing a Halloween mask. Frankenstein sort of. Mm. Or is it? What, no. Who's that? I think that's the guy from Halloween, right? The one the, who's... Chases you down and mm. kills you in the lake. Strange. But also, wait, following that, <laughs> wait, wait, following that Anthony Taylor uh, Kenny fight, do you think if Dylan Dennis applies the Anthony Taylor tactics, maybe that could actually be a way in which he can win? Could definitely be a way in which he wins. Is he skilled enough to do it? That's what I'd be unsure mm. of because you can look at the Anthony Taylor one and go, well, it's not much skill. Trust me. Yeah. But there, there is a bit yeah. of skill there to be able to do that. Whether yeah. it's crude or not, that's another question. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. it is, there is Dylan, a know how. Dylan in, in sparring, he looks quite passive. He looks quite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very, you know, like, it's very <laughs> flowy. Yeah, yeah. It's like Conor McGregor style but, sparring. And the other thing I would say with that is all likelihood is that most of the footage we've seen of Dylan Dennis has been not necessarily released himself by Dylan Dennis, but has been given the okay, has been given the go ahead. Mm. So it could again be a master move. It could be a master stroke in only releasing the bits and pieces from sparring, from his pad work that make him look absolutely rubbish. Yeah, but surely you would have at least seen at least once in a fight him display some sort of striking ability. The fact that like we've never seen it mm. surely means that like... Oh. Well, yeah, we, we've seen him get tagged a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, him, you see him get hurt. Mm. I've got a quick shout out. Uh, shout out to John Fury who's donated £10 with the words, <laughs> I'm a machine! I'm a machine! Um... Shout out to uh, Big John. What do we think of Big John in this build? He's been fucking <laughs> value as always. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, I think he's well funny, but I understand how at times it can can be a bit like, oh, can he just not for this moment so that the guys that we want to hear talk can talk? There was a moment the other day where um, KSI was trying to talk. <laughs> and like you're like, this is the main event. The man who's paid everyone <laughs> to be here. Yeah. And all you can hear is John in the background like, <laughs> you can't silence me! <laughs> And, and he's like, well, someone shut that twat up. Yeah. <laughs> the best thing was after the first press conference where John Fury's flipped the table, done an Instagram story. Do you remember it? And he said, I'm sorry for the way I acted. <laughs> Shouldn't have acted like that. And then literally KSI's talking. John Fury's just got his ass out slapping it. Oh, <laughs> there, there, John's ass, not KSI's. There, there, yeah, there was this moment where, so John's 
being held back sort of in the corner while this all goes on. And there's two, like, young ring card girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. And, like, they're, like... And he starts shouting, and they start sort of, like, backing away. And then you get another angle where John bends over and gets his arse in. <laughs> and you're like, oh, those girls. I feel sorry for you. Yeah, I no, hope they weren't too close. You're not the next step <sighs> for John is, though. Oh, he's already said. Only fans. He's, no, no, no. no. You've got to be here. Misfit. You've got to be in here. You're selling yourself uh, as the star of the show. We need to see you in here, mate. And do you know what? Like, I do think that as much as we can have opinions on it, I think we're all very much in the same boat of saying, this is not professional boxing. No, this yeah. is this is WWE, but not fake. Yeah. It's WWE, but it's real and people can actually yeah. get hurt. Wait, and WWE that, is fake? It's not real either. Like <laughs> um, because, because of that... I do think that a character like John Fury, like I said about Anthony Taylor and a few of the other boys on the show, very much Who found his home. Who the fuck fights John Fury, though? Because if, if, he's, he's mentioned taking Mickey fight. Theo wanted it. No, he didn't. I don't know if wait, John answered the call, you know. Surely, there's, a, that? Wait, surely there's only one man. Mike Tyson? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> my dad, maybe. No, I've got like, money on my dad. I don't know who could actually face John F Fury. First, he's about 60. <laughs> And and then, do you know what was mad? Is uh, I, I was wondering, like, how good was John? So I see in the footage of him when he was a young and right. Mm. And it didn't look great, right? But the point, the point was, he was always, um, he was always called Gypsy John, and he would like, as in, it was he was taken quite lightly, as in, we need a last minute guy. He'll turn yeah. up, no training, put the gloves on, have a scrap, and they would put him in with high level guys to make them look good. So John was kind of set up for failure, really. Mm. Um, but then I see in uh, Dominic Ingle talking the other day. Uh, from the Ingle, famous Ingle gym yeah, yeah. who trained so many mm -hmm. world champions and Winker he went oh my, my, my dad said if you took John Fury when he was young and trained him mm -hmm. he had a lot of natural ability and he was actually a very talented boxer but just could never dedicate himself because he was always on the piss and he was never actually mm. giving it the real well, one. You know the guys that you saw him get stopped against in them clips that have oh, circulated they were top, online? Top they, were, they, were, they were good, good British-level yeah. fighters. Like Henry... Like a Wonder, one day, yeah, yeah he, he was obviously a good British-level mm. fighter. And, you know, you see that and you think, okay, but one thing I would say about John Fury, and I, I listen, I love Tyson Fury. I hope no one would hold it against me, but... You know when he hit that perspect glass? Is it called perspect yeah, glass? Yeah. The glass in the cage. He definitely thought he was smashing it with that first punch, <laughs> didn't he? He's gone, ba boom And then it just sort of stayed there. And he thought, for fuck's sake, I'll go again. <laughs> 20 but, minutes later, but, um, it's still there. I mean, this is the thing with John, though. He, he's so unhinged. Like, imagine he smashes that glass and the glass flies into KSI and we've got a fight off. Like, yeah. what are you doing? Like? I just you think, know what I mean? I just think his brain goes into ultimate, like, animal instinct like it does not matter any of these human things that are occurring oh, no. around me irrelevant it's just i am a lion and i am trying to kill and he, that is he all literally he said to ksi i will bum you <laughs> he was literally looking up at ksi <laughs> as ksi was on this thing and he was like i'll fucking bum yeah, you yeah, yeah. and you're like 57 yeah. well, that is pay-per-view though <laughs> yeah it's like how outrageous he's, he's trying to do everything in his being to try and get to you and it's yeah that is his thing did you see him start on logan paul's dad yeah anyone because greg paul goes over to him goes oh yeah nice like he goes to shake his hand and then he just randomly goes will you fight me I'm a fighting man and you fight me now. Do, do you know what's funny Greg about Paul. that? Has anyone ever been in situations when uh, you, you've got a bit of a beef with someone, you think, when I see that fella, I'm going to fucking let him know. And then you see him and they catch you off guard. They go, all right, mate, you go, all right. And then you walk off and you think, oh, why didn't I say something? Mm. That was what that was. John Fury goes, Greg Paul, how, you want to fight me? <laughs> like yeah. straight away, it just he goes within two seconds, mm. doesn't it? Fucking insane. <laughs> And um, you know if that had happened in real life, I think Greg Paul, because Greg Paul, he's like a wily southern geezer, right? He, he's he, got a gun. He, he churned out Jake and Logan. He'd have pulled that gun out. Mm. And he would have blown John Fury away, and that would have been the last we heard of John Fury. Oh, uh, Max style. We're uh, <laughs> we're underway here. Uh, we got the lightweight Misfits Boxing World Title on the line. Uh, Dean the Great with lead shocks the rematch. Arguably. Oh! Oh! What a shot from a left hook from Walid. My money's on this geezer. I need him to come through. Oh, <laughs> my. That was off the bat. Left hook. Uh, do, do you know the thing that became really apparent in the first fight is Walid reads Dean so yeah. well, and he just got cocky and switched oh, off. Oh, the he's good. Is Dean's just replied with the right uh, hand. Jesus, the, fun, the, fun, the funny thing there is like there's obviously the aspect of catching someone cold and it's not like Dean went down but what we've seen so far from <laughs> Dean in his fights is as explosive as he can be and as dangerous as he can be it doesn't always look like he takes a shot well Mate, he's, you know he, he's the fucking he's the misfits Amir Khan mm. 
Like Get fast hard, he, but he's very vulnerable. Uh, good follow up by uh, Walid there with the the step in, um, but they're both so quick with the Boom. hands. Um, and it, Dean has recently changed training camps to a more professional training camp. So you'd think they'd really be getting him. Mm. And he's actually started to step in, do his work and jump out and uh, get out the way of Walid. I think, ironically, it won't get the flowers that maybe it deserves because the lighter weights don't always get as much attention. But these are two of the best boxers you we're going to oh, see you tonight. You can see the quality in these two. <gasps> oh. oh, this is... Th yeah, this is probably the highest level boxing match we'll get. Well, mm. Yeah. What is good is that we're getting two guys that are both engaging as well. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? I think that's what's been great across the card so far in, in total. Like, everyone's come to fight. Well, except for Swarms. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, poor guy. But these, these guys are doing high-level stuff, you know what I mean? These are, mm. They're trying to draw each other in using the jab. They're not just running at each other, throwing punches. Mm. Yeah, this is real good stuff for uh, for Misfits. And I think a lot of the the like the lads, the higher ups at Misfits are kind of proud of this one to be one of the ones where cuz they're very aware like this is a lot of people's first introduction to Misfits. So what they want to do is go, okay, yeah, we got the gimmicks. Yeah, we've got a lot of fun fights, but there's some quality here as well and that you'll get a bit of everything on a fight. The other good thing in Walid Shark's favour here is like, once someone's beat you, okay, yeah, it can happen again. But at the end of the day, you've already experienced the lowest of the low here. Oh, oh great shot shots, from Walid Shark there. <laughs> Walid Shark's has pinned him into a corner. But Dean's firing Dean. back, but maybe that's not the most sensible thing to do here. Maybe you should look to roll out to his left and take a second. There's no harm in giving up one exchange to be able to come back stronger in the next one, rather than trying to fight yeah. fire with fire all the time. But not many of them shots were landing clean. He was kind of just rolling mm. them the one. I mean, the beauty of this is, is there's some real bad blood between them. It isn't mm -hmm. just, oh, we want to compete for the title. These guys hate each other. Are you talk uh -oh. about, uh oh, if you talk about checking each what other's Instagram and stuff like that, yeah. he just tried to bum them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all well and good doing that. You need to be up in a fight to be doing that sort of exactly. stuff, in my opinion. But remember, remember when um, Madonna versus what do you call him? Yeah, want to be me with yeah, her? What, what do you call him? Um, What's the guy who thought he was a Mayweather? Oh, oh Devin Alexander, was it? No, no. You're not having a drink? Uh, Mate, I'll have a drink. Oh, sorry, yeah. Okay, what uh, one? Uh, right. Always getting nicked. Yeah, what's yeah, his what, name? What's 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 vodka? <laughs> I'm getting groomed. I'll have, I'll have another yeah, yeah, one I'll if go, going. Fine, I'll go vodka Adrian and Brona. diet coke. Brona. Adrian Brona, yeah. Brona did exactly that. But I'll go for a wee. Uh, vodka lime soda. Do you want a drink, Loz? You want a drink? Yeah. Why not? Yeah, whiskey. So we got two vodkas, two uh, two whiskeys, uh, and whatever Josh is having. What are you having? Josh? I'm I'm fine. I've got a lovely diet Pepsi. Yes. So I feel great. Can we just uh, while there's a, a round uh, being paused here, just want to tell you that the uh, the bid for Man United has been uh, withdrawn. So they're now not going to be bought oh, out. Wow. The Glazers have rejected the last offer. Okay. And so um, Sheikh Jassim has has informed them that he will no longer be oh, continuing Man United to fans are going to be that's so pissed. A, we'll be covering that shame. on the kickoff. Don't worry. We'll be, we'll be getting back. We're, we're underway for the second round here, but we will be covering that on the kickoff. Don't forget to like and subscribe to everyone who's watching. Appreciate you all. Uh, we're underway for the second round. Dean, the great Waleed Sharks. Do you know what I found really interesting here? Did you see both uh, both men's weight when they were when they were lining the tail of the tape up? Nah. Both were under, under 130 pounds which is making me worry a little bit, thinking have I got to make 130 instead of 135? No, it's definitely 135, but I just think a lot of these guys, like with it being, you know, uh, influencer boxing, yeah. it, 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 it's a broad, you know, weight category, yep. isn't it? It's, it's, it's a lot like the UFC early days where it was mm. like, okay, can you get under this weight? Okay, yeah. you're fighting for that the, title the, then. The, the, <gasps> oh, a, a knee. That is a knockdown. That's a legit is that, knockdown. Is that a yeah. legit that that's a slip? That is, nah, that's a legit knockdown. It was a balance issue, maybe, rather than the shot being so hard that he's, it put he's him not over. protesting it, though. But Walid Sharks has come in and he's been caught with a short right hand from Dean the Great. And as much as I think Sharks is the better boxer out of the two of them, it's a real power when you've got a man in front of you that you know you can hurt. He's also slowed down a little bit, Walid, mm. and he's, he's, his oh, legs are. Oh, he's, oh, hurt, he's, you know? he's gone. He's gone. Yeah. He's gone. He's going to fuck me, accumulate a right up. Uh oh, yeah, he's, he's definitely gone. He can't, he, his defense is gone. Nah. And the problem with him is, 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 uh, is Dean's just hit harder, isn't it? It's, oh, yeah, he's, 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 he's going, in autopilot yeah. he's here. In, he's going. Oh, oh, yeah, I don't know how he's gonna. Uh, he looks like Amir Khan here, you yeah. know, when the Bambi legs start going. Mm. It's just, he's still what, throwing, I'll give I him that. He, I think he's going to come through. I'll be stunned if he gets I, through this. I think he's going to come through. Just, I hope he does, though. One clean but shot, mate. Those Bambi legs, mate, they're skinny, tiny little legs, Wait. man. 
Wait, but, who, who's got the Bambi legs? Uh, Walid Sharp. Walid Sharp. He, he's just he's been, been dropped, dropped and he's, he's been rocked after that as he, well. He was having a bit of success against Dean the Great. He's gone in and on the way in, he's been clipped of a he, short but, right but You hand. know when their coordination goes in their hands as oh, well? He's, he's, oh. Oh. His coordination's absolutely gone. Yeah, he, he's, a, he's pushing forward. I'll, I'll give him that. Uh, Brian, it was funny. You said about you know Dean the Great being able to read Walid Sharks. I think both men can read each other. Yeah, you know? yeah, I yeah, really yeah. do think that. But in the first fight, it was all the lead until it turned, and once it turned, it didn't. But in this fight, to be fair to Dean, he's he's actually really great handled uppercut this from well. Dean the Great, there, lovely little right uppercut. You know, when you're watching this, Joey, obviously yep. you'll be competing in this weight class. Are you seeing anything where you're like, or do you fancy do you fancy it? With these. Oh, and he's down again. What a shot. Well, lead shots oh, is down again. And this is pretty much game setting match in the second round. It's hard to see a turnaround after a bad second round, yeah, where you've been dropped twice. There's only 20 seconds left in the round. Can he survive? Yeah, I think Dean is tuning up the switch in music. Oh. Oh, and that uppercut lands. Body shot. I mean, he's a sitting duck, yeah, well, lead. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's throwing these jabs, Just but there's hold. nothing behind them. He needs to hold. Yeah. It, the fact is, is once he'd been dropped the first time, mm -hmm. his punches just looked completely gone. He went to 50% speed. Yeah. It was just... Mate, so robotic, so uncoordinated. I'll tell you the problem with uh, getting the finish here for Dean the Great. I've watched a bit of Dean the Great, and obviously when I look at him, he's actually not the best finisher when it needs to finish in terms of off the front foot. So far in this fight, look, the bigger highlight reel knockout we've all seen is when he walks towards Walid Shark, bomb, one shot puts him over. But actually, his best punches always come off the back foot. They're always the counter punches. Mm. He counter punched him with a right hand that uh, drew the drop knee for the first uh, knockdown. He counter punched him there with a straight right hand off the ropes. And one thing that a fighter is always going to be weary of when they're fighting someone like that is that if you do get him under a bit of pressure. So let's say, for example, you're in there with him, you push him back to the ropes, you start to think, right, I can unload him a little bit here. You always know he's got that danger of being able to clip you. And what that can do is it can buy in time and it can also stop him yeah, taking punishment. Because you're, you're, you're not going to get greedy when you know that there's something behind it. Are you playing possum here? Yeah. Are you going back to the ropes because you're about to throw that short right hand? Yeah, we're underway again for the third round. It, it, it would take a monumental turnaround at this yeah. point. And I don't, it's... I'd be shocked if it happens with two drops in the first two rounds. Oi. Well, he's still pushing forward, but he hasn't learned his lesson. No, he's mm. still, he's, his reflexes still aren't there. He, he, he should be taking a round oh, off. Oh, yeah. look at the wobble there. Oh, he's gone. Pink. Mate, his legs are absolutely wobbly, man. He looks like Amir Khan. Being going into Southpaw now, which yeah. means he is finding it easy because that's not coming as natural to me. <laughs> oh, he... I mean, this oh, is, you can't see where the punch This is embarrassingly from. easy for Dean, to be fair. I mean, uh, we lead when he watches this back. There, there, was, there was dispute after the first fight. The referee fight. needs to come in here now. The, the, fir the first fight was, was controversial because mm. we lead dropped him twice, and when he got dropped, the referee w waved it off and didn't, even though he was up and he was ready to carry on, the referee waved it off. There's no controversy here. Like, no. this is fucking a beatdown. I mean, he's still oh, look, going. Look, Credit to him. I mean, the heart of Waleed is unquestionable. I'll give him that. Like, it's it's not a case of this. This is where the corners should take over and chuck the towel in because he's defenseless right now. Yeah. Would you be happy with your your corner of chucking in the towel at this point, though? <sighs> it, it depends on what it's for. Like this, there's levels. If of it what was the, like this, what the competition's like, for? He's still as landing a, shots. He's still landing. As a fan, and obviously, then I've not got an emotional connection to the fighter. I'd like to see. Or not uh, like Dean to see, is running away all of a sudden. You'd want to see three or four clean more blows go in before you go, right, that's enough. Because it, yeah. if it was to go in now, there's going to be question marks. There really I've are. seen, and just to give a little bit of credit to Misfits though, as, as much as you know, it's, it's been a, a great performance by Dean, I've seen worse pro boxing matches at pro uh, uh, on pro events than this. I think yeah. this is a, 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 a good representation for misfits. Well, mm -hmm. look at Eddie Hearn's face, ringside, smiling. Like, well, he's, he's loving it. Do you know what I mean? And, and that's what I'm saying. Like, look at it. Like, this, this isn't a joke. This isn't ridiculous. This is boxing, mate. And I feel like, you know, yeah, it is a good representation. But to give credit to the opponent in Wally Sharks also, we say about the level of the fight, the level of the fight can only look that level if you've got two dance partners who are both skilled. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think uh, Walid might be getting a bit of a, um, a bit of a second win. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. not saying he's ready to win a fight by any means, but but he's he's coming in and he's actually having a little bit more ferocity in his punches. A lot of people are saying, sorry, Joe. A lot of people are saying that Dean has hurt his left hand. 
Oh really? Yeah. Um, Interesting. We, yeah. We all so, do injuries, man. So we'll see. So we'll see if he throws the left here because look, he's oh, throwing the right oh, oh, and there, and that what? was the, that was the sort of shot that, that dropped him in the first gone. in the yeah. first fight. Jab, come on, jab, son. He's not throwing the left though, is he? Like what? what? I, I said earlier on when uh, Willie Sharks was looking in a bit of trouble there that I expected him to come What's through that? that little moment, and that's because from watching the no one likes to pat you on the with, off on the with, back with, now, with, with, with a keen <laughs> eye, I must say. He's not a great finisher. He's not a very good finisher. You look at the finishes he's had, it's usually been one single shot, not him dropping and hurting someone and putting the accumulation. Yeah, you'd have thought you'd have got him out of there by now, for sure. You look I, like I want you to talk all that shit, Joey, on the, on the build at once. You're fighting him. <laughs> you say you can't finish. You couldn't finish your dinner, lad. Um, but no, it's been a good fight. I'll, I'll give credit to Walid. I thought he was absolutely out of there. I did. Mm. And it's part of his heart that's gotten through, and it's partly Dean not being a great finisher. Oh, uh, hey, Tommy's on his way in. Puffer jacket. Not my choice. No, I've got to back hmm. it up now. Fair play. <laughs> um, he said something to uh, KSI. He was like, I've had to be away from my wife and kids for or whatever for three months, and you're going to pay for that. And I was like, oh, that's a good line, though. That is a good line. Yeah, he's getting better. Yeah, he's yeah, better. yeah. His trash talk in the face-off was... Yeah. I was really impressed with it. Yeah, it's it. quick-witted. It's weird. Yeah. It's just, like, he's developed skills that we've never seen yeah. from him KSI before. KSI looked a bit shocked in that. He was yeah. like... And I was like shouting at the TV like you know question his ability yeah. question, you're the pro fighter why mm. did you not manage to stop Jake Paul why have you not do you know what I mean but it was mm. all <laughs> Tommy was the aggressor in that face off mm. that gave me a bit of I was like oh, I don't hate yeah. this because like, this thing is your is, arena this JJ the thing is uh, though like I almost feel like in, in all of the build ups of JJ's fights like there's always a moment that he does something that everyone gets on him like oh you lost that whether it be like the issue with the you know the, the incident leading yeah. up to the Joe Fournier fight, yeah. whatever. It's like where the world turns on him or, or everyone says, oh, you lost this, you lost, and it gives him a kick. And we've seen him now come so strong as we get closer to fight night that, you know, but ultimately oh. I, will, I do want to say at the same time, like this, these things leading up, like they don't actually, like we try to read into it, but they actually can't, they don't give away as much as we like to think we can actually gauge from them. Oh no, they're intangibles. Like, and, and this is the thing is, the reason I like the look of them is because I think, is the skill gap close enough where these things might take it? Right. So with, with right. Logan and Dylan Dennis, if the skill gap is close, then all of... Oh, big shot. Waleed is in trouble. Oh, he's really in trouble. And they Down should in. throw the Ref towel in. Stop Referee. it. Stop it, ref. Referee needs to stop this right now. You're right. Oh, he you held him. Did you see that? He yeah. held him and then was digging him. That's not fucking legal. That is a fucking point deduction. You can't do that. That's a fucking point deduction, that. You can't, that's what Logan Paul got deducted two points yeah, for against yeah, KSI. Yeah. That's the doctor yeah. is involved. That is uh they're it's putting it. his gum shield pack in. The referee hasn't even said a thing about the, the fact that he held his head down. That is wild, man. What was the corner saying to him in that moment there? Were they saying just give it everything you can? Uh, I, he's out on his feet, is he not? I, I don't know. They were trying to delay put the gum shield in as long as possible. Yeah, That's the all ref wasn't having any of it. Delay to, get, to bite him a bit of time. Apparently holding the guy's head down is fine, but taking too long to put the gum shield in isn't. The ref's like, oh, oh. Out, motherfucker. Oh, out. he's yeah. gone. <laughs> this he's is it. Gone. Surely that's... Oh, left how is he still in it? Nick, well, he's he's on his feet. You know, he's starting to, he'll win fans out of being just a gutsy performance here, will he, to be mm -hmm. fair to him. But he won't help my accumulator. <laughs> um, he uh, can't find that one punch, you're right. Mm -hmm. He can't quite find the finish. Yeah. We're seeing a little bit of like, I don't know, if, if I'm you, Joey, mm. I'm not mad at what I'm saying right now. Are you feeling a bit more confident out of this? I think looking at it, I think that Dean the Great has done really, really well in a fight that obviously, as we say, a lot of people thought that he would struggle to come through. So I want to give him props for that. I don't just want to be the guy that wants to fight him and then, for example, I'm going to trash him because at the end of the day, why do I want to fight him? Because he's because he's probably the best one there around my weight. Mm. So I think he's doing really well. I think he's got a razor sharp right hand at times. But what I would say is whenever I look at someone and I'm looking at them as a potential opponent, I don't really look at what they're doing so much. I try to look at what the opposition are doing and think, well, what would I do there? What would I be able to exploit? What areas would I be able to expose in a different way? So there's a lot of things that I probably won't say on here that I'm looking at here and I'm thinking I could exploit you back. I was just going to ask area. the question, how would you deal with them mate i could box him on the back foot the front foot or one foot it doesn't really matter to me <laughs> whoa mate. fucking walid is really putting it on him fair play he's still fucking going that lad mm. deserves a what a fucking warrior like 
for him to still push him in the corner and dig yeah. him like that after all the punishment he's taken. And this is what I'm saying. This is why it's brilliant. Because if this is the pro ranks, if we're watching a BT sports card, a matchroom show, whatever it is, we're looking at the guy that's losing right now and we're only focusing on the guy that's winning the fight and we're thinking, oh, well, he's on the scrap heap after this. But after this, you would genuinely love to see Wally Chark in there with so many other fighters. Mm. And that's the beauty of it. Like, that's why it has got that MMA slash UFC vibe about it. But I'll tell you what, that right hand from Dean the Great is a really, really beautiful shot. It's his Perfectly best shot. Timed, yeah. mm. I don't know how he's still on. It's almost like he's become immune to the power shots now. Mm. It's almost like he can, he, yeah. he, numb, can take yeah. your power. Yeah, you literally. Yeah, he'll feel it tomorrow, but not, oh. not, he's not feeling much now. Like. When he's trying to eat these mm. cornflakes in the morning. <laughs> yeah, poor bastard. Fucking what a fight, man. You know what's funny is the last fight was viewed as arguably the best influencer boxing fight to date. And I think it's that was more competitive than this, but they, they put on a great show here mm. for everyone. I think you've got to sit on Dean the Great's chest a lot more than he's doing right now. A lot of the time he's throwing that lead hand, leaving it out there with the opportunity to be counted with that right hand. I just think you've got to tuck up tight, get on his chest and try and make things. Anthony Taylor him almost. You or, know what or, I mean? or, or potentially, and this is, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that this is the way, but like you've said, Dean's best shots are often counters. Mm. And, and uh, Walid has been a come forward fighter this whole time. Yeah. You know, maybe draw him out. Let him be the aggressor and see where his holes are in his game from throwing punches mm -hmm. and counter him a bit. Because Walid has really, in my opinion, been too predictable Oof. in this fight. It's and that single counter right hand off of a lazy yeah, jab. That's, yeah, that's the yeah, main yeah. shot he's landed. He's not really yeah. landed much else, to be honest. But when you're looking at Dean's jabs... They're almost non-existent, mate. So if you go on the back foot against him, and I'm not going to give away any game plan, but if you go on the back foot against him and you throw that jab and you get the better of him on that jab, he's got to come on to you. He's got to do something. So mm -hmm. maybe try and make him fight in a way that he's not used to. It, yeah. It, I'm not... It's giving a bit one-trick pony right now and it's a hell of a trick. But it's not even one that has been enough to end the fight yet mm. um, despite how much damage it's done time and time again what I would say is that nine and a half stone give or take very hard to end a fight at times you know mm. what I mean it's, it's... I, I hear you yeah they probably depleted themselves quite a lot as mm. well to get down it's been quite a high pace to be fair as well yeah. there's been a lot of punches thrown very good level yeah by a mile the most <laughs> like we've seen tonight fucking oh oh, oh! Dean's hurt Dean's no hurt. way Dean's hurt. whoa what a <laughs> What a comeback He's that would be. A minute of this what round. Oh, one minute left as well. And Dean is hurt. Right on him here. Mate, my money's on joy if this ever happens. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, mate, Dean's holding on for dear life and he's, he's out of the, the ring. ring. Mate, that is humiliating <laughs> after the way you've bossed him all over the fucking. You can't be doing that, lad. You're crawling back into the ring with a minute left to go. Get up. He is hurt, you know. No, he is. He's doing everything he can to not engage. He's taking his time. Yeah, yeah. If I'm Walid, I'm going fucking 100 mile an hour. Go on, lad. Dig him. Dig him. Oh, what? I mean, oh. no, he's hurting him. You How is he standing? Legend. How are you doing this? And, and Dean the Great is holding on like, for dear life. Come on, Dean. What? Oh. How is this happening? Dean is begging Dean, to stay in this D fight. Dean needs to not step forward. You've got to get on your bike oh, and see yeah. this out now, man. Oh. Don't try and engage oh. with him. Oh, oh, and Don't another do shot. It. Another Don't one. do it, Dean. Oh, oh, and Dean fight. is just holding on for dear life here. After all of the dominance, he is in trouble. What are we watching? Oh, he's in big trouble. Oh, he's in massive trouble. Fuck you. Shit, this, this is actually oh. mental. This is... What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Dean right. is backpedaling. He wants nothing to do with oh, it. Oh, what uppercut from hell. And he takes a knee, does he? Does he? No. This is crazy, mate. Oh. oh my God, Walid is the man. To come back after all of that, you've got my respect. This is just what you, what you were saying earlier on about when what you get, fight. if you land one shot, it's like Super Mario, you just get that energy this boost. This is what I'm saying. And, and look, it's not about me here. It's not about me here, but this he is what I'm saying. The life. I can see stuff in this fight. I've watched him a few times thinking, right, I want to fight this boy. I can see certain things in him and it's just played out there like... Dean ain't great when you're able to hit him with a shot yeah. and not only do that, but then come with actually, you know, intelligent things to counter that off, intelligent moves to be able to bring onto that. Mm. He doesn't fare very well under that. So I think both boys have done themselves proud, but... It, it was a great fight. How I just can't believe he's still in the fight after being hurt. Was it the third of the round, was it? It was the third, yeah. Third? yeah. We were saying to throw in the towel. At the like, third. I literally thought that was him done. 
he, he was wobbling around like Bambi um, for not just one round, off one shot for about two rounds. Mm. So at this weight, right, mm. obviously they get rocked, but is it is it enough to be able to, you know, when, we, when we're like, oh, he's gone back, this has got to be done. Like, is it that, yeah, they're at a weight where they're not able to really... No, if you can, you can listen, if you can punch, you can punch, it doesn't matter what the weight is, okay. but generally speaking, the heavier weight, you have more bigger punches. Mm -hmm. where Because once you get to a certain, like once you get to around the 11 stone mark, if you can you can knock any size man out, if you can punch a little bit, you know what I mean? But naturally, at the lighter weight, you don't have as many punches. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. But you definitely do see punches in this weight. Mate, the fact that they, like the, the part of the beauty of the lighter weights for me, and that's why people do like your Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather types, is like, you're never done, are you? Like it's the, action mm, packed, isn't fucking it? Fucking hell, it's just non stop. I think, yeah. as well, these lighter guys, the, the cardio, because of their pace oh, is yeah. so high, they've also got such a great recovery as well mm. when they get hurt. So, yeah, it's unbelievable sometimes. Mate, that was. that. If, if, if people are watching Misfits for the first time, yeah. that, that's where you're like, shit, this is actually fucking yeah, good, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. No, so thus far, this has been actual, like, full value for money. Oh, yeah. And anyone that is on the fence and was like, you know, tonight, let's check this out. Like, surely, mm. you know, it's it's normal that on, well, on standard boxing cards, it's nearer the main event, like, well, co-main main that you're really interested in. Thus far, everything's been quality. Yeah. Like, in entertaining in different ways as well. Uh, we're about, uh, we're, we're potentially about to step up a level in terms of, in terms of, like, the biggest stars created on Misfits, mm -hmm. it's been Slim and Salt Puppy. Yeah. They're the ones who've had the highlight reel moment. They're the ones who were, no one knew them, and then they rose to uh, the, the, the occasion. Salt Puppy um, has had viral, viral videos, two point odd million on a fight. Um, some of his knockouts have gone so viral, it's unreal. And him and Slim have always been friends. And uh, now they've moved down to a better weight for them. We've seen a body transformation in Salt Papi where he went from this, you know, fat kid mm. to now shredded. Yeah. And Slim's never been uh, body beautiful, but he has these big long levers and he knows how to grit it out and, and knock people out. It, we're going to be in for a real treat this next fight. Um, and I think Slim is generally the favorite. But what against Salt Papi? Uh, I think he's the favourite, yeah, in For terms real? of betting wise. Um, but Salt Papi is the puncher, the mm. one who people are. The, he's got a bit of magic about him, yeah. and that's kind of why I picked him. I, I acknowledge, like, if you're looking at the game plan of what Salt Papi struggled with against AT was mm -hmm. being roughed up, getting on the inside, and someone not smothering him. One, two, hug. Slim does that well, mm. so I think this is a really hard fight for him as well. The other thing, like Slim is is more. Oh wait, we're just getting the the results in quick. Yeah, it's pretty conclusive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dean the Great with unanimous decision. Dean the Great, um, and you know what? Um, I feel for Walid because the effort was there yeah. for a, for a, a win. Um, I mean, just to fight back in the way that he did, like it's just absolutely commendable. Yeah, you can't. I know he's going to be bummed out, but like a lot of people should be patting him on the back. Yeah, yeah, that, for like. real. <laughs> but yeah, well, yeah. What I was, uh, was I mean, going to say about uh, Salt Pappy is that obviously, that's you know, <laughs> Slim is oh. so much more natural at the weight that they're going to be fighting at in terms of like in recent time. Yeah, Salt Pappy's just got to this weight, and yeah. it's you know is losing all of that weight in such a quick time going to going to drain a man. Yeah, your because your body's not used to being or uh, competing at that weight. No. Like it could be a totally different experience. Like. You, sort of, you often see this with fighters when they lose a lot of weight, they, they lack the power, the, the resistance isn't quite the same. So That's what it, I'm worried about because his thing was flash knockouts yeah. and that, you know, but I, I think he's got a solid chin. Mm -hmm. So if, it, but, if he does lose, but, it's going to take but a decent shot. The weight loss could play a part, like it sometimes takes your resistance away yeah. when you lose all that weight. So um, it, it's interesting to see how he's going to I be. was worried that he'd lost it in the wrong way and he would look bad, but he seems to look he looks solid. Yeah, he looks it's strong. A, yeah, it, does it, look it doesn't strong. look like, you know, when some people look gaunt. And yeah, he yeah, look yeah. Like that. He looks great for it, actually. Yeah. yeah I'm looking yeah. at him thinking, what the fuck have you been eating? Like, I need to. He said he's been eating chicken, watermelon, and lettuce. <laughs> that is apparently the secret. <laughs> yeah. I guess we know what I'm but doing next part, week. Part, part of me is thinking, well, he's not getting the nutrients. So that sort of like <laughs> adds to why I think, like, he may be depleted come fight night. Yes. Uh, he was holding his shoulder here, by the way, and he apparently he said that I feel like I might have dislocated my shoulder. He's dislocated it previously it's, twice. Is this his left, left hand? Um, and once you start throwing your shoulder out, that's 
a problem in it because it, it becomes easier and easier. He might need surgery in the long term for that. Um, yeah, anyone who dislocates their shoulder, it's it's a fucking nightmare for like it keeps popping out a lot of the time yeah. once it's come out. One apparently it happened mid fight, Brian. Apparently he Can't, it dislocated, pop, popped it back in, carried he, on fighting. To be fair, Easy, though, he did was predominantly throwing that right hand. He stopped throwing that jab. Yeah. He wasn't throwing a left hook, so it would make sense. I mean, if, if look, if misfits, they're bound to be happy. Like the guy talks a load of shit. He looks good. He sells the fight. He has he has that star quality, like uh, like an old style pretty boy style um, arrogance about yeah. him, you know. And I got no doubt the more the money comes in, we'll see more jewelry. We'll see that swagger. Yeah. So he's going to be a very hateable but lovable mm. like champion. And um, you know, I think they're hoping that they can build him up and, and build him into a star. And, and that was it was a star making performance. So congrats to him, man. Would you, would you want to see a trilogy of this, or do you think it's done? No, I want Joey in there with him next, <laughs> my guy. He won't be a champion for long, then. Yes, <laughs> yes. Come on, get me a tracksuit with kick off on it or something. Yeah, <laughs> kick off tracksuits. Um, but no, I, I, I mean, look, it, it's one of those where. There'll be a lot of eyes on that fight, mate, and uh, yeah. you know, it'll be a fun time, right? Yeah, 100%. I, look, you heard me at the end of that fight. I was cheering for Dean at the mm. end of it because out of the two of them, that's the fight that's more exciting, and I'll, I'll lay my cards on the table. That's a much more winnable fight. Yeah. You know, I, I think I beat either boy, but I think the fight that I've got a bit more of kryptonite for the opponent in is definitely the fight. The thing about Dean, you, right? though, is you're a good talker, and Dean's a talker, and what you want is to hype the fight, and you want people who are going to talk a lot. Mm. And I think you two will clash in a good way, and it'll yeah. make for yeah. exciting well, moments. The, the big thing, though, is that I think, like, in terms of making the fight happen, have you got a plan of how you're going to give him no choice but to accept the fight? Because oh, look, that's the biggest thing. I mean, like now he's going to he have so many options. with the matchmaker, so... <laughs> that's it. No, uh, at the end, yes. at, at the end of the, the day... He gives the exams. So. Yeah. A few brown envelopes under the table, <laughs> never going to miss. But no, like, look, I would say this. I ain't going to be able to have the same sort of pull in terms of numbers on social media and things like that as Dean the Great. But what I you're would say... You're wrong there, by the way. I, you're what, wrong there. Yeah? Yeah. You're already like your audience, the Chelsea audience absolutely love him. Yeah. So they're already massively engaged. What I would say is if you look at the fighters we respect the most, we respect KSI massively tonight, much more in a way than we even respect Logan Paul as the general boxing fan because what's KSI doing tonight? He's fighting a real boxer. Mm -hmm. Why do we respect Jake Paul so much? He's fighting real boxers. And I'm not saying I was a professional boxer because I wasn't, but I'm someone that's had a handful of fights and I've won a handful of fights and I've done, you know, half decent things in boxing on the unlicensed scene and whatnot. So Dean's gone above the level now where you're looking at him against other fighters and you're going, you know, really like who on Misfits do you think's really going to give him major issues? He's knocked out more or less everyone he's been in the ring with. He's dropped everyone he's been in the ring with. So I'm not saying go and fight a pro boxer. I'm saying go and fight someone who knows their way around the ring and can have a fight and isn't going to get in there and play to your tune. So that's the only thing I could say with it. Whether he chooses to do it or not, who knows? He, he, well, he will. He will. Because I think you'll win your introduction fight and then that's when you've, you've got the case to make. Oh, okay. So you're doing a fight before that. Yeah, so oh, the, the okay. next Joy's fight will be this year on right. Misfits and then we'll look to hopefully yeah. make a title We haven't fight. got an opponent yet, but it's either going to be Elbrook or Arms, <laughs> Arms Culeone for my <laughs> first one. Good. Yeah. one hey, I do. Yeah. Um, so next up, yeah, Sob Papi Slim. I can't wait for that. Don't forget, guys, if you could hit the like button and subscribe. Shout out to everyone watching. Uh, we've got the most fucking annoying advert on right now. Protect, Protect this, this house! house. We fucking <laughs> made this. Who made this advert, honestly? I know Under Armour paid some middle-class twat to like, <laughs> pretend that they know what the fuck Look, happens in True, Johnny, we room. protect this house, right? You know what I mean? Just protect it. Protect this house? <laughs> what the fuck are we talking about there? Alex Ferguson, imagine him giving that speech at Old Trafford. <laughs> fuck off. Yeah, in it. Oh. It's so cool. Look, Roy Keane, mate. Protect, protect this house. <laughs> Honestly, oh, who the fuck thought that that was what people say at football, man? No, I've it's never heard it ever. <laughs> uh, oh. uh, I'm starting to get excited. Okay, can I get me... some cheese? Yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, <laughs> help yourself to some cheese, mate. There's some cheese over there. There's some. Uh, we got a charcuterie <laughs> there. Um, what do we? Uh, what do we? Oh, okay, okay. Let's talk about the skill gap in tonight's uh, fight. Do we think it's close enough? That way, in either fight, if one guy has a bit of an off night, the other guy, or, or the pressure gets to them, or do we think that in both fights the skill, skill gap is just 
too much because I think the intangibles are the most exciting bits, but they only they only come into effect when mm. it's close. For me personally, I think obviously the Logan Paul against Dylan Dennis fight is the one that's a little bit closer in terms of if one overperforms, one underperforms, then you can maybe see something happening there. I think even if Tommy Fury, and this is just my personal opinion for what it's worth, I can't I can't lie because you know I want to suit a narrative. I do personally think that even if Tommy Fury underperforms a little bit in this fight, I still do only give KSI a puncher's chance in that fight. But that's it's just my opinion. Listen, I've been wrong before. I could be wrong again. I agree. I yeah. think I think he's got all the advantages. A the actual boxing experience. He's got the naturally bigger size, uh, the, the size advantage, and I just think. If we're getting experience, just skill level. I mean, I've, I've personally haven't seen anything from KSI where I think, yeah, you, you look like a good fight. I know he's knocked a few guys out, but I can't kind of say to what level because the guys haven't been great. Mm. So until I see him fight someone, which we're going to see tonight, mm. that's when I'll be to really say how good he is or how good he is. Yeah, a lot of my prediction video was a struggle because I was like, he's never fought anyone with anything coming back yeah, yeah, got... since the Logan Paul fights. So I'm going off of a lot of guesswork and estimations and a lot of emotion as well. Obviously, I want the guy uh, to win. Um, and I, I, I've picked them to win because I'm just in this YouTube mode of belief and, and praying. Oh, you got your cheers, lad? <laughs> no, no, I'm good. I'm good. You sit yourself down. You sit yourself down. Um, <laughs> But uh, we got Logan Paul on our screen quickly. How sh I mean, he, he looks in amazing shape. He's in great <clears throat> shape. Him. Yeah. He just showed off the cuts. Kind of, uh, he pulled to the to the left hand side, showed his cheek. It didn't look too bad, but it's definitely swollen a little bit. Yeah. Oh, it is. See a little, under the eye looks a little bit. Yeah. Um, and look, I, I, I'm I'm going with KSI, and and, and until he loses, I'm I'm going to continue to. Um, but. In terms of let's play matchmaker, and I want the audience to get involved as well because obviously I can't actually help with this sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So in the event of a, look, we'll use the first fight, Logan Paul, Dylan Dennis. If Logan wins, who do we think he should fight next? It's a tough one. There's options out there. You've got a lot of big time MMA guys. Tommy Fury. Yeah, I was, I was going to say Tommy Fury. <laughs> Tommy Fury. Really? I mean, regardless of whether Tommy wins or loses to KSI, I think, yeah, Tommy Fury. Because the natural fight, I guess, to make if KSI wins is Jake Paul. 100%. Yeah. Like, no more bollocks. What if, it, what if KSI loses? Even Jake Paul then. Yeah? So, yeah. Because then we've both lost to the, the same guy. The, the problem exactly. I think we have here is if Tommy Fury comes through tonight comfortably, Logan Paul is not going to want to fight Tommy Fury. Because because I think that Logan Paul... Like, you know, like, if KSI loses, I don't at all think that he's just going to step away from boxing and that's him done. No. I think he'll have more fights. I think even if Logan wins, I couldn't put my money on it that he carries on boxing. Because with Jake Paul and recently with KSI, we sort of think like they're fully, they've got both feet in this boxing pool right yeah. now and they're doing this boxing thing. With Logan, I've never felt like that. No. So I think that obviously the, the only way that you make Logan against Tommy is if Logan comes through with flying colours and maybe Tommy comes through in a way that maybe we saw him come through against Jake where maybe he suffers a knockdown but gets over the line. Maybe he underperforms a little bit but still gets the job done. Then I think we could potentially see that fight if there's chinks in the armour. The only thing is, if it isn't a conclusive Tommy victory, I think KSI will do everything in his power to make the rematch if he loses. And he yeah, has no. that power. And he has that power because he won't be able to live with that, I don't think. <laughs> Yeah, you know I mean? um, interestingly... Tyson Fury! Yeah, Tyson is there. Oh, shit! Um, he, he he doesn't... He hasn't... He's forgot to bro, zip his jacket down, wait, bless bro, him. He was I'm, just showing he, off his stomach, his, his wait, belly, no, so he unzipped it. Bro. Wait, 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 That's hold up. The he belly was out. Oh, wait, I'm not joking. He looks slimmer there. Like, compared to when we saw the last face-off between yeah. him and Ngannou, he looks a lot slimmer. Yeah, he's in fight camp now for Ngannou, which is a really interesting fight. If, I'll be honest, if there's, you know how you have that moment where you think, if I could just go in time and make a, make a fight change direction, I'd love Ngannou to knock that motherfucker clean out. I would laugh in his face so hard because the thing is, his greed is what is giving him that fight. His greed for an easy fight for the biggest amount of money and just to have the Usyk fight lined up already, yeah. it's so overlooking, it's so disrespectful and I'm not saying it's going to happen but to land flat on your face is that big, huge fist and I'll be honest, there's no man I've ever shared a room with who's more 
more intimidating than Francis and Garnu. Like if you if you said to me a real real fight, no rules. Mm. Francis and Garnu would leave nothing left of Tyson Fury. We'd be picking the bones out of like Francis's teeth at the end of that night. You know what I mean? Oh, so I, I just love that moment. It'd be like, yeah, <laughs> you asked for this, did you? And you lined up you sick neck. It'd be great. It'd be great. I mean, it, it ain't gonna happen because he's gonna get his head jabbed off. But I'm just saying, it would be lovely. I mean, yeah, there, there is that element because like. <sighs> When when a fight is predictable, especially when there's a lot of money involved, it, it th there is a bit of a bad taste mm. in the mouth. And then add on top of that, pre-planning the next fight. Yeah, what? It, it, it just shows that it, there is no fight. It, this it, is anyone who really buys that pay per view. You got got to think about it. What yeah, you? it takes the whole like substance and almost like morals of what fighting is about. It's like the winner of this gets this person, or the winner. It's you know not what I mean? supposed to be predictable it's, it's, at that yeah, level. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It's not meant to be predictable. Let's do this whole pre-plan. Like that ruins the whole almost story, the magic of yeah. fighting. You know. The reason people are upset with Tyson Fury, in my opinion, around this Francis and Garnu fight is because the way that Tyson Fury has obviously spoke in the past about, um, you know, being the man that can beat anyone in his ear and whatnot. The way I see it is this. Tyson Fury, whether you think this is right or wrong, has seen his era as Anthony Joshua, Usyk, Deontay Wilder, maybe one or two others, right? So the up-and-comers that he could have potentially took on, maybe a Hergovic, maybe a Gilles Zhang, someone like that, instead of the Francis Ngannou fight, he's looking at and he's thinking, okay, tougher fights for nowhere near as much money. And as much as we can sit here and go, well, no, give the fans what they want. At the end of the day, you could say to me now, you've got a decision to make. Do you make the fans happy? People who, yes, have supported your career and helped you get to the position you're in or do you make your family financially stable I am going with the latter option so what I would say here is when you look at the Tyson Fury thing you know at the end of the day, whether he fights in Garnu or not, we got to really wait until all is said and done because but, that man is the best fighter at the best heavyweight that we have seen of this current generation it's a, it's a, it's a great point if he hadn't just fought Derek Chisora for the third time. <laughs> when you're fighting Derek Chisora for the third time, which is a pathetic fight, like you might as well just pick anyone at that point. And you then, line, and so we all hear that and he goes, no, but I'm fight, we're fighting Usyk next. Okay, still ridiculous, but okay. Then you fight a guy who's never even had a boxing match. It just makes a mockery out of it. So... Uh, like, in, in, I don't even mind the Ngannou fight. I think the Ngannou mm. fight's a fun fight, right? Like the Rocky uh, Apollo story almost mm. of like, oh, this shouldn't really be happening. It's the fact that he hasn't fought Zhang, he hasn't fought Yusik, he hasn't fought so many of these top guys of his era and then parades around calling the greatest. But then come the end of his career, if we go, and I know this is hypothetical, mm. we can't necessarily do this, but come the end of his career, if he finishes his career having fought Usyk and Anthony Joshua, no Hergovic, no Zhang, no Joyce, none of the other contenders, just those two, yeah, and obviously the three fights against Deontay Wilder, do we then sit back at that and go, yeah, well, you didn't fight this up-and-comer uh, up and comer who eventually down the line is probably going to get beat by someone else, or do we go, okay, there's a question if you say you're the greatest heavyweight of all time, Time, but if we look at that individually for that era mm. from the, the mid to late 2000s up until 2022, 2024, whenever he retires and then go, you are undoubtedly the best heavyweight of your time if he has got those wins against those fighters. And the way that Fury will look at it is he's going to beat those fighters. I personally also believe he's going to beat mm. those fighters. So I think that that's the question there when you look at it at the end of things. And, and as a fighter, especially someone like Tyson Fury, who we all know is very savvy when it comes to managing his career, <laughs> that's the way he'll look at it. Yeah. That is the way he'll look at it. As, as, as well, I, I also think there's an element of he's looking at stuff like this misfits and going right there's all this crossover happening there's always these guys are all breaking the rules of boxing you know traditional they're not real boxers well, yeah yeah but he's they're probably, not going, he's probably going well why why can't i do whatever the fuck i want because well, you're the heavyweight champion of the world you've got a responsibility to the belt and to the but there's almost an element of like yeah i'm, I'm the champion of the world <laughs> so therefore i can do whatever the fuck i want uh, that, they, and do you know what i mean I, I almost feel like there's an element as well where he's like i've gone to deontay wilder's backyard i've gone to clips coast like let me do something where i go and earn like this amount like, i yeah. think he's going well yeah I, I deserve it that that is a thing you've got to mention there and it's a massive point in terms of like recency bias. And I'm not accusing you of this, but what I'm saying is when you look at Tyson Fury's career, everyone will go to the most recent things. So they'll go, you know, you haven't really fought anyone who's been a real challenge to you since before the Dylan White fight. But at the end of the day, when you're looking at the bigger picture and you go, you took that Deontay Wilder fight, when everyone around you, apart from your promoter who wanted the dough there, told you not to take that fight. Yeah. You went into the rematch. Fair enough. Then it's another story. But when you first took that fight, the odds were stacked against you. When you went out to Dusseldorf, not only were the odds stacked against you with the bookies, you saw the tricks that Klitschko was trying to pull with the ring matting and all these other things.
other things and different times in his career when he has took, you know, fights that he didn't have to. When he rematched John McDermott after a controversial decision, he's done a lot of things in his career that at this point now, although we've got this recency bias and people are go, we want to see you I in there with I the top names. I think it's recency bias. I think it's called accountability so if you want all the credit for fighting Klitschko you want the credit for fighting Deontay Wilder you also get the credit mm. criticism of taking a third easy I think the most easy fight known to man against Chisora um, and, and that's just the, the way the game is like you can't expect and that's why he's been mm. caught out here with his reputation his reputation is suffering because he isn't thinking logically, in my opinion. He's thinking all about himself. What do you think, Loza? I, I just don't think, like, I know what you're saying there, but if you look in recent years, we've discussed this before, the only real big fight that he's took is being the Wilder fights. Mm. But other than that, he's not had any really notice, notable fights, really. And in recent years, when he's had the opportunity to fight Joshua, he put a t time scale on signing a contract. He done the same with Yuzik. Mm. I just think in recent years, he's had every opportunity as the Gypsy King, the fighting man, what he's meant to stand by to kind of cement his legacy. And he's done everything to make it difficult for his opponents to make them fights happen. So mm. to your point, Loz, Anthony Joshua has way more world title defences than, than Fury has. This so is we're talking about legacy. You're talking about at the end of the day, yeah. but even right now, mm. in the grand scheme of legacy, all right, Fury hasn't taken a loss, but if we're talking about a defending champion mm. yeah. and, a, and what embodies the word champion, Anthony Joshua was more of a champion to me oh, well, than yeah. Fury, mm. and then only when Fury proves that point eventually will I acknowledge yeah. that. But even then, we're going to be looking at a career where you go, God, it could have been so much more. Like you're, yeah, you're, you're yeah, meant yeah. about Dim, what, uh, what's it called? Um, John McDermott. Yeah, like, I mean, these guys aren't really world level. You're talking. Uh, Neither you're, was you're, Fury at that but you're, time. You're talking about on his way up some of his fights, but when he's reached the top, I can't think of many fights that are, are notable other than the Wilder fight. Klitschko fight was a ball first. He kind of, I think he fought a Klitschko what, which was at his worst. He underperformed on the night. And I just think when you look at Anthony Joshua, how many times he's defended against any anybody, he's always took on whoever's been in front of him, in fairness to him, even when he was quite a, a novice pro, really, when he won his world title. I just think... Like Anthony, uh, sorry, champions Fury. are supposed to be brave. When, and if there's something I look at Tyson Fury, I go, when it when it comes to you being brave in the face of, you've done it before with the Wilder fight when you were overweight, that was brave. But we haven't seen enough of that because you're supposed to set an example. We're supposed to live through you and go, wow, look at what you've. When you're beating up an old fat, like well, you know, with all due respect, <clears throat> a guy who's not in the best shape in Chisora, mm -hmm. who's no threat to you, what is a champion about that? I'm not saying it. When you when, when you talk there about the the risks he's taken and and the thing you mentioned there is the Klitschko fight, right? Yeah. I understand that, and I understand that we then saw Anthony Joshua go and stop Klitschko two years later. Yeah, by yeah. the way, that was two years later. <laughs> and when you look at that Klitschko fight, when he fought Klitschko, Klitschko had been going to points with most of his opponents. Mm -hmm. He then had went out to the states and had a career best performance, maybe not the best of his career, but best in recent years at that time stopping Bryant Jennings in the ninth round or wherever it was, really putting a beat down on him. So actually, when you take yourself back to that time, that Klitschko that went into the Fury fight was regarded as being really well. And someone that has boxed to a high level yourself, yeah. you'll understand that there's there's a fine line between someone under, underperforming and someone being massively nullified. And I think that when you see the amount of success that Klitschko had against Joshua two years later, okay, Joshua's stoppage was more impressive, but you've got to give Fury credit for the way he dealt with Klitschko yeah. in that. Uh, no, no, I, I, I agree with you to, uh, to a point. I think for whatever reason, Klitschko, had, he'd never fought a man that big. And I think in fairness, he kind of did get nullified. And I think mm. whether he just, he, he wasn't used to fighting a bigger man, whatever the reason was, he underperformed. And I mm. think the Klitschko who fought Joshua was a much better fighter, whether that's because like you've just seen, Fury nullified him and, and didn't give him the opportunity to perform. It's really hard to say, but them are the only two fights mm. I can honestly say of Fury's main fights, which mm. are notable. Of course. Um, we've got Slim coming out now, lads, and he is performing. <laughs> He's giving it the big one, <laughs> the, the Pereira uh, bow and arrow uh, look. Um, He's a good dancer. <laughs> yeah, I like this guy a lot. He is so charismatic and uh, a hell of a puncher. Um, and so Papi is waiting for him. This is a title fight for the middleweight belt, 165. Um, Slim is not the favourite in terms of the votes on DAZN. Uh, let us know in the chat what you think is going to happen. The lads will tell us. But to be honest, he should be. He's the one, one out of these two who's undefeated. And he is massive for the weight. You know, he's got six foot one or something like that. He's very tall. 
Yeah, for real. I mean, I think like he's used to, uh, I don't know, it sounds weird, but like he's used to his body mm. at this weight. <laughs> yeah. And I think that is so vital. It's yeah. like Anthony Taylor against Kenny. Like he's used to performing in those conditions in that body that he's in. And I think like whoever's got the more experience in those circumstances is going to have an advantage. Can I also just say like these shots of the arena, like it's actually hitting me like this the this is huge. Of this, yeah. it, this is actually mental. Yeah. Mm. Like how big this is, bruv. This started in a warehouse. <laughs> 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 this started in an actual warehouse, bruv. Bro. Bro. <laughs> well, you know how I commentated the first fight? I'm not joking. I put, I got, he sent us this link, right? We transfer. I was like, okay, I'll download this fight. All right, Theo looks mad. Jesus, in boxing gloves. And then I was like, and we're underway and I just pulled my phone up video record it ripped the video out of it and just sent it to him and he was like yeah I'll slap that over no yeah, problem yeah. fucking mental Mate, and I now we've since then we've gone on to see Floyd Mayweather fight in this whole scenario we've got Eddie Hearn yeah. ringside Chris Eubank Jr Tyson Fury just doing a speech like yeah. this is boxing now yeah. And it's actually mental. And this mental. is the biggest boxing event of the year, man. Yeah, and man. You fucking created the whole thing. You should have put fucking 20% on the whole Mate, thing. Mate, that is the biggest <laughs> thing, isn't it? That is the biggest thing. You know, obviously, we didn't do pay-per-view for our fight. So we didn't earn the big the big. But bucks. this is no surprise, though, because if people who know Joe know, like, you're an extremely creative guy mm -hmm. and you're innovative, right? So, like, you always come up with new concepts that people don't do. You do things in your own way. And uh, you should be proud, man. Yeah, man. Because for real, for real. Like, obviously, like... I don't like to <clears throat> go around, like my mum tells me like, you should, you should take more credit, you should tell people, but I feel like you just seem, would seem a bit of a dickhead being like, oh, by the way, that's, mm -hmm. that's me that did that, that's me that did that. Yeah. At the end of the day, like, yeah, we started it, but like credit to the guys that have now taken it to where it is, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Fuck. JJ, Mams, as Jake much Paul, as, yeah, Jake Paul, all of it, like as much as I've had my beef and whatnot, like yeah. they've made this from obviously the seed that was planted, you know? So mm. like, fair play, man. I think you're being extremely humble. Yeah, you wouldn't catch Carl Froch being that humble. Ah. Would you? <laughs> Mate, I met Carl recently and he pulled his uh, Hall of Fame ring out and he was like, what that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> so funny. Do you know what he was like? He was like, I'd love to smash Jake Paul's face in you. Know? Yeah. <laughs> and in my head, I'm like, well, why don't you then? Like, as in, like, that is such a fun <clears throat> fight. Yeah. Paul Froch, at his age, obviously is still a threat, even at that age. You spot him. Yeah. Right? He's an absolute legend. But those two would make magic happen. They're yeah. such shit talkers. And I think Carl's actually a better shit talker than he's mm. ever been. He's extremely he was a bit, witty. He was a bit more... He was funny then, but he's he's way more of a showman now. He's grown into it. Did you see the video when he said, I will send your jaw into fucking orbit? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when he grit And he, he, he goes... He's in his gym and he's got these two WBC belts he's like you see them you'll never fucking have them yeah. it was so good man you know, he beat us a poker by the way we, so we're saying there good. we're saying there about you know you've influenced the boxers boxing other ex-boxers and things mm. like that we were talking earlier about the roots for both men you know win lose or draw I've said it to you before I, I feel like I've come up with a brilliant idea here if Tommy Fury comes through with flying colours do you know what the fight for him is David Hay Wow. And people are go, people are go, what are you going on about? Hear me out, right? David Hay is in oh, the in the nicest this, way can possible. Can we get quick predictions for everyone? Uh slim or salt puppy. Oh salt puppy. I was want slim. Slim. Yeah. I think salt puppy, but he's light at the weight. I really want Salt Pappy to win, so I'm going to go for Salt Pappy. Yeah, I, I like mm. I like Salt Pappy because of the weight transformation, and he's like giving yeah, me a lot. Yeah, of... he's inspired. All I feel of like us. he can get down lighter though. I feel like yeah. he could go down to. Yeah, I just feel as if the weight loss is going to be negative. Yeah, I'm, I, I could I, be wrong. I think I'm, I'm witnessing. I, I think either look, I think Slim should be the favourite, but the uh, has got something special. So it's David here <laughs> because of the beef with the Furies, maybe. Right, David A obviously had the cancelled fight with Tyson Fury. David Hay actually fought in the grand scheme of things not that long ago Joe on a Fournier. thriller card against Joe Fournier. Mm. Yeah, David Hay completely outclassed him. KSI also beat him. David Hay in the Best possible way is an egomaniac. <laughs> and David Way, uh, He's David got two Hay, fucking girlfriends. Of course, yeah. David Hay would look at that and he'd go, I'd beat a Tommy Fury. And obviously the build up with Ooh. John, everything that goes into it, I could see that being a yeah, that'll massive be, that'd be That would be a good misfit spot. Uh, so Puppy just leaps in there uh, with that left <sighs> hand. He's obviously uh, a southpaw. Uh, he, he looks sharp. Uh, obviously it's early in the fight, but like he's... He's Ooh. he's not looking like he did against AT so far. He looks like he's got a bit more fitness about him. He looks like he's hitting hard still though, doesn't he? When I was just even them little short shots. Yeah. 
You know what? He's just got that thing where he just, when he connects. I might have to retract my uh, prediction there. My, <laughs> my favorite thing about uh, Sol Papi is, is um, he, he, he just has a, a natural understanding of boxing. And the maddest thing about it was when he first burst on the scene, people were like, no way have you just started doing this. And he was like, no, I've... I've oh, good, oh. good hooks from Sol Papi. And he, he said he taught himself how to Ooh, box by looks, watching Manny strong. Pacquiao, his countryman, Ooh. And Salt is in the in the corner here, and he has put in it on. He's smiling. He's, he's Speaking smiling. about watching money he's back now. He's a natural killer. Look at the gloves mm -hmm. he's got on. He's got the Cleta Rays on. We always saw Pat Mahan. Yeah. He's, he's literally well. doing the belt sign, <laughs> um, and he's smiling. Um, and I, it was such a nice moment when he came out and said uh, Manny Pacquiao had followed him on Instagram, made his whole fucking mm. year, basically. You know what a massive credit to Salt Papi is, right? I was uh, listening to a bit of the Talk Sport boxing coverage of this the other day. Gareth Davis, he was actually wrong on what he said, but he went... Not the for thing, the first time. Yeah, yeah. He went, the thing <laughs> with uh, Salt Papi is he had 60 amateur fights, uh. right? Now, Mate, that's, that guy that's completely, fucking... that, it's completely wrong, Jesus and it's, it's, it's poor research on his behalf. However, it's a backhanded compliment to Saul Pappy because he wasn't going, how's he had 60 amateur fights? He was saying it, and he thought that it had a lot of weight to what he was saying. He actually thought it was oh. true. So just for someone that's been in boxing that long, where how, how highly you regret, uh, regard him, whatever, but for someone who's been around top-level boxing to have been told yeah. you've had 60 amateur fights and then believe it... It shows how good that fella is. It's a compliment, isn't it? What are we saying here? Uh, Loza, can I get your opinion on the way Salt is sort of entering in here? He's, he does seem to be trying to set yeah. set it up. And he's definitely landing the left oh. hand. He, he just it, looks like he's got the better timing and distance. He's kind of mm. looking to counter him and mm. catch him. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of feints from Slim. But it's almost like, yeah, do the feints, but to set something up. Don't just faint, you faint, you also faint, have and then get nothing. the respect for the feints <laughs> to actually mean Yeah, anything. yeah, yeah. If you haven't landed anything... Um, he, oh. Slim is he's grimacing here and he looks yeah. a bit hurt with, yeah, he does. I don't know if he's ready for that power and it was funny because we had a little bit of uh, an issue with Slim taking this fight initially he didn't seem to uh, what well, he wanted more money uh, which is quite public at this point uh, but they managed to get him to take it and credit to him for taking uh, you know the fight but you if do we'll wonder when someone is a bit iffy about taking mm. a fight where you're like like I mentioned earlier on with Kenny wasn't his first choice against mm. Anthony Taylor Swarms with Ed Matthews didn't really fancy it, and now we're in a situation where are we seeing uh, let, protect this house? <laughs> uh, <laughs> are we seeing this again where we're looking at a goal? Yeah, I, I can see why you weren't uber keen on this. Do fight. you know what it is? I think it set, it sends an an internal subconscious message to yourself when you don't don't say yes I'll accept that challenge yeah. straight so away Papi was like, I think, of course yeah 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 I think it, t it tells yourself something when it gets difficult when it, you know what I mean in, in those moments where you get really tested going back so Slim was at the 175 pound category yeah. he was the well, uh, belt holder so Papi was there fighting for a title shot Slim moved down uh, and a lot of people said oh so they're not going to fight each other so Papi then moved down mm. and it was almost like yeah so when I'm we, not saying when, that there's a narrative there, but it's just an interesting thing, you know? When yeah. we look at the tactics so far, <laughs> Salt, Salt Pappy's obviously the one coming forward. He's the one putting the pressure on. He's the one doing a lot better when it comes to punches landed so far. In the first round, whether it changes here or not, we saw Slim sort of looking for that one punch in a way, almost sort of looking to time him, set him up, almost like he knows he's the fighter with the power and with the ability to stop Salt Pappy, but... We've never seen anything in Salt Pappy's career so far to say that he has got any vulnerability when it comes to being hit. Um, I mean, uh, there's some nice body shots going in from Salt Pappy here. And it's the twist that he gets in those hips, man. He yeah. generates so much. What, what it is, he, he does, like say, like the hook left hand and he really takes his head offline. Like, so he's not there. He doesn't lunge in his, and his head's there to be hit. Like, he, he makes himself... Well, apart from what we're seeing here. Careful now. Careful. Don't get greedy. Don't yeah, get that, greedy. Yeah, that's what we may be seeing. Um, I, I think that's some good exchanges from both guys here, but Slim's pinned against the ropes here. And uh, Sol Papi, if you're a judge, you're going to look at the aggression on you and, and think that he's winning the fight so far. But I mean, the thing about Slim is he definitely has power. I just, I mean, I just don't know... He needs to make a statement on, on Saul Papi to get his respect because he's just walking him down so far. And he just looks missing. like he's fighting with fear. You know what I mean? When Saul Papi's in close, he doesn't look comfortable. 
yeah, there's a tentative sort of aura about him. And I think like that's the issue. Like, obviously, as viewers, you can't feel what the fit, what the fighters can feel. But there may have been a shot, say, like in the first round that really lit up Slim and, mm. and is now, ever since then, we've seen a more tentative side. Yeah, he's, he's backpedaling a bit. Yeah. yeah. I think my only worry for Sol Papi in terms of the way he's, he's controlling the fight is he faded a lot against AT, mm. but he was a different looking guy then. <sighs> and he's definitely looking fitter and stronger now and he's putting it on him. Oh. But it's some good shots from Slim. I do think he's very different against Anthony Taylor when you look at the pressure tactics that Anthony Taylor will put on you, the way he'll make you uncomfortable. And we've said before earlier in the card, it's a lot easier to reserve your energy when you're sort of the one cutting off the ring. And for the most part, that's what you're seeing a lot of the time here from Salt Pappy. So I don't think he'll be anywhere near as drained fitness-wise in yeah. this second round yeah. in this fight as he would against Anthony Taylor. Slimmest. He's just dipping the head down. He's, he, he's, he's not engaging in a proper boxing match right now. He's not... He's not using his jab enough yeah, at all. Some and stiff it's funny because his coach is actually a really high-level, world-level coach, world mm. champion trainer. And he said, we're going to get... He said, oh, the lovely thing was, shot there from... He said, the thing with Sol Papi is a jab will do him. Well, you've not thrown a fucking jab all night, pal. So I don't know what the fuck that was about. And I'm sure he's told Slint to do it, but he's abandoned the game plan Ooh. by the looks of it. Yeah, he it's a lunging jab. Like, like it's how Salt Pappy takes his head offline where he takes, where, when he shoots. Slim's leaving his head right there when he's jabbing. And it's, yeah, man. I Salt think Pappy's we need to it. give some credit to Salt Pappy's defence here as well. Like, mm. Good head he, movement, he, isn't it? Yeah, in terms of being able to like, I always got told when I, were, when I was learning about defence, it's like, make a miss but only just make a miss yeah, because yeah. obviously the less you make a miss, the less distance you've got to then come back. And the obviously, the, yeah, the closer you are in range to your opponent, the able you're, uh, the more ability you've got to counter punch them. And that's what we're seeing from Short Pappy so far. So I'd put him up two rounds so far in this mm. fight. It's that southpaw advantage as well. I think mm. that's the difference. Uh, Slim's really struggling with that southpaw stance. And that's mm. when you've got your, both got the jab come from the same angle. It's kind of your clash. Yeah. He's kind of tentative with mm. it as and well. You, you were saying there, sorry, you were saying there about not using the jab so much. In the first round, he attempted the jab a lot of times, but I think when you're not landing something, yeah. as much as sometimes it's like, no, 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 stick with it, it'll come as things slow down. It's a bit hard to when you're not landing yeah. it and you're, and you're also getting countered. With a yeah. guy who can punch as well, you start hesitating. Yeah, as well. Apparently, uh, Jake Paul and Deji got into some sort of heated oh no. exchange. I mean, having seen, obviously, Jake fight Tommy as well. Here, here's, what, here's how it'll play out. I feel this, like... this is why I didn't want to come here tonight, because all these little people that I already yeah, beat and dusted up making their yeah, name off of okay. me. I so this is some stupid-ass clout shit, mm -hmm. but whatever he it's wants to say. It's not about that. It's not about that. We're here to, to promote the fight. And yeah, I, I didn't know he fight. was going to be here, though. I don't really know right, what I'm saying. I'm here for um, So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so look, I, I, apparently Jake, uh, apparently Deji said recently he thought he could beat Jake and, you know, uh, but you know how that goes. Yeah, oh, up. Slim making it messy and, and actually connecting a little bit. This is the best I've seen from Slim in this fight so far in terms of just actually connecting with solid shots. Because he's actually letting his hands go. Yeah, down. and also, uh, is Sol Papi getting a little tired? Oh, it's a Lovely good shot. shot. Good left Sol Papi. Sol Papi. Yeah. Yes, Sol Papi looks really <clears> good at this weight. It's when he lands as well, he really thrives off it, doesn't he? Yeah. He has that, like, that when he starts smiling and he's hurting you. Yeah. It's kind of like Floyd esque sometimes, you know, like in terms of the, ma the mannerism. Um, Before we <laughs> went live earlier on and we were looking at some of the fights, and it's like, okay, they're fun fights, but there's not a real massive skill level here. Pretty much every contest since we've gone live, I'm not saying in professional boxing, but for influencer boxing, this is showcasing exactly why so many people love it and why this is going to do so many pay-per-view buyers because the level of these boys to have took up boxing, whether they took them up three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, is of a real, real high standard. So puppy is getting a little I, tired here, you know. I've, I've seen pros early in the career perform worse than this. Mm. I think the level's good. And it's 50-50, that's the uh, difference. Well, that, that's what brings you on so much. Yeah, but actually, yeah. fight, you fight a journeyman that's looking to cover up. Okay, yeah. you might learn a it, thing or two. If anything, gonna... sometimes you go backwards. It's, it's, it can be mm. detrimental. I've, uh, I've got people tagging me in a tweet from Mark Goldbridge from a few years oh, back. that was a oh. decent shot from Slim. Oh, Slim's, oh, Slim's landing some decent shots. Uh, Goldbridge uh, put a tweet a few years back saying uh, the Newcastle takeover in the mud, true Jordy crying. And loads of people, that was like 2020, mm. and now people are tagging me. It's the Man United take of what's going It's not looking good, is it? Um, I, I think Slim's had his best round yet in round three. Um, 
I, if I'm if I'm so puppy, I'd probably take the rest of this round off a little bit. Just get the get to the corner. Oh, he's lovely them, left hand there from Salt Puppy. It's the head movement. He keeps slipping them it's, shots and punishing. The them. only one thing, and it could change over the course of the rounds, but I don't know whether Salt Puppy has the power to really put a dent in Slim. Um, but he's definitely winning on. My only worry is the, you know this messiness here. Mm. This is where Slim thrives. I've seen him knock out a guy, a face tamper. He knocked out face tamper in mm. a fight quite similar to this. Like for me, the cleaner the punches are, the cleaner the boxing. That's Salt Puppy and his game. The messier it is like this, the more Slim could could upset oh. him. Yeah. Oh, just like oh. that. And he's yeah. which is weird for being the bigger man. You'd think we better at range. Yeah. But he's actually having more success mm. when it's all close. Yeah, because mm. he's not. His jab isn't that good for a tall guy. He doesn't doesn't you know mm. use it with authority. It's, it's he's, just he's actually there. bent arm shots. He's yeah. uppercuts were better there. Yeah, he's if for a tall guy. He doesn't fight like one. No, mm. not yeah. at all. Would we say this was two one then on the scorecard so far, guys? Yeah, you've got an argument there that Slim might have took that round. You two think? one to Salt. It's it's I, I, two one. I think because right. we're now seeing a bit of some punches landed, I feel as if I want to give him it, but I still don't think he won yeah, the round. Yeah, yeah. He probably still it wasn't. It wasn't like oh no. he won that. It no, was yeah. one of his, no, no. no. It was a 50-50 on that one, and the first two were clear. Yeah, for if, me. If they give him it, I wouldn't argue it, but he probably still didn't win it. <laughs> If I'm Sol Papi's coach, I'm going, stop fucking fighting his fight. Like, yeah. you're literally playing. In, the only chance he's got right now is to to have a fight, not a boxing match. Just take, box him. Mm. Make a miss, mm. punish him. There's mm. also the fatigue in that as well. Yeah. Like, you know, trying to, it, it gets to a point where they are just sort of near each other because they're, yeah. they're tired. And to answer the question with Sol Papi, I think... Uh, his new body, he can still perform. <gasps> oh, oh good shot. shot. Oh, oh, slim, slim, slim. Too soon. Sol Papi's hurt. Just as oh, he shakes his head. Oh, but he's really hurt. Oh, oh, he's going. oh and he's going. He's hurt. And he's really hurt, Sol Papi. He needs to clinch. He, he needs to clinch. It Shit, be over. I literally spoke. He got mm. curse of the commentator. Yeah, he looks. <laughs> this is it, man. He's he's getting tired in these. And this is what happened with AT. He got tired from after the second round. It, it, he wasn't really there and he's not really and, and now Slim has gotten a, a real second wind here and it's early in the round as well yeah it's not what you want let's see how he recovers Slim looks oh, Slim he is looks dangerous tight. at this range oh my god he's there to be hit now wow oh, he's really not good this is a bit like the Walid moment where you're thinking can you hold on lad mm. oh every time he's punching on the break yeah and I don't know if trying to fight fire with fire is the best tactic. Oh, he's really out of it. Oh. Yeah. Sold Puppy is in big trouble. Slim is all over him. And he shakes uh -oh. his hand. Sold Puppy says, no, I'm not going down. But he looks like he could go at any second. Like, Let's see if Sold Puppy... Oh, his punches. I think he's blown himself out. Oh, no. Every time Slim comes and back, his punches... Look, every, mm. <laughs> every time I speak. It's funny because at the start of the fight... The, the acceleration in those hands of Sol Papi, you're like, whoa, there's a real difference. But by round three, Sol, uh, Slim's is exactly the same as round one. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, not, yeah. And, by, and that's <clears> when it starts to take effect. I feel like his body type is more that like ectomorph, marathon runner, yeah. long, you know. Exactly. Consist. He's like a Nate Diaz type. Yeah. Like, you don't see it at the start, but it's right there in your face yeah. to the bitter end, right? You can't, he looks tired, but he just keeps going. <laughs> Mate, whoever fucking wins this has earned it. Jesus. Yeah, man. Wow. A credit to Sol Papi. He's still really trying to put it on him, and I'm thinking you should be getting the fuck away from him, really, but... And the funny thing is, if he survives this round and then can have a big round in the last, he still probably nicked it on the scorecards yeah. anyway. Yeah, after this, I'd say it's 2-0. Yeah, And definitely, then, definitely. yeah, it's last round wins already. There's a real power decrease coming with uh, Sol Papi, but, the, but, but Slim is now tired because he's... Oh, oh there! Oh, oh, big oh, oh, he is down! Oh, he is down! Oh, but he's was, getting back up. He looks really no, bad. He's, he's done. done. No, he's really, he's really, done. He's that done, was on the tip of the jaw. That He's done. What, he's you you can't Don't keep shaking your head and get tired. You have to change the fucking tactics. Can't let that go on. The fit. Oh, referee needs step to step in, ref. in. Ref, ref, ref. He's doing ref, 20 seconds. In. 20 seconds. Can he hold on? Hold, just grab. I think the ref needs to wave. What a fight. What a fight from both yeah. guys, though. Let's Slim with the hook. He just and he's ref. damaging Sol Puppy. Yeah. And he's oh, and Slim has won. Ah. Huge oh. for Slim. Salt Puppy with a hell of a performance. Well, I think what, only he fought Slim's fight. He fought Slim's fight. Mm. He didn't box him. So this is what I'm saying about the weight loss. So does it, right? There's so that he, he, after two rounds, was blowing and he, he was Mate, drained. He was blowing out of his He arse. did not seem yeah. like he had that 
ferocious. But even in, in the in the air t- you know how Conor McGregor is a sprinter. Yeah, like, you know your third round, you're like, you got shit left, you bro. Yeah. So Papi might be that guy because mm. he was he was even when he was carrying more weight against AT in the third round. He wasn't the same guy. No. We've seen him go down immediately. And uh, that's sometimes something that even training, it might not solve. It's like, it's like, yeah, either you have fast twitch muscles that have that power, but they burn out quick, or you're more like this Slim's body type. Mm. And it tends to be for boxing, this especially is, the, yeah. the longer rounds, the skinnier, more ectomorph guys do, you but know. This is Nate Diaz, Conor McGregor style fight, yeah. right? But the problem is, is for Sol Papi, his ego cost him. When you start getting tugged, back off, mate. What the, he's he's too confident. Like, no, no. There is, a, there is an element of him being buzzed, though. So maybe he's yeah. not able to actually think like, oh, let me, you know, it's easy for us to observe from here when we're, mm. you know, but he's freaking buzzed many times there. And maybe he's just he's just thinking, I need to get back in this fight. I'm losing this fight. So he keeps just coming forward. Credit but, to both guys. But, but this is the problem. Fight, when you lose weight... You re- uh, generally speaking, if you look at the history of fighters when they've lost too much weight, especially too quickly, mm. the, res- the, the, the even if the fitness is good, the speeds. It happened to Derek Chisora when he. F- I can't remember who he fought. Was it against Dylan White? Dylan got one of the got fights. Him. He yeah. lost load load of weight, and he was his engine was great, but his punch resistance wasn't there. And it's the same here. Salt Puppy looked good, but his resistance obviously wasn't as good. And he's used to walking through punches. Well, I mean, that's never a good defense, is it? Well, yeah, <laughs> it's no. You can see, Whoa. though, his, his ego got the better of him there, man. You can't. Uh. And unfortunately, like, he learned a lesson against AT that he needed to bring the conditioning. Well, he's just learned another lesson that you can't defend punches with your face, man. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. like there's a, you need to know your range sort of thing. It's like he was sitting in that perfect range that is great for Slim. You know, Slim's not got... Slim's Great. an inside fighter. Yeah, he didn't show any gr- good straight punches, but those those bent arm punches, look, they're perfect for Slim, and he just sat in that oh. range perfectly for him. I, I love Slim, and I, I love Sol Papi, so you know, I'm happy for both of them that you put on a great fight. I'm happy for Slim getting the win, but I feel for Sol Papi because mm. when you have a fight right there and you're outclassing him, and the skill gap is there, yeah. and then you lose, it slips through your fingers, you can't... You, and it's no, like, you're never happy with how that. would he come back from this because he's kind of invincible he was known for that guy being powerful he could take a shot and it's like how do you come back from that mm. like it's that, that'll be interesting to see how he is in his uh, next I fight think, if I think even though we've spoke about the weight loss I think he goes down in weight again I, think, I don't, I don't think, think he's he in that weight <sighs> it's a difficult one because he was he I mean, was the winning fact fights that he's he was a six foot one guy and he's what five foot eight well, you're right. I mean, there's a reason why there's weird categories, but he was kind of going against that previously because he was he was winning. He was mm. winning convincingly. So mm-hmm. against it's, it's, a, against a much lesser level. Though. Yeah, no, yeah. It's true. Yeah. When you see him step up against an Anthony Taylor and against the Slim, two boys that are probably more natural at the weight and can fight a yeah. bit. That's that's sort of when we've seen that. Yes, you've got the skill. Of course, you have because he lit Slim up for two rounds mm. in that fight. But maybe this just isn't your natural weight and maybe he'll find his home maybe one weight division below that and then we're who's there to yeah. fight at say like 155 or 150 though like in this Misfits the golden sort of region is like 165 to 175 I that's mean, where everyone is I don't know what what Winderson uh, or uh, my mate Nate fight at but they both look, they both look like they could cut down as well mm-hmm. um, so maybe that's a fight that might happen but I don't know to be fair Winderson Nunes against Salt Papi in Brazil would still mm-hmm. yeah. yeah do you, do you know what like not to judge his performance too much but the referee should have waved that off after that knockdown yeah. that knockdown do you know what it reminded me of do you remember when Usyk knocked out Bellew when he hit him with the first shot and he was out on his feet and then it was the second shot and that's what you see there yeah. Salt Papi was out after that first shot it was yeah. the Second shot that he was like, you can't let it go on from there. He's he's in a bad way. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's been a couple of these fights tonight. Dean Walid, uh, Sol Papi Slim. Where all right, we've had fin- like we've had clear dominant wins. Where mm. well, I mean, it wasn't totally dominant from Slim, but they've no, all, be, they've was, all was, come out with glory in a, in a way. You mm. know, like they've like sli- like Sol Papi didn't get run over there. He, no. he if anything, I, I think he let it slip through his fingers. Uh, a bit. And as much as I say that there, it sort of contradicts <laughs> what I'm saying. Look at the way that at one point in the fight with uh, Wally Sharks and um, Dean the Great, we were saying this has got to go here. The ref needs to jump in, and actually he didn't. Yeah. And Wally Sharks came through that. So as much as I can say that as a fan sitting here watching, it's it's, it's those guys that are called to make those decisions. This, uh, this Apparently, Conor source. McGregor's tweeted out about Logan Paul. Uh, what did he say, Josh? Go on, Josh. He uh, said, Logan, me and her, what's up? Uh, oh, <laughs> Quite <laughs> a simple one, really. It's uh, just full-blown uh, disrespect. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure Conor, at some point, will make an appearance from everything I've been told. 
I mean, you think about that. You got Jake Paul, Logan Paul, KSI, Tyson Fury, Conor McGregor. <laughs> like the egos in that building. Oh, mate, it's mental. Like, I wonder who's got the biggest ego out of all of them. Connor, it's got to be Connor. I want to see Conor McGregor and Jake Paul go at it. They're oh, yeah. the two. Oh, they're not mate. even on the card. They're the two that I want to see in that ring going at it. Yeah, the issue is, is that it, that wouldn't be misfits, and no. I feel like in order to afford that, misfits have that power. Mm. I believe. I don't know. Would MVP? I, I think it would be a co-promotion. Cool oh, okay. It would be an MVP okay. McGregor Sports and Entertainment. They all jump in together with the zone. Yeah. Uh, and the UFC will be have to be involved because they've got Connor under contract, oh, really? and it would just be a whole load of people sharing a load of money. Um, he has deleted the tweet now. Oh, oh for the fuck's sake. That's classic Connor. Bit man. of an interesting one. Yeah, that's classic Connor. <sighs> um, he, he, it was funny because uh, this is how like this is how how he thinks, right? So he he tweeted me a, a voice recording. You look like a little Burns victim. Burns. Um, and then he deleted that. He blocked me. And he also like blocked the kickoff accounts as well. I'm like, wow, you went deep. Like, <laughs> I'm not gonna look like bother. You know what I mean? Like, it's just so it, the whole Conor McGregor like, thing is very it's, strange. It's, it's steeped in, but this is the thing: it's steeped in insecurity, mm. and that's why him and Floyd are like cut from the same cloth, aren't they? Like, they're the, the to to want to achieve that, to want to be that way, and yeah. so flashy. It's insecurity. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting how like McGregor's gone from such almost like this spiritual like artistic fighter that inspires the world to like since alcohol an absolute cunt well to since <laughs> since alcohol and drugs and al you know all of that yeah. got involved almost like the devil devil stuff oh yeah yeah it's taken him to become this guy that is actually like intolerable yeah the <laughs> biggest know? one carry the fight <laughs> genuinely it's sad man yeah. like it is sad mm. because like he was so inspirational man that's why when he gets absolutely smashed in the UFC I'll just sit there with a the whiskey and go ah fair enough do you know what? The podcast, I can't wait one day, right? My <laughs> fantasy podcast, True Geordie, Tyson Fury, uh, Conor McGregor. I don't think I'd want to have that happen, to be honest. No, but there's a cage. There's a cage. That, that'll in do me. That'll <laughs> do. But I think that'd be brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, John Fury is John Fury. And John Fury's John Fury's, John Fury's got to be more better. scared of Big John than any other <laughs> yeah. Do you know when you meet John as well? He's got fucking hands like Ben Lids. You know? Yeah, he's, man. He's, he's got the, like, you're just like, yeah. You, you definitely come from... Viking blood or something mm. like that, you know. Well, obviously gypsy. So, so the only the interaction I've had with John Fury is I was presenting um, Jake, a Jake Paul fight on BT Sport, and it was me, John Fury, David Hay, and the presenter. It was like the weirdest. <laughs> <laughs> it was so weird, but we were all chatting. And like the thing that he was saying about Tommy Fury. This was when the Jake Paul negotiations negotiations were going on. He was like, "So Tommy's major issue is his mind, like so much." Like, Who? Sorry. Tommy, like John, John, John Fury was saying that about Tommy. Yeah, yeah, off for camera, real. and he was he was really going into it, and I was like, "Is what 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 what's he displayed thus far that you think would show that he's got this frail, fragile mindset?" Do you think he hasn't been in boxing long enough? Like I, I know the talk that he's been boxing for years, but he hasn't actively been competing. Like mm. I mean, I, nobody knew about Tommy Fury. Until after Love Island, I mean, I don't know why they talk about him like he's been this guy who's boxed in all the junior championships and how many he's had a he had ten amateur. He had a fights. handful of fights. I mean, in boxing terms, that is <laughs> absolute novelty. You know what I mean? He's no different to the YouTube guys <laughs> that were watching. You know what I mean? Realistically, he's had a few more than most. I think of these the guys. thing is, is he had a he had constant tutelage from Big John from being six years old behind the scenes but in terms of real competition I agree with you yeah. mm -hmm. he has a massive advantage in that he has been just hanging around the gyms and Jake Paul didn't know what a boxing gym was until five years ago or whatever um, and next up it is Logan Paul versus Dylan Dennis oh my god bad blood like I, I think this might be one of the most hit filled like bad blood pre-fight build-ups we've ever seen in history ever. of the world no mate. fighter ever goes that deep consistently i've never ever on a seen daily that. basis no he he said he had 600 photographs or videos of of logan's fiance saved on his phone and laughed about it logan the, the, there was a good moment when logan went, Do you know that's a bit weird <laughs> like 
<laughs> like at some yeah. point you gotta say you're a bit weird aren't you like, Mate, and it, it is weird it is yeah. fucking weird it, do you know what it shows that Dylan Dennis does not give a fuck no no not at one all. not one he's a, a psychopathic behaviour oh yeah I, I mentioned this earlier and obviously people have tuned in now we talked about the lie detector test that he did on Misfits where he was asked questions of do you respect Logan Paul have you gone too far do you think you'll win every question where you think if there's a, a smidgen of doubt or humanity within Dylan Dennis, yes. or any regret, or any, you know, oh, he's actually not that bad. No, mm. no. Not one single fuck given, and every single time they went to the lie detector, they went, cool customer, he's telling the truth. I never, I'm going to beat him, I don't care, I don't respect him. Every single thing where you're like, there's got to be a, a crack here, not a single one. And that was where I was kind of like, you know what, on some level, fair fucks, you're a piece of shit, but you're actually owning it and you really are that guy. Like, but, yeah. but that's like a true psychopath, you know, oh, yeah. pure <laughs> denial. Like, you just, that's all you can see. Yeah, there, there are some, like, there are some people, you watch these Netflix documentaries, they get on the stand and they're like, oh, I didn't do it. Yeah. And like, Ted Bundy, you're like, all the evidence is there. And like, if you put them on the lie detector, it will come back, no fucks given. I didn't do a single thing. Yeah. Like, I, you know. Yeah, it's impossible for normal people to react that yeah. way. You've got to have something missing. It's as simple as that. Mental. You talk about like dark build ups in boxing fights. I was trying to scratch my head there and I was thinking, have we ever seen anything like it? We've obviously seen the brawl break out between David Hay and Derek Chisora. Yeah. That's a split. Split second, that's in a moment, okay? Mm. We see the cage for the first time ever in the way in between those two, but that is a moment that got out of hand. Uh, Ricardo Mayorga, a fighter that I used to love to watch. Yeah, I, remember, yeah. I remember him slapping Shane Mosley's missus' ass in a, in a press that. conference or a weigh-in or something. Um, and there's so many more things, but all of them are like isolated incidents yeah, yeah. whereas this is a constant daily barrage it's like you know how like my alarm clock will go off and I'll think to myself right I've, I've my coffee you know brush my teeth D uh, Dylan Dennis just goes off and he thinks right let's get on the old Twitter <laughs> straight onto Logan Paul's case the only person I can think of is Tyson, Mike Tyson when he's talking about eating people's children but like mm. that, I think that's the closest but speaking of children Logan kind of came back with something in mm. uh, the, the, the press conference where he goes what about the kid you've abandoned? And I was oh, like, I heard that, yeah. me. Mm. And, and you could see Dylan for a second, but like he didn't like it and he was like well aware of what the fuck, and he was like, but, what about Josephine, your daughter that you don't bother with? And I was like, mate, this is just fucking mental now. What mm. else is coming out? We, we have got to appreciate there though, like obviously look, I believe that personally, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. If you go for someone on a personal level, you have to accept that things will come back at you. So I completely agree. Like, Logan's within his rights to say whatever he wants because Dylan has gone for him on a very, very personal, sensitive level. But let's not pretend it's one-way traffic. Logan Paul said stuff about his late father. You know, he said stuff about the abandoned child and things this, this like that. This was after so, the fact. To be fair to like Logan, so Logan was like, yeah, I heard you went through a shitty time. You sort of drink in, you got kicked out of your jujitsu school, and Dylan kind of goes, "Oh, you did a little research, eh? Well, well done." And he goes, "Yeah, I heard your dad died." And he Ooh. goes, "He go," but he didn't say it in like a way of he he, he mentioned it, but it wasn't mm. like, "Oh, your dad died." Like, you know what I mean? Like he, he was just prying to see if he would get a reaction. But, but he's a very clever man. Oh, and he knows what he's doing. And then he goes, "Oh, um, talk about it. See what happens." Like you know, like and I, I thought, mm. "Oh, you're getting there. There's something." And a lot of people gave Logan shit for that, and I was like. Uh, you know, I'm not defending talking about people's dads in in the in the event of no shit talks happen and you start bringing that up. Of course not. But if someone's been saying that, mm. you know, the things that he's been saying, calling your missus a slut for fucking mm. three months, oh, I, I would have not held back. I'd have said, yeah. I would have said everything. The rules are out the window. Oh yeah, I would yeah. have. I would have been way worse than Logan. Way, I would have fucking. I would have been <laughs> spitting on his grave by the end of that sentence. Yeah. At the, at I wouldn't that, have given a fuck. Point, no fucks get me. If you're talking about my missus like that, you could fucking die and I wouldn't give a shit. Let alone who's dead in your family. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and I don't give a fuck what people think of that. Like, I'm, if you've gone there, yeah. oh, we're fucking there, and I want to stab you. Like, <laughs> so the fact that Logan's kept it together, yeah. I'm like, I don't know how you fucking done it, because I'd have been like Logan's play. Have like, you remember that TV show? This is your life. Like, he's got fucking the Predator guy coming out. He's got like jujitsu guys who Dylan's had a. Like, he's been bringing out all sorts of people. But Dylan handles that quite well, but, to be but, fair. But you know, like we speak about the thing of him saying about his dad and the daughter. That's that's on the other level. But like. I feel like a lot of the stuff that Logan's done has been quite fun. Like, bringing Chris Hansen out yeah. was a fucking masterstroke. Like, if that was me and I saw Chris Hansen rock up, I wouldn't be sad about his taxes. I'd be like, mate, fair play. Do you know Dylan what I mean? did laugh. The, the, that the, was a bit of a funny moment. The cake, fair. the bouncer, yeah. these sort of things, like, 
All right, yeah, they, they're to get under someone's skin. Goes, oh, yeah, the bouncer. And he's in this room right now. <laughs> <laughs> that, this is where I, well, Eddie Hearn must be watching this going, fuck me, these yeah. guys are so much better than us. Yeah. Like, boxers are not thinking. But to be fair, Logan has the money to play that kind of game, I guess. Mm. Like, he'd be can, flying people can, from all around the globe. Can we just accept here that... Once the once the benchmark has been set by Dylan Dennis, whether you agree with it or not, is it not all fair game? I yeah. think now you're going to see a lot oh, yeah. more of it. I think, yeah, you mean, he's, you mean in general, in general, in terms of what Logan has then said and what Dylan oh, yeah. has then said. Yeah. Once the benchmark yeah. drinks orders, everyone, fair game. anyone drinks, drinks orders. Drinks. Um, oh, I'll have another one. Yeah. Oh, let's do I'm it. Good. I'm good. Uh, you're all right. Really? You want a vodka? I'm good. Oh no! Oh, not that you're getting one. Come on, we're just going to get. Laws are we'll, we'll get. I'm also we'll, good. We'll get one for Josh. Uh, two <laughs> vodkas, <laughs> two whiskeys. We're getting on it. Fuck it's it. the Logan Paul. Dylan. Fuck it, let's go, it, mate. Let's it's go, coming. son. Yeah, I said we've got to be, be fair. absolutely slaughtered by the time this fight happens. <laughs> hmm. okay. Fine, let's fucking get it. The one thing I will say about the build up to this fight though is that I feel like Dylan's stuff seems more off the cuff and witty, yeah. and like you know, even though it is quite low and you know all of that. It does seem more natural, whereas the premeditated stuff that Logan seems to have maybe I almost feel like he's sat there and gone, right, how can I get back in? It's too calculated. Let, let me it? let me make a cake and it just sort of seems and then I almost feel like when it delivers, it it doesn't always mm. hit as much as when da Dylan comes yeah, out. He with said something. this thing about bringing the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guy out um, to protect him from Dylan. Yeah, so what? And I was like, Oh that No, that that's line, not right. Yeah, they, they've thought about it and they haven't you know, yeah, but it, yeah. needs, it needs to be quick and witty. Yeah. yeah. It's not about spending a week and doing a bit of research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not as funny then. Do you know what the funny thing is? Like there was complinations made and a lot of a lot of just sort of narrative around that face uh, face off thing between Dylan Dennis and Logan Paul. And everyone was saying, Oh, Dylan's a rubbish talker, he doesn't know what he's doing, sort of thing when it comes to the verbals. And I've actually looked at the build build up and I thought, you know what, I think Dylan Dennis has held his own really well. Oh, we're seeing training now with Dylan. You you've said it. And, and a lot of them close up clinching, very Anthony Taylor these type are, stuff. These are spoiling tactics. Yeah. <laughs> he is trying everything to uh, yeah, to get a grip on him. Uh, two vodkas you, for the other. You lap. said it earlier. He's kind of stole the show, really. Hasn't yeah, he, he has. In that he sense. has massively. And and to do that, like Dylan Dennis is a name. But let's be honest, to people that don't follow MMA to that extent, what is he? Yeah. He's Conor McGregor's sparring partner. Yeah. You, you know that that is what it is. So to come in here now and at the end of the thing, everyone began looking forward to Dylan Dennis against Logan Paul. You know that Dylan Dennis has come in and in a roundabout way, I'm sure Logan Paul would change it if he could, he's actually done wonders for the sales of this show. I almost feel like a lot of these guys who've been in other sports and they come into this, it's like it's an opportunity to reinvent themselves. Yep. It's like it starts all over again. Like and now, like, like, you, you, like we discussed earlier, you, they weren't exactly high level in whatever sport they come out of, mm. but when they come to this, they can almost rule the roost and kind of be the top guy. So It's funny, I'm getting a memory of um, the Khabib versus Conor McGregor fight where the one person who pissed Khabib off as much as Conor McGregor, was Dylan Dennis. He's got good form. And and it's funny because at the time, people were like, Dylan? Who the, who the fuck is this Dylan guy? And uh, Khabib beats the shit out of Conor McGregor, strangles him. C Conor taps out like a little bitch. No, sorry. Um, I, just, <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. I've got to kick him. No. And, and Khabib then thinks, oh, that hasn't satisfied me. I've still, I still want to kick more ass. Jumps the fucking cage. And then jumps straight, fucking flying knee into fucking Dylan Dennis, and is punching Dylan Dennis outside the cage. There was no title lift. Khabib's mates then jump in the cage. They're fucking firing off on Conor McGregor. It was absolute chaos, and people kind of roundedly admitted Dylan Dennis caused that. Like mm. so, as much as we're kind of getting a taste of this when Dylan's the the main attraction, he's always been good at needling in. Like Khabib was a stoic hard-nosed bastard mm. he was very good at keeping his emotions like like you know like a russian uh, would be but you know like uh when it's going against you and when he's the one aiming his verbals at you you absolutely hate it but i went to school and i bet everyone around this table did with a lot of people like dylan dennis well, you know what i mean there was always a kid in every year that was like dylan dennis and when it wasn't you that he was giving the stick to it was hilarious you know what i mean he used to think oh, he's winding him up a tree yeah. you know what i mean and i think that's why a lot of people are warming to him in this build-up does that say something about <laughs> culture and society maybe so but at the end of the day He's a guilty pleasure, isn't he? Yeah, I'm, really. I'm really interested to know how that clinch uh, style will work against Logan because when I look at them, I'm like, well, Logan's stronger than you as well. Yeah. So you're going to try and clinch up with him. 
I fancy Logan to just bully you. Yeah, but only for an amount of time because I do feel like Logan will tire, man. I feel mm. like he will. Yeah. He did eight rounds with Floyd. Yeah. And the, the issue no with... No clinching, though, really. But the issue yeah. with it was... Yeah, Floyd wasn't clinching. But also, uh, and the clinching will drain the muscles and that's probably what he's going to think mm. of. I'll drain you and then it becomes a level playing field yeah. because the fast switch fibers are going to be struggling. But credit to Logan, in the Floyd fight, people forget about this. You got a second wind. Yeah. Six round... Floyd really looked at him and went, I'm not finishing you here. And then mm. Logan started to kind of come back into it a bit. And so he's, I don't think his cardio is as problematic as people think, but I think that's Dylan's best bet for sure. I, I've honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Dylan starches, uh, again, sorry, if Logan starches mm. Dylan within two rounds here. Do you know what I worry about in this fight? Like, there's more than one way to skin a cat, isn't mm. there? And when I look at this fight, I think, has Dylan won anyway? Do you know, like, even if he loses the fight on a points decision, has he won? Like, in Dylan's head, we got to get, oh, get Oh, a, oh no, get this, this can't go to decision. The Logan Paul, and I'm, I, I say this as someone who really likes this guy, you can't let this guy walk out of that ring with the ability to go, ha ha, this was your, this was your <laughs> game, this was boxing, now come to my game, MMA. Yeah. Like, you can't let him be talking. No. He has to be out on the floor, like, but, it, but, no but, way. But not only that, when you look at the way the build-up has gone, Dylan Dennis could go, yeah, all right, you beat me in a points decision, but I absolutely embarrassed you and gave you a lot of problems in your personal life. Yeah. Not that it's right, but I gave you a lot of problems That's in your personal life, exposed yeah. you to the world in the build-up, and then you only beat me on points, and we all know if you come over to MMA, I'm going to absolutely tear you apart, and that's... We're getting the mind. We're getting ourselves in the mind of what some people have labelled as a psychopath here. Do you know what I mean? Like, so it it could be a case of like if Dylan doesn't get stopped, he could see this as a bit of a moral win here. Mm. I think this reminds me a little bit of when Floyd fought Connor, and there was a moment where he thought Floyd knew, like, I have to get this guy out of here. I yeah. can't let him walk out. This is my domain. You know what I mean? I think there's way worse pressure on Logan tonight. Even though Logan has had three boxing matches, mm. he is not a professional boxer like he the pressure on tommy fury should be worse in reality than what it is on logan logan isn't someone who's had loads of experience but it's the build-up that's put that pressure on logan mm. if anything i think like that male pride shit it's really bad for you yeah, that, that, that in, <clears throat> in some ways though i do almost feel like there's more pressure on logan right because i think tommy if he really nails the perspective as of i'm going against a novice here and doesn't buy into the whole KSI bollocks and that aura. Oh. And he's just like, I'm going against a, a, a geezer that's been boxing a couple of years. I can do my thing. I think he can simplify and actually calm his nerves. Where, whereas Logan, I feel like no matter how he thinks, the facts are this geezer has already caused him ridiculous amounts of stress. And there's no two ways about that, right? And going into this fight, he, his mind's going to be like, don't get too emotional. Don't get too emotional. He has to, mm. you know what I mean? And the more he tries to think that, he's, <clears throat> he's trying to escape fact. Yeah, I don't and think I feel he's like the that's most emotional difficult. guy. And I think, I think that's one thing that could play into his hands. But even the, even the most cool customer, <sighs> you've got to be rattled a little bit here. Like, e and to a point where in a post, uh, podcast with uh, Jake recently, he was like, yeah, we're going we're gonna to drain him with the, the lawsuit. And then... If we've got to take money off of his pay packet because he can't afford to pay the lawsuit, we'll just take money every month from him. Mm. Yeah. And that was when I was like, oh, this is deep. Yeah, I, yeah, oh, yeah. This yeah, is yeah, deep. Yeah, yeah. You only do that stuff if, if yourself you have been hurt. If you're wanting to get back at him that much. Oh, you want to leave him with then yeah. You, yeah, you hate him. Yeah, that that's, is hatred. So that's what I'm saying. Going into this, like we say about, yeah, is Logan emotional? I don't know. Like going into that second KSI fight, look how much he didn't want to be there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You look even in that face off before uh, the head to head before they fight. He's there looking. The Floyd fight gave me a lot more confidence. I yeah, think he yeah, evolved yeah. from that experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Fight. You know what it's like. Mm -hmm. The person you were when you fought KSI. Oh, you're mate, not the yeah. same person. No, 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 no. And I think this this is years later. The Floyd fight would have helped him. Like in his mind, what he yeah. needs to think is, I fought Floyd Mayweather. Who the fuck is this? I, I, I don't even think the pressure comes from. I don't even think the pressure comes from what's That's happened common. in the build-up because I think it's more Either the way. fact of yeah, what is what everyone expects and how we should react because 
I think he's, he knows how the game works. He's he's played these sort of dirty games his, his full career. This is how he's become who he is. I think it's more the fact that every male in the country is going, mate, you need to do the right thing and absolutely bury this guy. Mm. I think that the pressure comes from what is expected of him versus how he actually feels emotionally about it. Mm. I think so. like one of the one of the points that a lot of people are make is Logan Paul has got to channel all this negativity and the hatred into the performance. But saying you touched on there, and I'd massively agree with it, yeah. is like you've got to completely separate yourself from it, yeah. if anything. I know for a fact, right, I've sparred people that I actively dislike mm -hmm. and I've never done well in them spars. Yeah, yeah. I've, I might have done all right, but I've never performed. It might have just been a tear up. Even like just in life in general, yeah. the girl that you fancy the most probably won't be the one that you're going to have any luck with. You yeah. know what I mean? Like the things that you want the most, sometimes straight. you've got to emotionally detach, detach yeah. yourself from these things. Yeah. And I think that in a roundabout weird sort of way, maybe that's the best thing Logan Paul can do in this fight. Yeah. No, Shout 100%. out to everyone watching, by the way. We've got plenty of you watching. Hit that like button, subscribe. Thanks to all of you. We're, we're, we're literally waiting for the entrances. And it is any second now Logan Paul, Dylan, Dennis, Bad Blood. We've Bum. done a poll, Brian. Oh, really? And uh, the people think that Logan Paul is going to win. He's got 62% of 62%? That's in, not that it's high, not though. Ma it's, it's still a, close to a 50 50. Like. But before you ask us for our predictions on the fight, can I ask you a question, right? Is there any part of you that thinks that we're going to see a genuinely really entertaining fight here? Because for me, the fight has got a bit of a spoiled up close affair written all over it. But I could be completely wrong here. Um, it depends on Logan um, implementing his game plan and keeping a clear head. When I look at him, I go, the force you can generate with the jab you should have. Mm. You should jab. The, he, when, when, when Dylan's trying to put up cut clinch, you should be fucking jabbing that head all the way to the fucking ceiling and making him unable to close the distance mm. because Dylan isn't an athlete. Logan is an athlete. Yeah. Dylan is a is a good grappler. If you remember people like Ben Askren, uh, Logan's coming out now dressed in uh, all pink uh, attire. Uh, he looks very calm. Um, he oh, is no. um, walking out with Jake Paul um, behind him with his arm in the air, looks smiling. Um, he doesn't look worried. He doesn't look nervous. He looks very calm in the moment. Do no, we know who that other person was, Brian? Not you know, sure, man. The jujitsu guy. Can is I that the jujitsu guy? Here, you right? know the. Is that who it is? Yeah, the jujitsu guy that he brought to the weigh-in or whatever. Uh, I'm like, not sure that's him, actually. I thought it wasn't. I know uh, as boxing the fans, the we the really... Back. The one at the back. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah. The, that's the old yeah, school. Yeah, yeah. I know as boxing fans, we really shouldn't care about stuff like this. But Logan Paul ring walking first. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I'm surprised what? by that. He's, I, he's supposed to be the A side. Apparently, yeah, he's definitely the A side. <laughs> I mean, he's done the fucking pay per view percentage, that's yeah. for sure. Uh, but Dylan, um, I don't know. Uh, Dylan, Dylan apparently had some sort of entertaining ring entrance right. planned uh, that uh, he had uh, apparently dishonored said that that ain't going to happen. Mm. Um, apparently, uh, by the way, Anison Gabe has tweeted out a picture of uh, Saul Papi saying, Manny Pacquiao didn't die for this. Uh, so, so Gib playing the promo game, getting his tweets out there. Um, we're going to do quick, quick predictions. Um, and, and there is mega security in the ring for this so that nothing mm. happens beforehand. Uh, I'm going to go first with Josh. What do you think, mate? I think Logan Paul cleans him out in two rounds. I think it's that simple. Scrappy fight, Logan Paul on points. Big loss. I'm going Logan stoppage. Um, third round. Jo uh, Joe? Joe? How many rounds is this fight? Six, uh, six rounds. Six rounds. I believe it goes the distance. Logan Paul wins. Oh, that, I can't have that. I, can't. I just think it does. I, no, I, I'm not disagreeing. Like, I'll get you. Yeah, You've got I, I just view. think with, with Dylan knowing how to an extent to smother, grab, wrestle, cub, probably defend himself to an extent, I just, I just think mm. he'll evade. Here comes Dylan now. I'm going to predict Logan Paul inside two rounds and Dylan oh, Dennis is smiling he's getting his big moment and just to be clear I know Dylan has performed in high pressure moments world championships of mm. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu where he's had to uh, you know spa, um, sorry he's had to uh, roll with four guys in one night um, but this is his first main event 20,000 in the arena and he is loving every minute of it mm. by the looks of it uh, <laughs> you said about, you said about the uh, capacity of the arena there, and Joe, you said this earlier about yep. look at what influencer boxing is now doing, selling out. 
the MEN Arena, yeah. they could have sold out the Spurs Arena for this. 100%. I, I honestly believe, that sounds like a bold statement, I think they could yeah. have sold out the Spurs Arena for this. 100%. God, I'm feeling the fuck... Uh, like, I'm just thinking, Logan, you cannot mm. let this guy walk out of here. You need to put a nail in him. I'm feeling the vodka. Um, <laughs> 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 Uh, Dylan is trying to goad Logan right now, um, <laughs> you know, over the security guards and the crowd are absolutely hyped. Yeah. And uh, Logan is smiling and he looks, yeah, oh they, they, they both God. look very confident. Yeah. They, they, mm -hmm. Right now we're seeing no sign of any uh, insecurity here. They're both very confident, um, despite Dylan going out last night. Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, I'm feeling this like I'm fucking. Man, this is it, it feel, it feel, I know it is a co-main, but it feels like a main oh, event, it, doesn't it? it? If any, like, the the fact that they've doubled up like this, oh my god! Shout out to Misfits, man! Like th this is like Eddie Hearn must be sat in that front row thinking, I could never do this. I could never. Yeah, accomplish yeah but yeah, but when he gets interviewed after, he'll still go, yeah. Well, I'll put Logan Paul KSI on the second time yeah. round, and it's <laughs> like. No, mate, Brian did that. Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> it was me who said, is there anyone you want to call out? So, I still haven't got 5% of pride. <laughs> uh, oh, we're not doing the anthems. We're doing no, the they're going to cut to the Under Armour commercial. We're doing the national anthems. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather, honestly, I, I, I really, I'm not a fan of national anthems before a boxing match, man. Um, but yeah, it was a real good insight to see Dylan backstage there, like um, mm. hitting the one-two, grabbing. So at least we we totally know the game plan. Yeah, know that. Now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I would highly doubt that Dylan knew that that was getting streamed. On, oh yeah, on he wouldn't have known that the CCTV. Do you, know in, do you know what's interesting? Logan's done no media, yeah, like no extra media yeah. all week, and there was no no cameras in his dressing room. Nothing. Mm. I wonder why. What are you hiding? I'm not sure, but if if there's one thing I am sure about is he looks like Ivan Drago right now. Like, Ivan Drago. He's, he's sculpted from stone there. Remember, like in the Rocky movies. Yeah, you know, yeah remember yeah. how Ivan Drago was sculpted though. No, no, what I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he looks chiselled compared to Dylan. Dylan looks smooth, you know, like because Dylan fought at one seventy. Well to weight, I think. Yeah, well and even then, he physically looks a lot smaller, doesn't mm. he? It, it's a little bit like the Tommy KSI difference. Yeah. Little bit. Yeah. yeah. Apparently they're booing the American national. I'm not surprised. What in the, the fuck crowd. Are you thinking? In it's, England. We're in that. Manchester. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What the <laughs> fuck? Who thought this was a good <laughs> idea? And this poor singer's having to sing through yeah. booing. She'll never forget it. We've <laughs> hmm. um, got the stars and stripes in the ring as well. Oh, Look coach. The, the WB commentator. <laughs> I'm giving it that. God bless. We're going to be kidding about he's, he's flying the flag here. Look at this. Oh, God. Oh, oh no. no. Wow. Logan's flying the like, uh, American flag. How to make the audience turn on you. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, yeah, that, that, that point that you made a while back about the uh, the WA experience, and yeah. how, like Logan is totally comfortable in front of crowds. He is week in, week out, performing on the mic. Like mm -hmm. He will be more at home than, than even anyone else here tonight. Because yeah. no, he is selling out arenas all the time. 100%. And yeah, like I said about... You know, it's, he's used to being in front of a crowd, and it's a it's a very negative reception. It's that booing. Yeah. Anytime he gets on the mic, anything he says, you know, so he may even be trying to make mm. the crowd boo. Yeah. Fuck you know that may I know Jake Paul does that. He loves that sort of you know that rolls him up. Do you know one slight difference, and maybe Logan would sort of understand this or not, but it's like you know in WWE when they're booing you, they are booing Logan Paul. But they're booing the character. Like a you lot know of what? Screwed. I don't think it yeah. was with him because he got booed from the minute go. It wasn't like he went in and went, I'm going to do something to make them boo. They were like, fuck this YouTuber yeah. trying to get in on our yeah, sport. Yeah, you yeah, ain't yeah. here for, for us. You're here for your own yeah. brand, your own bullshit. They hated it. Another thing that I was making the point earlier on about WWE and Misfits and whatever and emphasising mm. how massive influencer boxing and Misfits in, in general has become, like... You look at WWE back in the day, yeah? Kurt Angle, he wins Olympic gold and then goes to WWE. Other, Brock Lesnar couldn't go and fight on the UFC until he had left the WWE. Now you've got lights of Logan Paul moonlighting in a bit of WWE yeah. and then going on to Misfits and it's like, okay, you can come back over after you're done with that. Like, <laughs> they, they very much understand as well. Like, this is where this oh, is this where is gonna bring this is going to bring WWE viewers as well, 100%. right? Like, uh, and, oh my God, I, I just keep thinking like, 
I think Logan's going to smash no, but, this. No, but look at this. He's doing the thing that he did before KSI where he's very just sort of It's like, good to see he's got Luis Ortiz mm-hmm. in his corner as well. Uh, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, where, like, it just doesn't where, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Where, whereas you see da- Dylan, he's very much just sort of like seems to be bouncing and in the flow, whereas Logan does he doesn't look as com- very still and it just seems a little bit like <sighs> you don't do this to me no mate mate I know what I <laughs> see I, saw, I know I what need I, a knockout 100% man I know what you're saying I don't think he's a massively confident guy every time the, he realises the mm. camera's there he gives them a cheeky look but deep down I don't think he's got that when kind of they confidence said to him in the run up to this they said what do you do to Dylan Dennis? He said, whatever I want. If I want to knock them out early, I'll knock them out early. If I want to take them four rounds, play them around, and then knock them out, I'll do that. Like, that's how he was talking. So, and I believe that the skill gap should be that. It should be that. And the athletic gap. I, I think in grapplers, you sometimes, like, grappling and, and striking athleticism is so different. Yeah, completely different. Like, yeah. it, it, it it's that, um, it's oh, they, they're, they're ready, they're ready. We're going to get them in the middle here. Yeah, oh my gosh. Can we all just take a moment to uh, believe that Dylan Dennis is in this ring? Because I, I, I never yeah, thought he'd yeah, actually yeah. be there. Shout out to everyone watching, hit that like button. Come on. <laughs> Come on, go. boys. Come on. I was caught fine to would have added up if he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> did, did we all think he'd actually turn up? Because I honestly didn't. Is I, did, I did, yeah. Mate, the amount of people in this ring, it is wild. Do you Brian, know what, what you said what earlier? Say about you said earlier. <laughs> You said when you were about to fight someone and someone kept rubbing their shoulders, you knew they needed their hand mm. held. Well, we're seeing it now because Dylan Dennis is getting a borderline Thai massage <laughs> in this bitch. Ooh, what the fuck? Sign me up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get a happy ending on it. <laughs> we're getting the rules read out by the referee, and I think he's particularly aware that Dylan Dennis, if he's getting a pace then, would have no problem in... Uh, and there was no touch with the gloves. We'd have no problem just saying, fuck it, I'm going for the guillotine choke here. Yeah, fuck this shit. Logan Paul <laughs> is a massive, <laughs> massive star. But <laughs> there's been a lot crazy, of questions eh? when you actually talk about his boxing credentials. This is the fight that he can actually oh, write yeah, those We're going to get answers, boys. Come on, this guys. Is, this is massive. Jesus. I'm glad I'm sharing this experience with you. That black guy keeps looking <laughs> worse and worse every time I see it. It's like it's getting the worse. The make-off's going to come off very quickly. Yeah. Wait, he's got a love he's bite. Sweating. Wait, he's got a love bite? I don't know if that's up. Um, <laughs> Logan just blew a kiss into the crowd. I'm assuming it's to he's the missus. Not, he's not got a love bite. She's not that sort of girl. <laughs> oh, Body shot. Oh. And there was a little bit of a... Um, trip. So Dylan Dennis has come out southpaw. Clash of feet. Um, and there was a clash of feet there. Body Ooh. punches from, from Logan <laughs> on the belt. He's doing the thing where he's going to try and make him gas out by punching loads. You've got to go for a hook there. He's he's like, he's he hasn't thrown You're anything. supposed to move your head when you come in. He's, he's got to throw a punch as well. No, I think he's, this is what almost Floyd oh, did. Oh, no. Dylan's... No, yeah, but yeah, but Floyd's good enough to do that. <laughs> Dylan's going in straight this lines terrible. about any head movement. He's not yeah, tipping yeah, the knees yeah, at yeah. all. Yeah, Dylan's, Dylan's not... Um, he's... Yeah, he... I think Logan should just and if you, piece him up and, and tactically uh, if dismantle you, him. If you're going to try and wear him down like that, I'd, I'd sort of try and get a bit more into the <laughs> Dylan's fight. Dylan's talking Shit to talking. him. Uh, like Dylan hasn't got a clue what he's doing <laughs> here, has he? You can see that. But Logan's kind of unsure. that He's like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Like, this ain't boxing, bro. Oui. But Logan actually just missed with a, a combination there. Hook and a straight. This is what he's like against Floyd. He's wild when he lets the hands go. Yeah. He needs to... Dylan isn't really throwing here in the exchanges. He, Dylan looks scared to throw. Dylan's scared to actually leave himself open because he knows when he does start throwing, it's actually when he's going to be at his most vulnerable. I said that in my preview. Nah, so see, brother, he's I, not throwing a single no, punch. No, no, I think he's doing this to try and make Logan punch himself out. That is what I'm seeing here. Right. I feel like this is a tactic. I, I, I mean, maybe he's trying to go in, uh, Floyd Mayweather did this to Conor McGregor, and yeah. I, I don't know if he's trying to just... But he's uh, getting jabbed no, he's now. He's getting jabbed. A bit here. Go on, Logan, son! And <laughs> Dylan's the, uh, laughing uh, it uh, off. And the main thing, up, the main thing that he should be looking at here is Logan is leaving plenty of spaces to be counted. Oi. Dylan finally letting a few go. Yeah, he's doing nothing though, Dylan. Uh, I, I, I guess he's looking at those big arms and thinking, like you said in the uh, the face off, you're gonna gas. There you go. Nice right hand Dylan. by Dylan Dennis. And a oh, good one-two one by good. Logan, and he clinches but, afterwards. But if, if Dylan's going to have that tight guard Oy. like he's adopting here, he needs to make sure that when Logan does come with a one or a two, he then at least throws a counter hook in there yep. because the punches are coming from low and the hands are going back low. Yeah. So Logan does have plenty of uh, spaces for Dylan to punch into, but at the minute, we're literally just seeing the pressure and it's looking like he's winning straight. Oh. Lovely right hand from Logan Paul. Rocks the head back, and Dylan is doing fuck all. 
You flied all the way for, to Manchester and you're not even throwing butchers what like. What is this elbow thing? <laughs> like, literally. Nah, I, I, I really don't know. I think Logan's just getting a look at Dylan here. Like, what the fuck am I dealing with here? Like, who fights like this? <laughs> I, 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 I think yeah. Dylan's even scared to even throw punches because that's when he knows he'll be at his most vulnerable. He's literally not doing nothing here. Yeah, this is a bit weird. This is weird. <laughs> this is <laughs> Dylan is doing nothing. Dylan literally threw a grand total of fuck all there. Yeah, I, I mean, like uh, to an extent, I was, you know, yeah, tactic, maybe get him to punch out, but you got you got to at some point do something. And I think like he can't like okay, do that for a round. He can't now do that the second round because he's just going to slowly lose this fight. And at least well, maybe he wants to lose on points as long as he doesn't get knocked I, I, out I think he wants to take the the, the 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 sting of the punches on the gloves yeah and and get the worst out of the way and then try and implement his thing but yeah. I don't know if that that's going to work I let's, don't know let's see how long Paul comes out see if he looks like he's uh, drained anything from the tank or not I think yeah. Logan showed good restraint there he didn't overthrow yeah. he, he definitely rocked the head back plenty of times despite the tight guard I mean that was an easy fucking round yeah, yeah. But, but again you have to knock him out. You have to make him... Yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. let him walk out of there talking shit. If yeah. I'm Logan and I'm thinking I want a stoppage in this fight, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, I'll tell you what, before my arms do start to drain a little bit, while I've still got my power, let me twist my hips into these and let me get him out of here in this yeah. round. Because he's there to be hit. Punches, aren't they? Yeah. And that's what Wade has criticised Logan for a lot, is just constant arm punches. Yeah. Um, not right. getting the talk um, from the hips. But I think he does that to keep <sighs> yourself at a safe distance rather than overly committing. Yeah, a lot of that uh, that style that Milton applies with uh, the hands down low is is like that. <laughs> is Dylan going to throw a punch in this fight? Oh, Just like chatting shit to him the whole time. <laughs> I, what is this? This is going to sound really... I, I wouldn't be surprised if Dylan tries to bite his ear at some point. Mike Tyson <laughs> style. Could he go for a takedown? Because I, I could see that happening as well, to be honest. He's doing Rear nothing. naked choke. This is bizarre. <laughs> what is Dylan doing? Fucking hell. Oh my god! I, I, I can't believe it. Like I think Dylan knows how vulnerable he is, and he's just like fuck throwing punches. I just want to make it to the end. Yeah, I think that's genuinely his whole game plan. Like, do you he, think he you know how he keeps dropping them hands? Logan needs to time that. Do you think you could imagine Dylan at the end of this fight if it goes to points? <sighs> Dan, we just fought in your form of combat. Now come and fight me in MMA and taking yeah. that moral victory, like we said, from, from yeah. surviving. I think, yeah, like if he just does the whole fight like this and Logan doesn't get near him, doesn't actually doesn't mark him up in any way, mate, that's a win for Dylan. It is, but for the fans... The, no, but the, he doesn't the, give the, a fuck. The, no, he doesn't give a fuck, but for the millions of people or, or million over a million we reckon that are going to be buying pay-per-views here, you would be disappointed to, to see Dylan not come out and at yeah. least try and put heavy lever on him. With 100%, but ultimately, as he says, Dylan is the bad guy mm -hmm. and he does not care work what anyone body. thinks work that fucking body Logan, think... son work that body mm. the body's right there Lo Dylan finally threw a punch we're at one uh, we're at two minutes <laughs> into the round um, I actually think Logan needs Dylan to throw punches yeah he yeah. does yeah. That, that, that's what I said in my preview he, he, uh, Dylan's possibly might just go up and just try and survive in there and that's all he's doing right now it's very oh. hard to land when someone's being this negative it's pathetic yeah. it, it, as, a, as a man you talk all that shit you haven't even thrown a punch that is some pussy shit that like you can't do that he, at some point like, he needs to actually engage This is where, as Logan, it might be worth playing play, a shot. playing a game where you bait him. Oh, go on, Logan. Go on, Logan, son. Come on, son. Oh, no. Yes. Dylan Dennis is in trouble and Logan is wailing no. on that body. Yeah, but I he don't. He doesn't want to blow yourself out. Yeah, that's... Yes. <laughs> Get that motherfucker out there. Come on, Logan, Logan son. Logan did well there to not let Dylan Dennis hold him, actually. He took a step back. Come on. Sank I haven't seen oh. from him before. Oh, where's the laughing now? <laughs> he's got to get him out of this ring though soon. Yeah, he's going to be gassed. He's Logan is already gassed. gassed yeah, and that's now, the worry. yeah, and that's exactly. He wanted to weather that storm. Logan's mm. now going to be very gassed. Now Logan just Dylan. needs to let, let him off now. He done this, did, 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 was it not about? Was it the second or third round? We done the same thing with uh, Mayweather, where he kind of. But that one was the button bashing. Do you remember yeah. everyone said it's like no, on, this the, wasn't it's like on the PlayStation though. when they, you hit they, all the buttons? He was hurt, and Dylan was hurt there. No, big but time. I mean, in terms of letting his hands go, he kind of. Jake's in the corner with Milton really trying to... Uh, and, and this is what we want to see. Not to take the shine off Logan, but imagine what Jake would do with Dylan Dennis. <laughs> I know. 
To be honest with you, what? It's because I, I, I don't know if it'll be that much different to this. Uh, it right. would be. It would be better. It would be worse. Jake, but... Jake is a huge level above Logan. Yeah, like opinion. like this is a lot I, of just. I don't know. It's, that it's, Nate Diaz fight wasn't great, mate. It was actually not a great. I don't think he's a huge level. I think it's just. I, th I feel as if Jake's a little bit calmer, and he's he's, t he's and obviously Jake's been a lot more composed. The box, very he's composed. more composed, yeah. and he's actually developed his yeah. technique. Whereas I feel as if Logan's got great feet, but he's never really improved on the way he delivers his mm. punches. That's his downfall. Mm. I think defensively, there's not much difference in it. It's mm. just the way he delivers his punches. They obviously got the same genes. I feel yeah. as if he's got the potential to have the same level of power. He just hasn't improved <laughs> his technique. I also think that the fact that. Logan, in, look, as, as a sort of armchair YouTube fan, as the fact that Logan was a bigger star maybe going into it yeah. meant that Logan hasn't got as much time to put into boxing as Jake did. And Jake has obviously had a lot more time to invest in boxing and learn his craft. So maybe that's... Dylan has literally got no intent to actually win this fight, man. You're a grown mm. man. You call yourself a fighter. You're not even throwing punches. Like, what the Oh, fuck? my God. <laughs> this guy is... A, Logan needs to clown this guy and invite the pressure on... And and then counter him because this guy he doesn't know how to throw a fucking punch and he doesn't want to be exposed for that not only Roy. does he not know how to throw a punch I'm a massive fan of Roy Jones Jr but that is the worst attempt at a shoulder roll I've ever seen in my life <laughs> it's like oh my god oh my god like literally we're talking literally we're watching the 6 9 of fighting right now like it's all gangster <clears throat> until it's yeah. like the fucking B gangster yeah. yeah is he just no, waiting I mean? until the 5th to actually throw some punches nah. do you not think he's like is that not the game plan like, just to, stay to, in the fight until it, the no, fifth it's, get, it's to not get knocked out, mate. All, yeah, yeah, yeah. all, all Dylan wants to do is to not get yeah, knocked out. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. at the same time, I hope Logan doesn't switch off and get like, get mm. too comfortable and play into uh, Dylan's hands <laughs> by getting into his head. Yeah. Oh, there's the elbows trying to Little come in there. we're in pink tonight. <laughs> Wait, look how he's marked up, Dylan is. Oh, yeah. yeah he's, he's been getting caught with them, right? Because, you know, when you've got your hands high, you end up cuffing yourself. You're still taking the mm. shots, you know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> back fist. Yeah, that back fist. <laughs> what is that? What is he doing? Oh, <laughs> D Dylan really is an embarrassing man, and he look at him. What's he saying? Let's do jujitsu. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's just lying down, saying let's roll or whatever. But like, you're literally you're throwing three punches in three rounds. You fucking idiot! Like, if you want people to look at you as a fighter, this ain't the way to go about it. Like. You don't look like a fighter. No. You've got the shorts and the fucking gloves on, but mate, you look. Oh, he threw one that punch. Had a bit of intent. He that literally looks like a intent. fucking a person who's had one boxing lesson. Yeah. What the fucking hell? He's is in the southpaw stance oh. with his right foot as the lead foot, and when you look at when Logan pushes him back, the left foot should go back first. The right foot's going back first, so his footwork's all wrong. And then body shots are going to start to uh, oh, take yeah. toll. Oh yeah. As the fight goes on. Yeah. Try keeping your fucking hands up when that body's getting hurt. What Logan needs to do is bait him in and make him think that there's an opportunity to hit him and then slip it and count yeah. him. But it's easy to say that when, I you know, he, I'm not in the fucking heat of the moment. But I think that that's the hardest bit for Dylan. Oh, he just done Logan a, turning his back just, there. <sighs> God, he's absolutely shite, isn't he, Dylan? He's, he's not giving him anything to do. Like, Logan needs something to come back to create a counter. Yeah, and that's why he's just deliberately thinking, I just need to see the end of this round and then I can say, fuck you, come to MMA. And unfortunately, he's, he's kind of getting away with it right now. Even though he's getting beaten up, it's, it's, mm. it's not enough. Logan's not fighting like a man who's had his partner abused for, for weeks. You know what I mean? <sighs> he came it, it, He came out in the first couple of rounds though and he was very aggressive, wasn't he? Is he any... Do you think that's more aggressive than he normally is? Mm. I don't... I'm not seeing... You're as aggressive as you're allowed to be. Like, and, and, and again, it sounds like I'm being really negative towards Logan. I really don't mean to be. But like, you know, when Logan puts on <laughs> the aggression and when Logan goes for it, you sort of feel like it's very forced. And uh, comparing it to Jake, we were saying they got the same genes. When he does it, it's very natural. Yeah, like it comes yeah, to yeah, quite There's naturally. a spite there in Jake that I just don't think Logan has. Like Jake, there's moments where Jake uh, uh, enjoys hurting people. Yeah. yeah. Right? And it's not the be win end in life. There's plenty of things that Logan will excel Jake at. But in the 
specific skill set in this format, I just think that Logan could do with mm. adopting a bit of that aggression, that natural killer instinct that's in his it, brother. It's almost like when he does try to be aggressive, he just tenses up and, and it's it's just all mm. arm punches. There's no exchange in the hips or the shoulders. And, and, and let's have it right. From from someone that, that's boxed to a high level like yourself, if someone stands there in front of you with that <sighs> high guard like that, you should be having a field day. Well, Dylan really. just threw a right hand. Very, a very hard right hand. Did it land? Did it land? It didn't, didn't quite land, but it was... <laughs> well, it's just A for effort. He's yeah. throwing <laughs> a punch, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. He's throwing he's a punch. It. Dylan Dennis is throwing an actual punch. A See, good idea is a good idea forever. When you don't throw punches, <laughs> that's the reaction you get. Wow. <laughs> I mean, we might actually start to see a fight take place now, um, aside from Logan using Dylan as a crass test dummy. What? What is a better moral victory? Is it a better, better moral victory if Dylan goes out on his shield trying to win or if he makes it to points? Because I think all of us around this table, purely for the fact we want to be entertained, would say Dylan needs to go out on his shield. Do you not think that Dylan's role is the king of the trolls? And for the trolls, shithousing your way to a decision is almost like a win. Like, they will love him for that. Like, you stunk the joint out, you didn't get ironed out, you didn't throw anything, and you made a mockery of the whole thing. It's like an anti-hero. Yeah, it's like the yeah. class clown, which is what Dylan is. It's... Mm. You're not there to take part. You're there to disrupt. Yeah. And that's what he's doing now. He's just stinking the joint now by not throwing punches. I mean, if you're misfits, you don't want this as a, as a show of the sport. No. But I, I also think this is actually all he can do. Like, I, there's been a couple moments where he's tried to maybe get on the inside and, and unleash. And he, I just don't actually think he can. Yeah. I don't. So he, this is almost like the second best. Like, <sighs> this is let me just do this. Do. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is, this is yeah, it's tough, man. Logan looks like he is tiring. Slightly. He is tiring. Yeah. Yeah. He is. Because he's thrown a lot of punches, but he's just hitting a, a shield. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You know when you said that Dylan was a bit of a punch bag for McGregor in sparring? Uh, yeah, you can see why, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, if anything... No, no, no. I was going to say, I think you were being very light by calling him a punch bag. Yeah, I think yeah, but no, but you can see why. Like, bin bag. Because Dylan, obviously, <laughs> like, I kept thinking this in the preview and the prediction I did is, like, he's got to be tough. You train in all these MMA gyms. You've been with Conor McGregor that long. Like, and McGregor, if you're not tough, wouldn't have you in your his mm. team. Like, that's why he had Artem Lobov. He needed a fucking crash test dummy like that. So I knew Dylan was going to be tough. And, and you know to a degree he is but he is tough he's not tough in a I want to go and win this fight I'm going to throw punches tough he's just durable and can take getting beaten up but make no mistake this is pathetic from him tough and proud yeah. are different things yeah. <laughs> this is, this we're is, saying he's not proud he's when, when, tough. We, when we knew Dylan was the underdog but he hasn't oh, even wow. tried to win. The no. whole thing, KSI tonight is the underdog. Mm. We ain't saying this no from him. Way, no We're saying way. him go out there and give it everything. And if he doesn't win, he'll go out on his shield. Mm. He's like a journeyman and you're, you're getting pro boxing. They're, they're there to just to yeah. survive. They're not yeah. really there to do anything. My, yeah, but a Kevin Johnson will still show shink, uh, like, you know, little yeah, bits in yeah, your armor there. Yeah, like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's like a high level journeyman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. See, when he, when he lets his hands go, he goes square, he gets wild, mm. doesn't he, Logan? Interesting thing there, to go away from the fight a little bit. Look who Eddie Hearn sat next to. We were talking about a rumoured fight earlier on between Conor Ben and Chris Eubank. I've seen that earlier. Eddie Hearn sat oh, next God, to Chris they've Eubank. they pretty much confirmed that's happening in the next six months, apparently. Mm. Um, where it'll happen is anyone's guess. We're in round five. Uh, shout out everyone watching. Please hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. We appreciate it. And um, right now, it's been four rounds to Logan Paul. Dylan yeah. Dennis has probably thrown five punches. Yeah, this is, I'd this say is five. meant to be like the main event. <clears throat> the ones we've watched previously have been far more entertaining. It's like yeah. Dylan is here to just survive, and by survive, you know, get to the final bell and and get his ass kicked. You need um, a good dancing partner, don't you? It's just embarrassing, this man. Like, as a as a grown man to get in a boxing ring and to perform like that, like. Most people would perform. I, I remember like getting in the ring and doing my first spa and be willing to like give more than this. Well, yeah. And this is behind closed doors. If, uh, yeah, there's not yeah, twenty thousand yeah. people watching. Yeah, there's an element of like as, man as a pride. fucking man. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to go and do that. You look like yeah. a bitch fighting like mm -hmm. this. Absolute bitch, man. Mm -hmm. Come on, throw some fucking punches, you bitch. Embarrassing, man. He's still you can't call yourself a fighter and fight like that. No fucking no. way. You're a fucking jujitsu guy who has no place in. If you fight like this and you want to win a UFC title, <laughs> fuck, you can't even fight Logan Paul. Like no. you're supposed to be. He thinks he's going to be a UFC champion, and you can't even throw punches. Fuck off, you joker. Absolute fucking joker. 
why is he going into the corner? But here, I suppose he's up? getting me annoyed, and that's his goal, right? Yeah, he's yeah, winning yeah. by by me watching him thinking, I want you to actually have a fight. He's winning to some degree by even doing that, and by even pretending like he's not hurt and laughing. That's the whole game that he's playing. Yeah, look at both his eyes. He's marked up. Oh, he's black eyes the whole lot. Logan hasn't taken, uh, you know. The, Logan, this is the thing that we remember. The one time Dylan Danis hit Logan was with a fucking microphone. You ain't done <laughs> shit. It's mad. Problem is, the whole way through the build-up, the signs were always there. When you when when you look at it and you go, did Dylan Danis really give a fuck what anyone thought when, nah, he, was, nah. when he was saying all these things and everything he was doing? <laughs> <laughs> this is what Logan has to do. He needs to he needs to uh, troll Dylan. Yeah. Uh, he just gave it this when when Dylan missed with one punch that he's throwing this round. Come on. Come on, Dylan. Throw a punch. It's literally... <laughs> imagine the fucking CompuBox box stats from this, man. You're going to have, mm. like, 300 punches to, to three. You know when I said before the fight that there's the chance here that we still don't learn anything about Logan Paul? So yeah. Maybe from a character point of view, the way he's, you know, not... Um, sort of crumbled under the pressure and whatnot. Yeah, okay. But in terms of technically where he's at in this YouTube boxing scene, if the fight stays like this, which it looks like it's going to, we don't learn anything about Logan Paul, do we? Uh, and that's, that's Technically you do, but that's, that's about it. It's not There's nothing fault. coming back. No, it's, so not, how his, can it's, we learn not, it's not his fault at all. Yeah. But it's, you know. This is a glorified spar against a guy who hasn't got a clue how to punch, um, but knows how to cover up. Um, he's no worse he's just no better he's had, but he's been out the game for a while so mm. I, I didn't expect him to be better to be honest oh <laughs> Dylan threw another one missed again <laughs> but yeah um, Dylan is getting more aggressive in terms of his he's trying to walk uh, Logan down but now we're in once we get into the sixth round and Dylan sees the end of this fight within touching distance I mean we can and Logan doesn't even seem like he wants to knock Dylan out right now in terms of his movement um, he's content to outbox him and embarrass him. So maybe that's, you know, that's the way he wants to play it. But I, I thought we'd get a bit more, I, I thought we'd get a bit more aggression from Dylan here. I think this is the best chance Logan has to try to play him at his own game. Otherwise, he's just going to have a guy with a high... Sh like high We've got one round left, so I think we're, we're, we know where this is going. It's a Logan Paul decision. Uh, it's been a bit said of a bit, Logan um, Paul on points, mate. You nailed it. You nailed said it. Said it, bruv. Mm. I'll be happy if you're wrong and uh, Logan lands that big shot. But um, I think given how tired he is from... It's it's almost like an exercise machine that he's on. Like, you're just punching relentlessly in uh, the guard. Um, there's nothing coming back, pretty much. It's quite deflating, isn't it? It's like this, 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 this is not the main one. event. <laughs> this, this is where it isn't yeah. deflating. Yeah. You've got a proper main event where yeah. two people are going to take each other's head off, and we've got real pr proper fighters in the head. Yeah, Dylan Dennis, you can't ever call yourself a fighter after this. No, no. This is embarrassing. You are an internet troll. Yeah, you, you are literally six nine. So congratulations, <laughs> you played yourself. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like <laughs> you go back to jujitsu, bro. You ain't, yeah. you're in. A, you're not a, like a proper striker. Yeah, and you've no got to sympathise with Logan Paul because Logan Paul did not know that Dylan Dennis was going to come out here and stink the place out he and, he, and and what you can say is Dylan Dennis probably knew what he was going to do oh, Logan, yeah. Logan Paul was there ready for a fight so you've got to give him credit for that and he's still taking it to him in this last round yeah, a couple of good shots Logan's still hitting them hard I feel like when they when you're not looking to throw back it's a lot easier to cover yourself up so Dylan Dennis is probably going to see out this round yeah, I mean, the one credit you can give Dylan is, has he got a decent chin? Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. But he's not, I don't think Logan's been able to hit him clean. No, he hasn't been caught. He, he's just had a, this tight shield. It's, yeah. it's hard to kind of land cleanly when a guy's doing that. wonder how much Dylan is getting paid. Oh, that was a good body shot from Logan Paul. Uh, Dylan definitely felt that, but uh, he circles out. Doesn't Not want to know. In, immediately, his hands go further down, so that definitely did something. But Logan isn't capitalising on mm. it right now. He's giving him that time. There's two minutes left. Dylan goes into... He's Dylan, man. Oh, but, oh I, You know, I was beginning to think, you know, maybe there's some star quality about this guy on the run-up, even after mm. all the shit he's done. But you don't, you're not even 
being a man here. Nah. Fuck me, you absolute pussy. This is what happens when you're just a spawn partner. Yeah. You know what I mean? For Conor McGregor, mm. you, that's his mentality. You're just a cum rag. Like, yeah. he's literally <laughs> just yeah. wanked it off in the rag. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no, no, no. Dylan no. goes for the takedown. No, he's going, no way. No way. No way. I knew he was going to do that. Dylan's an absolute bitch. Does that mean disqualification? Is that a point to don't? Some, uh, <laughs> a, a lot of the bookmakers were giving odds on the DQ for, for, for the that sort of thing. I yeah. mean, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. So if what's happening here? Oh, he's getting a, a disqualification. Uh, a point a... taken off of him. <laughs> <laughs> Legend's making it. <laughs> he's, he's a fucking... He do, is... do you know what you have to think, right? Oh, you have to think, like, I understand that Dylan Dennis has a name now and that there's a chance of him bringing attention to an organisation. He should go mm. for it again. But... but but why would anyone ever hire Dylan Dennis for a fight ever no. again? No. Jesus Christ. Lad. We've got a minute left. Does Dylan Dennis go for that again? You know, a question for you guys. Do you think when Dylan Dennis is old and grey and is fucking, you know, he's, he's yeah. an old man, he'll look back at this and think, I fought like a man or I fought like an absolute little bitch. Wow, well, I think he'll go, oh, I fought like a man in jiu-jitsu. I'm a champion, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. This, is, this is just a joke for me. This is me just down the park with my mates. Like, I think that's how he sees this it. This is embarrassing, yeah, man. Like, any fighting man would not be proud of this. You can't, you, you know, and I'm quoting the Furies here, but you can't call yourself a fighter. You can't, like, wow. Will, wow. Uh, but he's Brian, a would, he, would he be earning <laughs> more, more for this than any of his MMA fights? Oh, no. Uh, Dylan Dan has earned more tonight than he's ever earned in his entire life for so, anything. So when he's an old man, would he maybe go, I did what I thought was the noble art, and then I went in and messed about for a few rounds and earned the bag? Uh, I think he may think I had the chance of a lifetime. I pussied out, mm. didn't fight like a man, and then after that... Oh, my God. Oh no, my God. No, 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 he's going oh. for it. Oh, he's going to get a point deducted, surely. Oh, no whoa. way, no way. Go on, go on. Oh, oh. Oh. Dylan Dennis is swinging for the coaches. Oh, my God, what's going it's on It's all here? kicking off right now. After after <laughs> six rounds of not wanting to throw punches, <laughs> Dylan Dennis is throwing punches. What a Jake big... Wait, in there. Look at this shit, bro. Oh, Dylan, <laughs> there's about 80 people he's in the ring right now, lads. He's an absolute Gordon. idiot. Can I say one thing? Did you see when Logan swung for Dylan when he went to the four? Oh, yeah. Fair play. Clip yeah. them. Yeah. Fair play. Clip them, as he should. As he should. But honestly... Oh my god, the security! The security are fighting each other as well! Oh my god, get these fucking juice heads out the fucking what ring. What is for going Christ's on, sake, man? What are these fucking idiots doing in there? <laughs> honestly, oh, thank you for the attention. There's one yeah, security yeah, yeah. guard. I swear to God, right, the other day, I'm going to do this on the guy. He was like this. He was like... And then you see him go... <laughs> like, they're desperate to be on camera, these fuckers. Mm. It's not about you, man. You're a bunch of yeah. fucking nobodies. Yeah, they were gagging for that. Get the fuck out of the, the ring, ring, man. Mm. Fucking hell. Well then... Logan Paul wins on points. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know if they'll 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 do it, but the, the the round wasn't actually out. But Dylan just the the shit is not even it's not good. <laughs> you know what I mean? You've literally come here to do nothing. No, but the thing is, you went for the takedown twice and you didn't land. Yeah, no. of them. <laughs> <laughs> mate, hey, you going for the choke as well, mate. Yeah. You missed that as well. Yeah, I mean, look, Logan dominated in, in the most easy fight of his entire life, so he can claim that uh, um, and laugh about it. But for Dylan, like, but what? You, you go away and say, you know what it is? I abused you and you've just done absolutely nothing. Yeah. Probably I mean, he's leaving with two black eyes, like, but yeah. He's still going off, by the way. What is going he's on here? He's still going off Because Dylan's nowhere near this. Dylan's on the other side of oh, the ring, mate. right? Dylan's probably out on the road home. He's laughing, thinking, look what I've created. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Listen, look at Jake Paul's going absolutely mad, oh, shouting at him. You know why? Because Jake Paul's <laughs> actually fucking a <laughs> lunatic, man. Uh, and I kind of agree with you on what you said earlier. I think... I think it would have been worse for him if Jake had been there in terms of just Jake understands leverage and use of the power uh, mm. that he's got. Whereas Logan, he's still, I don't think Logan has evolved as a fighter. And, um, and I think if, if Logan ever wants to do this properly, I think um, a proper camp like Jake has done mm. would be like, I know he's very close with his coach and stuff like that, but those arm punches were the reason why he wasn't able to generate the power to actually get him out of there. Um, to, give, to give Logan a little bit of credit when I was saying about maybe that bit of inner spite that I didn't see there, and people will look at this and think, why on earth are you giving him credit for this? When Dylan Dennis tried to take him down there and tried to give him the choke and he went to the ground, I was actually quite happy to see Logan, uh, Logan Paul throw that punch at him when he was oh, on yeah, the floor. Oh, yeah, he deserved it. Because not just because he deserved it, but just to show me, all right, yeah, that's a bit of character. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I think... But Jake Paul probably knee drops his skull there. Oh, <laughs> you yeah. You know what I mean? Jake Paul stabs him, pulls yeah. a knife out, just kills him <laughs> right there. And there. But for me... 
as a, as a combat sports fan, if I'm the UFC, any of them, mm. I wouldn't touch this moron with a barge pole. He literally no. went in there and did nothing. <laughs> Look, he's an idiot. Is, this is it, isn't it? Is it? That's, oh that's the first one. But do you know what, what he showed you, there? He, he kind of defended that takedown pretty well, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It shows yeah, his yeah, yeah, wrestling yeah, yeah. background, L L doesn't it? Uh, this one, this one. Amateur no, no, wrestler. Yeah. Tried to take him down. Oh. Look, he went up with the legs. <laughs> Yeah. I love the fact that Dylan actually threw punches <gasps> at the security at the security guard yeah. big time. Finally, you <laughs> actually act like a fucking man, you little bitch. I just don't get why there's 700 security guards. <laughs> they just all want the spot. Look, they're all fighting oh, each mate, other. They're embarrassing. Pathetic. These 40-year-old men juiced yeah. up trying to like, get their moment. It's like, Very, get out the fucking ring. Mate, that's like bouncers outside fucking prison. <laughs> 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 it's crazy. Never let me in, bastard. <laughs> But still, I can't lie, surely Logan doesn't feel like he's avenged his fiance. Well, I mean, he's won in easy fashion, but for sure, he would have wanted the knockout. I, I think he tried his best, mean. you know what I mean? He yeah. Put, he, try, he did try, he let his hands go, he just had nothing to work with. Mate, the guy wasn't throwing punches back. Like I, mm. when, I, when I said, oh, he needs to knock him out, I was like, yeah. Assuming Dylan Dennis would actually fight like a man. Yeah, but you'd still think, like, surely... <laughs> He'd be able to set up a knockout, even if it goes. I know what you're saying. Do you know what I mean? It's, you, it's still an element it, of it's, like it's so difficult when a fight is that negative. You, you've got to have something to work with. Um, but I believe Jake Paul would have been able to work something out. It there. still would have been hard. It still would have been a nightmare. But you that, would have been able to work something out there. That's the difference of Jake Paul. <laughs> I, I actually feel he dedicated his life to boxing and he's he gave it a good go to really improve. Whereas Logan's been in the wrestling. He's he's, he's done I, a lot. Even from the beginning, I never, I've never felt that he's really dedicated the time no, the way Jake no. Paul did. That's what I'm saying. As in, like we're doing all the WWE. There's no way there's, he could have a committed lot of like he needed to. Science being given right now not, over the not Dylan love for direction. Um, so yeah, I don't think this is. Uh... As well, I, I almost feel like Logan can't fully go for it. Uh, because he does actually get tired. Like, you mm. did see him breathing. And I feel like with that muscle, and I think WWE will be promo promoting, yeah, put on more muscle. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, and to be fair, if you're throwing that many punches and never having to defend yourself, like, it is a tiring it, yeah. six rounds. Yeah. Of punching, punching, it, punching. Mm. It's, it's the tension he carries. He never looks relaxed. He's so stiff when he, because it's all arms. You're like, mm -hmm. it's just your arm muscles rather than letting your core and legs. Is there even a winner? <laughs> Every uh, now and again, I used to spar with like MMA guys, right? Very, very hard to spar against them because mm. the feints you throw they don't react to in a way that a boxer should mm -hmm. and there were certain things in there like Logan actually invested in the body quite well with mm. the straight one twos and stuff mm. like that mm. yeah. any normal boxer when you do that lowers their guard yeah. to protect their body Dylan mm -hmm. Dennis keeps his guard up. Mm -hmm. So so you're not getting the uh, the benefit of doing that because normally <laughs> you're going to go bomb, bomb, and then come over the top with a hook or something yeah, like that. Yeah. But you're never getting that with Dylan Dennis. So mm -hmm. it's it's hard to look good against someone who doesn't box or act like a traditional boxer. It, it's, you're, you're right. Uh, some of my toughest spars have been against guys who are so unorthodox. You know what I mean? We, we, people, people like we, we got we got a, We got a bit of uh, Logan Paul, sorry, uh, telling us. He just said Logan Paul is a coward. Uh, Logan Paul is a coward. He, as in, he said Dylan, Dylan Dennis. Sorry, sorry. Logan said Dylan Dennis is a coward in that he, he was supposed to be this, that, and the other, and he's just come in there and done nothing, sort of thing. Um, I'm getting secondhand instructions here. Sorry, guys. Mm. Um, uh, we got pictures of KSI getting his uh, gloves wrapped with Tyson Fury double checking it. Yeah. So yeah. obviously, no. You know, normally a, a yeah. person of the other team does come and watch that, but. Tyson for Tyson. Isn't it we'll, interesting? They've sent Tyson. It's very clever. Yeah. Because you're kind of like, mm. oh shit, this guy is related to him. It's like, <laughs> oh, I mean? okay. Logan's just said he can't wait to start a family with Nina. Oh, oh, well then, that's lovely. And Nina was in the ring there. She's now gone out of the ring. Uh, she uh, was with him. Yeah, for fuck me. I mean, I mean it's not really, uh, it's such a fucking uh, clusterfuck uh, here. I'd, I'd <sighs> Where is Dylan at this moment? Where is he? Yeah. Prison. <laughs> <laughs> no. Are we going to see him again? Like, is, he, is he going to be involved in another fight again after that performance? No. Do we, do we think that? Nobody no. wants to see I, I don't want to see Dylan in anything. Like, what, what is the point? The thing is, though, is like, it's the build-up. He's sold pay-per-views, and it's actually that that matters. Yeah, but the, 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 here is the anomaly. Mm -hmm. Logan Paul is a special guy to share the ring with, and you can work with so many different things about him. He's leaving the ring with two busted-up eyes now, Dylan, with a sing, without a single punch thrown. He can't feel like a winner. No. He cannot. No. He knows he's an absolute little bitch, right? I bet he's so, dead. Like, it's, embar <laughs> it's embarrassing, but, but with... With with the dance partner that Logan is, Dylan had so much to work with. Yeah. You put Dylan in with average MMA guys who A, will hurt him because he'll have to strike with them. If he can't get them down, I mean, he's just, just another guy in mm -hmm. the MMA world. He is literally that. 
He's that's an why asshole, I think, but he's... That's why I think he, he'll look at this Misfits. If an offer comes, like, for him to fight, I mean, who else could he fight? I'll be surprised if Misfits take him on board. So well, let's, let's think, think about this. Let's think about okay. his track record, right? You didn't show up with 10 days notice for KSI because yeah. you pussied out of that fight. You then finally get a fight. You then act like an absolute pussy in the fight. Mm. It's not a good track record. No. For me, I'd be like, I'm, I'm good. We're good. You, you go and do your thing and let your 500 grand do wonders for you in the law courts where Logan Paul drains you of every last penny. Mm -hmm. that, that's a problem. Like he, because he's played all of this with like um, kamikaze consequences. So mm -hmm. when you're not thinking of the long term, you got to think. I want people to want to employ me. I want to be in the ring again. I want to have a sustained career. I don't know how he does that after this. Like he's got loads of attention, so that's one mm. good thing. Everything else is terrible. His in-ring performance was horrendous. He then pulled out with the fight before that. Mm. There's nothing about you that says you're a fighter. You're a jujitsu guy. And you're a good grappler, but you ain't a fighter. Mm. There's a difference, right? Yeah. Jiu-Jitsu guys have loads of respect for the martial arts, but you are not fighters. Mm. And when he goes, oh, it's easy, it's a half a fight. Mate, you can use the Conor McGregor lines all you want. You look like, do you think Conor McGregor would have done that? No. No way. Come on. We haven't seen Conor McGregor on screen not yet. yet. So, not yet. So, I thought he would have been there. Yeah, I, I thought he would have been really I was 99% sure he was going to be there from everything I've been told, but... Is he not there then? I bloody... I don't know. <laughs> they haven't shown him, and you know what, Miss... Uh, he might be there for the main event, I don't know. Uh, um, but, I mean, it was an easy fight, mm. you know what I mean? That's, easy fight. It was 100%. the easiest fight we'll ever watch, really. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, I wonder if there's, if it will now continue in any way, i.e. the social media abuse. Is it like, okay, yeah, you had your night, and now I'm going to just continue. If I'm Logan, I'll just block him and move on with my life. Like, what is there uh, left to do? No, no, no. You nothing. literally didn't throw a punch, mate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are we talking about? Yeah. If you, you had your chance, yeah. and you didn't want to know? It will yeah. continue because the lawsuit. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, and, and uh, that's the point, though, where... Logan, like, we're talking about a guy who's going to be a billionaire one day, or at least in the hundreds and hundreds of millions. I mean, he can just be like this and be yeah. like, you know what? I wasn't quite satisfied with that mm. fight. Let's just ruin his fucking life. And that might happen. Yeah. That might actually He happen. has the money to ruin this man's life. Yeah. Even, I mean, I'm going to be real. If he wants to get him killed, he's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, he fucking can. That, but yeah, he can. You know uh, what the ironic thing is there though. If Logan knocks him spark out, I'm not saying I don't know Logan, but maybe there's a chance there that you go fuck the lawsuit. Oh, Dylan might have actually won by letting him do that. Yeah, <laughs> if I, he'd actually I, fought I, and got knocked out, Logan might have won. That's quenched the thirst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. right now, it ain't enough. No, bro. I got I got more business plans for you, bro. Um, so Ooh. where do you think Logan Paul goes from here? Who do you think he fights next? I don't think he does. Do you think that's who? N not, not never again, but like, you know how <clears> we're <throat> looking at it now and we're going, who does Tommy fight if he wins? Who does KSI fight if he wins? Who's Jake Paul fighting yeah. next? I just never, because of the way, like, and this is a credit to Logan Paul because he's an unreal businessman and he's got so many fingers in mm. so many pies, mm. different business ventures. I just don't put him in the mix. Yeah. Like, I think he's someone that will come every now and again when there's a narrative and a storyline for him to dip mm. into, but I don't put him in the mix of like... No. Influence. I, I, I wouldn't put him in there with you know we were speculating who could be next mm -hmm. a lot of people around the table said maybe Tommy if, no no but I that performance yeah definitely not yeah he's just he has not evolved from a long time of of, of since we haven't seen him to he's, me yeah that was the that was the guy that faced KSI two in in Los Angeles yeah it's That's pretty much the same, the same as that yeah, guy. yeah 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 and um, I don't know it's, I'm really interested to see how the internet reacts to Dylan because. For a normal fight fan, you're mm -hmm. looking at a coward. You're looking at a man who didn't want to throw a punch. But I don't know if the internet on some level will still like him for that. I, it's I, weird. I feel as if people will not be bothered because I think what he'd done under the lead up, like, I don't, did, did anyone have any big expectations of him really? I don't mm. think they did, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you know the people that I were... I expect them to throw more than two punches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, the people that were loving him in the build up, were they going, he's a brilliant fighter? Or were they going, you fucking good at taking the piss out yeah. of these lot? Do you know what I mean? That's my so, so now I think that even those same people might go, yeah, he was shit, but he's still going to absolutely rinse you on Twitter. It's not good, but maybe they'll still give him the sort of props that they already are giving him because they weren't bothered about his fighting record. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I, the thing is, though, is I still think Dylan will have like a, a group of people that will follow him. 
Yeah, Throughout but, everything, because he's just got like a group of fans that just love him, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, so, so you, that will propel him into some level of fandom so did and awareness. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> he will. He'll still have an audience. It's like a guilty pleasure of just wha- mm. who's he going to troll next? What, what's he going to do next? But <laughs> not, 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 not for his fighting, just for what he does outside of the boxing, yeah. basically. All right. We have got KSI versus Tommy Fury up next. Guaranteed to be a fucking way better fight mm. <laughs> than Dylan <laughs> Tanister and no punches. Bloody hell. Um, this is going to be the opposite. This is going to be all out warfare. I think KSI is kill or be killed type of fighter. And people love those guys because you know you're guaranteed fireworks. And it, it's going to tell us a lot about where he is because what's been coming back at him in the previous misfits fights. The, the guys haven't been great punchers, lads. They're, and we're, uh, the defense is there to be questionable, but he's he's been able to get away with that because the punchers haven't been great. Everything's going to have to be on point. Perfect storm tonight. What do you reckon? I just can't see him beating Tommy Fury. Mm. Mm. Like, I, I, he's, he's never ever shown me anything yet. So I can't, like, like I say, we can't really rate him at this point in time. Um, What's your thoughts? I think, like, you know the thing you said there about the guys haven't been great punchers? Yeah, I completely agree with that. But you know what the main thing is? And we sort of touched on this earlier. No one he's fought so far has had a decent jab. And, like, when you look at Tommy Fury's jab, it's quite good from range. It's quite good up close when he's just chopping with it. It also comes off the back of a feint and a twitch a lot of the time. And these are little things that until you you sort of get in a ring, at any level, to be fair, you don't realise, like... How big it yeah. is, you, how big it is. You've watched Idris is. Virgo. Yep. He is one of the main sparring partners of KSI. Where do you rank Idris Virgo by comparison to Tommy Fury? He beat Aaron Chalmers last time, for those who uh, uh, might have remembered. Well, if I take a business hat off, that's the sensible next fight should Tommy Fury come in this if you're going to stay with the influence of boxing stuff. With the business hat on, you go Logan Paul and and pretty much probably that's it, to be honest, in terms of the big, big like household YouTube names or whatever. But in terms of actually matchmaking, and I'm saying like, okay, two blokes on a sort of bit more of a level playing field, bit more level experience, Idris Virgo's the next fight. The problem is this, and, and, and obviously... Me and you have spoke off camera about KSI sparring with Idris Virgo, and that's one of the main things that you've sort of not convinced me because you're not trying to do that, but you've made me think, okay, yeah, no, KSI's got a decent chance, and this is the fact that KSI's apparently done pretty well in sparring against Idris Virgo. But I will believe it when I see it. We haven't seen it. I get you. You have so, to, yeah, you have to see it. And, and I could see it in a minute, and then I could go, do you know what? No, those rumors are true. They're completely right. But until I see it, I just can't believe it. And the eye test to me is that I believe that Tommy Fury is a level above KSI. But I will cap it off by saying this. We just seen a fight, right, where obviously the level's a lot lower than the level of this fight we're about to see. But Dylan Dennis is a massive underdog in comparison to what Logan Paul is going into that fight. I personally believe that KSI is an underdog in comparison to where (coughs) Tommy Fury is going into this fight. Dylan Dennis showed no ambition to win in this fight. KSI will not lose this fight on points, probably. Like, if he loses, he's probably going to go out on his shield. Because KSI, even if he thinks, this bloke's way better than me, all right, I'll throw the kitchen sink at him. And that's what you've got to give him respect for, fearless in that in that aspect. So I think um, the, the Jake Paul game plan against Tommy was to uh, outbox him. And I think that's what lost him that fight almost from the get-go. Like, you weren't going to do that. And I, I don't think that, that he was hoping to land that big shot. But he did land some left, good left hooks, and I've looked at that. Um, but I think KSI, whatever his level is, and I think it's very hard to tell because of the competition, I do think he, his game plan will be, I'm going to go in there and really put it on him and make it a fight. Not It's not going to be a boxing match. And um, we're going to learn a lot about... Um, Fury and uh, KSI. Tommy Fury currently looking like Kenny from South Park with this photo. <laughs> um, shout out to uh, the Furies. Big John's coming out. Uh, luckily, he's got his trousers up, um, which was we seen his arse uh, the other day. Give it, bit, time. Bit Give it time. Bit <laughs> Now, this, I believe, is going to be a very different atmosphere to what Tommy faced in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Right? This is going to be loyal sidemen, KSI fans... And if he was rattled at all by yesterday and is a bit confused as to why KSI's got so much confidence, this could potentially get inside his head when he steps out there and feels 
the booze. Mm. Mm. Everyone in his hometown hating him. Like it's going to be a lot. Be what it looks like? I, I reckon so, mate. It's not. Tommy Fury doesn't have loyal fans. Nah, no one gives a shit in the real boxing community, whereas this house is packed now by KSI. It's fans. KSI fans, bruv. Yeah. You know what I mean? And do you know what's mad? When you fought KSI? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, well, of course, Swear bruv. <laughs> Swear course. Down. This is mad, but you were the hero, mm. and by a mile, everyone was cheering you and booing him. That's mm -hmm. the power you have. Mm -hmm. That is like that was when it hit me. I was like, fuck, 8,000 people cheering me. 100%, mate. Comes all, out. I can't lie, bruv. When I meet my audience on the street, wherever, like the, the connection I have with my oh, audience yeah. is fucking unreal. And oh. I, I believe it's because like I've just been so open. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? With ups, downs, all of it. You know what I mean? Like my, my, my supporters are real. Do you think you'll ever come back? 100%. Yeah? 100%. Love it. 100%. Bruv. Do you know what? That's the what? thing I'm waiting for. Like, mm -hmm. uh, there, there's a there's a moment in Misfits in the future, I hope, yeah. where we get the return of Joe yeah. Weller. And I mean, you'll pack out a fucking... Without a doubt, yeah. man. Without a doubt. Whether it's Wembley Arena. Man, I'd love to do it in bloody Eastbourne. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have the, 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 the stadiums. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But yeah, man, 100%. Any yeah. names 100%. in the hat? Any names, bruv. I'd go from... Any of them. I'm going to be at 165 pounds. So that's like the hot division. But I think mm -hmm. someone that can talk on the mic... Mm. I want someone that's going to like, you know, I want to create some excitement. Yeah. Bazinga. Ooh, interesting one. I, I think, think he's in shape these days. Yeah, he's Can in he really? shape. Huh? Can he fight? We don't, I mean, I, I don't, I haven't seen him fight, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that he'd be trim and yeah, man. ready to go he, for He's it. been talking about like wanting to make his boxing debut. Um, I think that can make total sense. I think, well, I was going to say swarms before this event, but. <laughs> you know Ed I mean? Matthews. <laughs> I think Ed Matthews, why not? Deji. What about uh, Jay Swingler? Jay Swingler. The thing is, I get on with Jay Swingler. I know you are so similar to him. I text mm. him. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. we're mates, and it's sort of like, you know, you. I, I'm not really about like faking anything yeah. in terms of like, oh, let's let's have this beef or anything like that. Like, I'd want someone that I can go, right, yeah, let's fucking go. Like, I don't give a fuck about hurting you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And Deji then, one makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Deji makes a lot of sense. Um, he's chatted a lot of shit, needs to pay for it. <laughs> Um, yeah, man, like any of them, I'd take them all. I, I think it would be great for us to see you back there because, uh, again, the man you were, you weren't even a man, you were a boy a when boy, you fought man. KSI. 100%. You've had so much uh, life experience since then, mm -hmm. and I think uh, everyone would love to see you get back in there and show yeah. the real you because yeah. you were fighting without any good coaching, any experience, and KSI had Vidal Riley. Mate, in it. Mate, in it. I and remember that... saying to someone, if Joe had had Vidal Riley, that oh. could have been a completely different fight, right? Do you know, bro, bro I, I I never learnt to jab. Oh, I, mate, I was mate, never to, mate, mate, it was it actually was, mental. It, was, it actually blows my mind. You had a big T, basically, <laughs> who, like, just a boxer's eyes guy, right? Yeah. It wasn't, uh, but look, this is what um, growth is all about. I'm looking forward to seeing it, man. It's going to be Without exciting. Doubt. But tonight, it's not about me. We've got Tommy, Tommy Fury. Fury and KSI. Tommy Fury! He's a fighting man. <laughs> the Furies are the best fighters in the world. <laughs> yes, we're going to find out. He's a machine. Oh, wow. Uh, Tommy Fury's got backup dancers here. Yeah? <laughs> um, didn't expect that tonight. Halloween themed, do you know? Oh, yeah. Brian. Brian, the, the thing I love the most about that clip of John Fury shouting that in the press conference, we were talking about this before, innit? What did you say? In the press conference, when John, Shuri, uh, when John Fury was shouting, the Furies are the best fighters in the world, <laughs> I was watching the press conference and I thought, oh, no one said anything about Tommy Fury in about two, three minutes, and John Fury's sort of sitting there. Right on cue. <laughs> <laughs> the Thinking no one's up. mentioned me in a while. The Furies are the best fighters in the world. Yeah, <laughs> legend. <laughs> yeah, I, look, John's wild, but he does he does bring entertainment. Don't yeah. he? Fuck me. Uh, he's a bit like me, old man, who's actually watching. Shout out, Dad. Appreciate you. Shout out, Dad. Um, he just messaged us saying, "I take it you're not a fan of Dylan Dennis." Um, <laughs> 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 uh, but no, I, this is it. Uh, Fury looks stone faced right now. Um, he doesn't look nervous. To be fair to him, looks like he's in there to do a job. Um, and our favourite security guard is making sure he's got his <laughs> <laughs> sleeves rolled right up and is in, oh. in shot. That's the thing, mate. When I saw this bloke at the public workout, I, I, like oh, he really? looked fucking Double. sharp. Man. And I was literally like, hang about. And then KSI comes out and mm. just does like, like, like 25 minutes of ladders, bloody hopscotch. Mm. I was just sort of like... I. <sighs> Like, like your brain does just think like this could actually be a, a uh, job uh, 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 the thing is this is why we're relying on KSI's coaches only yeah. they have seen the sport yeah, man. only they can sign off on this I can make all the breakdowns I want and go well if this happens and this happens yeah, yeah, it yeah. doesn't matter they are paid to know mm, and yeah. if you're KSI and you've got all the money in the world and you don't need to take a fight like this you've got to look at them and go I can afford to have three or four more fights should I do it yes or no and they've said you're ready now so on tonight 
there, but I know what they fucking signed up for, yeah. and I assume that they do. But when I watched uh, Fury hitting the the heavy bag in the uh, the run up, oh my god! Is Kazai in, in a, a Lamborghini? Lamborghini. <laughs> He's coming out the Lamborghini. <laughs> Lamborghini. I bet it, it'll be a remix. Bitch, I know you see it'll it. be a remix <laughs> of Lamborghini. What a legend! Oh, this is epic. He's got a forty thousand pound gum shield in <laughs> with diamonds in that. Bit. Mate, it's look at him. It has oh, metal, bro. mate, no one fucks with this. AJ, sit down. <laughs> Your fireworks mean nothing. Nah, bro. No way. This man is in a Lamborghini. I wouldn't be surprised if it fucking flies. <laughs> <laughs> He's Prince Nassim. This is crazy, No bro. way. That Lamborghini looks tough, man. Oh, yeah. oh. oh, he's getting out of it. Is he getting out of it? The Lambo doors are up. Yeah. Oh, I want to hear the, what song it is. Like, if is it, it is Lamborghini. Is yeah. it Lamborghini? Can someone, can someone confirm? Um, we're, um, yeah, we're... Uh, We've got KSI looking around, looks cool, calm, doesn't look like he's about to fight one of the Fury clan. <laughs> um, I, 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 he knows something. I don't know what he knows, but I, I believe in it. I put money on him uh, to win. Uh, genuinely How much have, money? Like 50 quid. <laughs> oh, but, okay, okay. But I still thought, you know what, fucking hell, he's, he's a mate, and I wouldn't have the platform I do without gigs. his help. Is that gigs? Fucking gigs. He's got no gigs singing way. them out. Oh, I want to hear it. I wish we could hear. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's in that, um, like, a lime green uh, jacket there. Uh, I like those colours, the green and black. It's cool. That's for the Glowberry Prime. Yeah. Do you know what's weird? They sent Prime send me, whenever they launch new stuff, they send me a batch. Yeah, yeah, they're time. cool like that, but right? But I'm just like... I I just don't get it because I thought they like there was beef. So I'm just like, I don't know. Yeah, it I must don't. be that bad. You're still getting the goods. It's fine. <laughs> I'll tell you. Yeah, we get some as well, actually. Pretty, uh, it's all right. Like, I, I like Prime. Because, <clears> yeah, I mean, I am like, I'm calm. Like, if JJ was here, I'd be absolutely fucking calm. But the thing with you and him, though, is it, mm. it's just this, like, it's kind of like brothers, right? It's like, it's sibling rivalry type <laughs> stuff. Like, it could always kick off if it's it it. Yeah, do you know what it is? Like, <laughs> there is an element of, like, where it's like, in his, in his group, he's like number one, he's like top, top dog. In, where, in my thing, I'm top dog. Mm. And it's like we come, if we're near each other, it's like, well, it's two top dogs. like, And it's always that. Whereas I think in, in reality, if we sat down and was like, sorry, mate, like, are you good? Like, how's it going? Like, no, I think, you know, I think there's, fine. A, there's an element of you, right, where you have a problem with people who think that they're a certain level and you love bringing them down a peg or two. What? I think that, well, like, if, there is obviously an, an, an element of like arrogance that he displays. He probably thinks I display an arrogance. Mm. In, in, it's in, a clash, in, isn't it? There's a isn't clash, it? 100 <laughs> It is a, bro, bro, do you know what I mean? It's the only true rivalry that's ever actually, I feel, been on this platform. Obviously, you've got Jake Paul and KSI. But that rivalry that we've had, like, mate, the, it's, it's fucking, it, mate. It, it made it. Like, if it wasn't for what you, and I remember before the fight, I, I was on camera and I was like, this is going to do 20 million views mm -hmm. and, and loads of people uh, afterwards it did the 20 million views on YouTube. Yeah. People are coming up and going, how did you know? And I went, because I fucking know these yeah, two, man. Course. Fucking megastars. But yeah, I think the Jake has to be next. No matter what happens, yeah, yeah, yeah. win, lose, or draw, the fans are quenching uh, for that and uh, they need to be given it. Um, JJ is about to um, enter the ring. Tommy is uh, getting um, the rub from uh, Big John. <laughs> We were right about that rubbing thing. Yeah. Someone's getting a rub and they're worried. Like he washed his hands after yeah. slapping his ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. <clears throat> yeah, this is they got the prime bottle on the fucking Lamborghini. I didn't see that before. Jesus. Um, and the legacy <laughs> tattoo across the back of KSI, who says this is all about legacy. That's what he does everything for. And um, and Fury is kind of doing it for legacy, family legacy, following in the footsteps. Um, and it's going to be interesting because Loza pointed out a great point earlier about the amateur, like the, the minor amateur background Fury had. And the fact that, yeah, he'd been around boxing the whole time, but he'd never really been dedicated. We might see Fury go up a few levels between fights here. We, you know, because now he's actually mm. applying himself. I hope so. You, you would expect so because yeah. the pressure from the previous fight, he, everyone's looking for improvement. So mm -hmm. surely... Oh God, we got the fucking national anthem again. God. You know what the funny thing is though? Like we look at the amateur career and the amateur pedigree of Tommy Fury, which there's not, there's not that much there. But when he was first fighting Daniel Bot Botazinski or whatever his name is and, 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 and for obviously journeymen that weren't throwing nothing back I was thinking okay well we're, we're seeing Tommy Fury we're seeing him under the lights he's dealing with the occasion we're not learning nothing from the fights he fought a guy called Jordan Grant right 
2 and 0 the at the time. Lad, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah two, a, 2 and 0 at the time has now been in there with like Ben Whitaker yeah, and, yeah. and a few other fighters and whatnot. Got stopped, albeit. But I look at that, and that was a bit of a back and forth fight where he had to show a bit of heart. And I thought you should match him up with opponents like that that he's still a favourite against, but are going to come with a bit more ambition because Jordan Grant, when he fought him, was two and zero at the time. He's now six and four or something, right? Mm -hmm. He's two and zero at the time. I thought you should match him up against people like that because that's actually going to develop him quicker. And then when you look at it and you look at Jordan Grant, you go, "You're not a million miles off a misfits fighter." And actually, now I'm looking at it and I'm going, Jake Paul, KSI, Jordan Grant, the fight before that, maybe, if you, if you count that one. They are fights that I do think are going to mm. continue to develop Tommy Fury. I don't mm. think they're fights that it's like Tommy Fury was doing his pro thing and he stopped learning and stopped developing because he's now gone misfits. Like, I actually think that the likes of Jordan Grant and then going over to Jake Paul and things like that, they're, they're a level up a little bit. I get you. And he's continuing to develop. So I don't think it's a thing of like... The amateur experience is out the window and now there's nothing there for Tommy Fury and he's just only doing this because I think he's still growing as a fighter and learning a bit. And when we say about seeing him on the pads, one other thing is for a very muscle-bound fighter, when we saw him on the pads, we were saying he looked explosive, he looked sharp. One thing to me is he looked very loose. He was throwing that left hook to the body, left hook to the head, followed by an elbow, albeit. But, you know, like it, I actually thought he looked loose on the pads and looked, looked quite sharp. So well, uh, One thing I would say is you're, you're fighting guys who are getting premium-level coaching. They're paying for the the best coaching mm -hmm. right so then they're not just like a lot of the lads who who tommy would have been fighting before might have had part-time jobs Stro like it is hard being a boxer Loz has told me all about it time and time again like to to spin all the plates in life and then get good coaching it's really hard so actually you'll probably not fight people who have got more time and energy and dedication who've got their whole lives perfectly set up for boxing than a ksi or a jake paul everything's the best the nutrition the training the coaching mm. Everything. So um, I think there is a level where it, it, it is a test for Tommy and that this won't be useless to him if he wants to be a professional world champ one day, if that's the goal. But it's the question of, do you really want that or you're just content to keep fighting celebrities? I, I think we'd all probably sit around this table as much as I really like Tommy Fury. I think he's a really nice bloke from what you see of him. Yeah, I think we'd all probably admit that he's not going to be world level unless something drastically changes. And when we look at the past history of fighters, things have happened and that has happened. But what is the sort of level of him as a pro? Is it southern area or do you think he could go f it, a little bit further than that? Well, he is still only very early in his career. So like I've, I've, if you look at like so Callum Smith or somebody or Rocky Fielding or people like that within the... Callum Johnson. Callum Johnson within the first two, three, even four years. Mm. Callum Johnson, I think for a good four years, mm. done absolutely nothing. And he didn't always look that great. And then look who he fought. He fought yeah. Berbatev and put him down. I know he got, he got mm. beat, but... That's world. That's the cream of the crop. Rocky Fielding, to be so, fair, is a really good example. There. Exactly. So you can't really judge Tommy Fury at this stage because because of his lack of amateur experience. Um, but like you just said earlier on, the guys that he's fighting is probably in that parallel to what he would be fighting if you, even if he was just fighting journeyman in the pro game. I think it's a little bit better. So, I question, think it's a little bit better. Question, yeah, yeah, no, ambition. I think you're right. Yeah. I, I got a question. Uh, actually, I've got a question for you first, Joe. Yeah. KSI is getting his name announced. Mm -hmm. You've been in there with him. You know yeah. the guy personally very well. Yep. What do you, how, how is he? Bruv, right. when I was across the ring from him, no fucking joke. I was, I was going, you're nervous. You're so... He looked fucking... He was shitting himself. And he was. Like, he, he genuinely was. And what even do you think when, now? And now, I think he's got to a point where he goes, if I uh, just 100% believe and go legacy. In his head, he's going legacy, mm. legacy, legacy in his head. And believe and believe. Then he's exuding it. But at that point, mate... I, he wasn't confident. When I've spoken to the likes of, well, I've heard, I don't know if it was, whether it's Cal Freeze or someone, but they were like, the morning of that fight, he didn't eat breakfast, he couldn't eat, he was so like sheepish, he was so nervous. But I think now he's got to this point, he's figured it out. If I go a wholeheartedly belief, and even if we, we see it sometimes as delusion, but if he goes, without a doubt, no question, I've got this, I've got this, then it works and it has paid it's off. Very it's very impressive. It's if, it's when it doesn't work that it's going to be like, okay, where does he go from there? Here we are. They're, uh, if it ever doesn't They're work. about to touch gloves, or they may not touch gloves. KSI has uh, dipped his head. He's sort of bending over at the waist there, looking up at Tommy Fury. Tommy is looking down. Neither man looks in any way in doubt of a victory here. Um, so there is delusion in one of them. We're going to find out who it is. KSI, Tommy Fury, True Jordy YouTube channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Appreciate everyone watching. Here we go. Round one. I've got a feeling he's going to run at him like Anthony Taylor did. I wouldn't be surprised. 
Ooh. He says he's got a game plan and he doesn't need heart because the game plan will work. And he's doing the bouncing on his uh, toes sort of thing. And he throws a big overhand right hand. Oh, a little slip there in Tommy. And KSI ties up with Tommy. We're going to see if there's a big strength difference here. There's a lot of added um, size on Tommy by this point of uh, the rehydration. He's probably over 200 pounds now after weighing in at 183. And uh, KSI is looking really loose. Um, he does look loose, doesn't he, lads? Yeah, that's the thing. Like this, this, this strange sort of like bouncing thing that he does. It's very odd. It is so unconventional. And like it, that, yeah. it's it, these early rounds that that could throw Tommy off. If it, it's when yeah. he adjusts. He's a lot like the can. guy MVP who also trains at Shoot Fighters, mm. um, who's a um, um, like kickboxing expert, uh, MMA fighter, bare knuckle as well. Oh, oh, big right hand from JJ. See, that's what I'm saying. Hundred percent. That is it. It's yeah. that, he's throwing he him off. He covers distance quickly with, yeah. that, with yeah. his he launch, speed. He launches himself out so quickly, it's very impressive. My, my worry is, is he's not throwing anything else. It's 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 sort of the mm. same shot over, and you, you just don't want to become predictable. But yeah, it, it, it did land there. Yeah, like. that is the shot, man. That is it. Mm. That is the one. He's is very he deceiving just... the way he covers that ground. No, that is, was, that was a mm. massive amount of uh, space covered yeah. in one go. Oh. It's, a, it's a pound shop Fury versus Wilder. It, it, it kind of is, yeah. Um, and he's not biting on the fence of uh, Tommy here, really. Uh, Tommy's trying to sort of uh, do the, uh, you know, the Tyson Fury style. Ooh. But he, he, KSI is, is looking okay mm. in there. He's looking composed. He's covering distance well. And he's not overawed by this. It's, it's uh, you know, it, it, the fight isn't really started properly yet. No. Oh, there's a good oh. left, uh, there's a good left hook landed by Tommy sure. Fury. It's that overhand. I mean, oh, can we it? said about we said about an influencer boxing. You go where the money's at. One thing I'm looking at straight away. Tommy looks massive compared to KSI. <laughs> oh, back of the head shot oh, from he's... Tommy Fury, and KSI is um, complaining about it. I don't know if we might see a point deducted here, but he's complaining to the referee, saying, "What the fuck was that?" He's milking it. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think that was anything bad. I, I, you never know with them um, headshots, like. But I mean, not that it's the back of the head, and that's obviously a different story, but. KSI did throw an uppercut early on in the in in the clinch when they were holding. So we'll have a look at it here. Oh, that was a oh, yeah, yeah, back of the head shot from yeah, Tommy two Fury. On the back of the wow. head. Yeah. Nah, it Fair was enough. two. That's a point deduction usually, isn't it? Yeah, well, you get a warning sometimes first. early on. Do you know what it's like? It's like putting a two, uh, not a two footed bit. It's like putting a big challenge in first yeah. second I'm when the match kicks off. I've genuinely just seen a girl with her boobs out and, and her nipples covered <laughs> by the. Really? Can we rewind or? KSI still employing that um, that long range game, but t Tommy's covering distance yeah. and he's locking up with him a lot. You know, Tommy said that he's gonna he's gonna step on the pace. He's gonna get him out of here earlier. I think that Tommy could do with getting his jab going here a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he's not uh, he's not got yeah. the jab going. Do you know what it is? It's because KSI's out of distance. Yeah, he, he's like that out. Yeah. Or he's completely yeah, 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 yeah. There's and, no mid-range fighting. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That is what KSI does very well. Yeah, it's actually you know. It's problematic for Tommy. He's he, Tommy doesn't look like he yeah. did against Jake Paul. He, he no. looks like he's struggling to figure him out a little yeah. bit. Yeah, J Jake Paul is nowhere near as erratic, and I mean that in a good way, yeah. as KSI. Yeah, and I, I said Jake Paul was more predictable than KSI, and mm. that alone gives KSI an advantage. It doesn't mean it changes the outcome, but it's, it's a tougher style to figure out. It's not like, this is a boxer. I've seen what boxers do before. It's... It's more like MVP, right? Um, and when when, Jake, uh, when JJ lands, he, and there's another back of the head shot, another and the one, referee yeah. is come. That referee is a bit old to be in there with these. Oh, what's guys. going on? Oh, end of the round. Oh, end of the round. He's, he's only thrown that backhand. All he needs to be doing is moving off to his right uh, to move away from that KSI mm -hmm. big backhand. That's all he needs to be doing. Mm. And if he can get that jab on the way, in, that's all he needs. That up jab that he throws. Mm. I think if. You, a KSI's team must be happy with that. I mean, he didn't look completely overawed. No, got a round in, probably landed a decent shot. No one really won the round. You could argue that KSI got that the yeah. first right hand early in the round. Was that, that was the best punch? Yeah, KSI yeah, 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 got the best punch. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I thought give that there was KSI. two meaningful shots in the whole fight. K, uh, in the whole round, sorry, KSI's probably been the better one with that overhand right. And then there was the left, left, left hook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah uh, good first round. Uh, you know, if you're worrying about the level that Tommy should be at. Um, Didn't yes, I, had it, right. thought. I mean, well, yeah, what, quite, I, what I would ask myself there is who's exerted more energy there, and I would definitely well, do say. You know the problem when you're throwing from that far out is landing on a target as you're traveling that much distance. Like, you, it, it's not the same as it when you're fighting in your comfort zone. And if Tommy starts to time it, he might get caught coming mm. in. 
He's looking for that uppercut, I would have seen. Uh, now, go oh, yeah, there we oh, go. That's, that's, that's the right goal. hand. I've got a feeling oh, we're going to see Sam from Tommy in There's that round. timing of that. Yeah, that's what he's doing. He's waiting for KSI to lunge in, and that's what I'm saying. Like, it's early that KSI needs to catch him because I feel like Tommy will figure it out. If not, there'll be John in the, in the corner going, this, that, this, like, who's also seeing what's going on. I know I've said it, but to people watching influencer boxing, and if that's all they've seen, they won't realise as much. But to people that watch boxing week mm. in, week out, this size difference is massive. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. It's, it's borderline. It's, it's, it's like, like a no, super no, middle against the light middle. It's um, a weird division or two nearly. Yeah, it's, you know it's I mean? a super middle. Oh, he's taking a point. Is it's one point deducted from Tommy Fury in round two. Wow. So potentially we might have round one to KSI and another round to KSI. That is huge yeah. at this point. Wow. 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 What was he oh. thinking doing that there? This is like the wow. music thing. Do you know when you're the big name, you can use the influence by complaining. Normally, the ref would say, just be quiet, that's my job. But he's got that much influence. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Oh, oh! It's a big right hand from KSI! Oh, and Tommy's <laughs> stunned, and KSI is wailing on him. And this is, this is the game plan. Whoa. Yeah, that was a decent little right yeah. hand. I think I got overexcited, but fuck it. <laughs> I don't care. That was decent. I mean, oh, fucking hell. Mate, KSI's doing better, man. I don't, if Tommy's struggling to figure it out. Like, he can't close the distance. Look, KSI's maintaining that distance so well. Yes, he really is. And what the, the, the worry is, is you don't want to get trapped in the corners. But when mm -hmm. Tommy does close the distance, KSI clinches up, works his way out, and then gets and that it, distance But the back. way where he play, puts his head is very intelligent from KSI. Puts it round the shoulder. That means that if, you know, he's protecting himself and if Tommy does throw it, it's going to be back of the head. The, the, wor the, the worry is, is if KSI gets a little bit tired. I don't think that's he, a lot yeah. of energy. We're close. He is distance. carrying that extra weight as well. But I believe, look, look, uh, he walks around normally heavier than this. And I mm. think KSI, he's got them genes. We've seen it before. He, he you know, he's got the ability to, to last the and he, to dig deep. The problem is Tommy's allowing him that room mm. to lunge in. He mm -hmm. should be getting him much closer on the edge of range and using his jab. He's just giving him all that mm. distance it's to generate weird. the power. such a good jab, Tommy, Throw, and yet you're not even using it. And that's him like, throwing a straight jab to the body as well rather than just go to the head every time where he can come underneath and then hold you. Yeah, I just don't know why he's not putting the pressure, that front foot pressure. Credit to KSI, he's, do, he's yeah. doing good here. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. I'll tell you what my worry is from a, from a sort of audience aspect here is since Tommy had that point deducted, I've seen him go to the back of the head again. I think I think we could see another point deducted if he uh, keeps that uh, up. Yeah. And it's hard for him because I've, I've been in that situation where it's like... Oh, he's landed again there, you know. He's doing the right thing, Tom. He's trying to move to his right and move mm. away from it, but he's still not quite and getting there's another the back of the head shot from Tommy Fury. Mm. I don't know how he keeps doing this. Is he going to get another point deducted? Um, and, and, and we're at the end of the f second round, and one thing we do know now, one thing we found out already is... KSI versus Jake Paul is competitive. Yeah, yeah. Oh. we already know that now. Like we yeah. couldn't really tell from the Joe Fournier. Yeah, like, oh, how good are these guys? We now know you've been in there, and whatever happens, we know that's a good I, I, Do you know what's crazy as well is I feel like KSI has unlocked a new boxing style that I think you could see implemented by professionals. <laughs> this thing, <laughs> bruv, it's crazy. I, you've never seen this this skippy thing that he does yeah. like, way out of range yeah. and then launch himself in. Wet, like Too quick for you to be like, like mate, it's, it works. And it's working. But there, there are always around it, but Tommy Fury is, oh. is not aware of it He's yet. not experienced enough mm. to do it at this point it, in time. Yeah. But would, you, would you argue that KSI is winning the first two rounds? I think with the point deduction, you would. I think... But <laughs> this was a decent... Wow, oh, that was a clean right can, hand. Can I say something that you might think is a little bit controversial here on the first two rounds, but I actually think the tactics that Tommy's implementing aren't that bad. I actually think that over the course of... What is this? Eight rounds? Six. Is it only six? Yeah. Cre credit to the audience, by the way. Shout out to you guys. You're voting and uh, you've said that KSI is winning the first two rounds. So you've spoken. Hit that like button. We're in for the third round now. And uh, Tommy is um, looking a little bit more, a little bit more frantic, a little bit more purposeful. He's trying to match him. He's trying to match what he's Again, doing. Again, back of the head. Tommy, yeah. Tommy needs to jab to the body because that will open things up a lot. He needs to stick to his own tactics and try to, instead of trying to do what Jake uh, yeah. KSI yeah. is doing. You know what? Playing another man's game is never a good idea. No. Well, that, that's that's a sign that KSI's win. He's drawn him, drawn him into his type of fight. Jesus, this is great. Yeah, this is mental. Come on, son. I just I just worry when he is jumping in. If it, you know, that's a lot of energy um, and a, a lot of force to be moving with. And if you get met with a shot, it then increases the power of that. Right. So you just got to hope that uh, Tommy can't. Uh, timing, but right now this isn't beautiful boxing. No. And I said 
you're not going to box him. You're going to fight him in my prediction video. And, that, and that's exactly what we're doing. We're seeing a very abnormal fight even. Mm. And we're all talking about uh, Tommy's jab. Where's it been? Non-existent. Because mm. he's out of range. Yeah. He's either well out of range or he's completely inside. And, and they've taken, they've nullified the jab. Credit to his team, like, uh, for doing that. Yeah, and then when he gets in range, tie up. Yeah. That's what it is. It's be well out of range and then tie but up. Show them Tommy, left up. And he clinches again. Something you can do sometimes, and it's not a necessarily a positive thing to do, but when you feel like you're a level above someone and they're trying to do a certain tactic with you, say, for example, they're walking you down, trying to fight with you, and you know you're better on the back foot mm. against them, you sometimes think, come on in, let's have it your way. Let's have yeah. it your game. And it's a macho thing. It's There's an ego jab, thing. That was the jab, though. It's the jab landed there. Mm. KSI wasn't able to do anything. He needs to use that jab. The, but then the, the reason was, though, is KSI got caught in the corner, right? He, um, he needs to. He KSI needs to make sure he's not... Stuck there. I feel like when he throws that second jab, rather than actually aiming it, he needs to throw it in anticipation down because he knows KSI's head's Where going. Where he's going to be there. Yeah. yeah. He also kind of stepped in too deep and he smothered himself. He couldn't get anything else off. Mm. Tommy seems to be coming back into it more in, in, in this round. Not that he hasn't been in it, but but he seems to be landing a bit more in this round. KSI because, breathing very heavy now as well. Because yeah. that is the thing. Uh, well, this is the other thing. Like, as fit as you are, no matter what, we, we can't doubt that Tommy, uh, for a lot of the times, on the front foot here. How long can oh, that last for? That yeah. bouncing style. Yeah. yeah. I've seen good pros that can't keep that up for six threes. Six you know what I, mean? I must admit, the one thing that always impressed me throughout all of the, the, the fights with KSI, when he fought Logan, it was like that, I'm willing to dig deep. I, I, I'm like, and he, he has got an amazing natural engine. Mm. You know, some people are just born with Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, yeah, he just yeah. has that. Um, it's that desire to win, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, 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 nice. Okay. High up, yeah. Through that low that time. So KSI went and, and, and threw a low um, a right hand and Tommy did catch him afterwards, but not not enough. And right now, Team KSI must be thrilled with how this is going. All right, you're not guaranteed the win so far, but it's very competitive. Yes. It's a tricky fight. It's awkward. It's uncomfortable. Tommy can't be happy with that. No. There ain't no boxing clinic going on right now. No. No. John Fury must be shitting his kegs. Yeah. He said yeah, he yeah. would have him within, within two rounds. Within three, within three rounds at the most. Yeah. It changed a few times, but the bottom line is, is yeah. Tommy Fury again is, is in there with an influencer and to quote Big John, if we get to a decision, even if we win, we've lost. He said that before the Jake fight. Mm. They swept that under the cover, yeah. uh, under, the, under the carpet quickly. Yeah. But he's doing it again. Like Tommy Fury's level is, um, to be fair, is is a professional boxer's level. But he can't be happy with being in there with Not influencers multiple Not times now and, and struggling at times. Hundred percent. And you've got to give it to KSI here. I can't like emphasize enough. Like this is a geezer that's gone from being like realistically a fat idiot on a couch that plays FIFA, <laughs> like by well, being fucking. <laughs> Whoa, well, that's fucking realistic. No, but that's what he and was. Yeah. And mate, now you've got him against one of the Fury that's clan. A good left hook from Tommy Fury. And he's absolutely like, mate, he's, he, he could win this fight 100% from what I've seen so far. So apparently the audience uh, watching had round three for Tommy. Yeah. Um, so going off our audience, shout out to them, hit that like button. It's 2 1 potentially to KSI, well, or it may be 2 yeah. 1 to Fury. There's, there's a points deduction now. Oh, that, yeah. That jab is... So if, if it's 2-1 it. to KSI, but a point deduction, that Three means KSI one. is up by two points. <sighs> yeah, potentially. Um, I must admit, like... If we go to the judges, it'll be very interesting how that goes. I mean, pr we've still got a few rounds left, so, you know. Good job from JJ. That jab's starting to stop him in his truck now. Yeah, I, I think JJ's tiredness is catching up with the highly athletic style he's, he's relied on. Yeah, like, you it's can, a lot of you acceleration. Can, you can see it. why he only wanted six rounds, because I think if this was eight... I think it would get to a point got, where he the tech, would... The, the longer it goes on, the less athleticism matters. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. That, um, that, that, made, that was... But to be fair to JJ, he gave up the you know the, a, a lot of experience yeah, yeah, he yeah, gave up yeah. size like there 100%. is no way JJ should even be in there with no, Tommy no, Fury no. in a professional sense There's no, none of these influencers technically should be in there with professionals you know but fucking that's what's so amazing about this really I'm just worried that KSI looks a little more tired um, now yeah but he's still hanging in there um, yeah and there's a lot of clinching a lot of clinching yeah a bit too much actually yeah like if if you're wanting a beautiful boxing match, you're not getting it. But obviously, Team KSI will be delighted because it's there's no thunderous jabs. Um, yeah, it kind of looks like all. Yeah, yeah. If it, yeah, the referee is tapping them on the shoulders, separating them.
Oh, oh, a little bit of a hook there. Did that land? It's hard to tell. It's so scruffy and scrappy, isn't it? Yeah, and this is what KSI had to do, really, not make it a boxing match. Oh, like, he had Anthony you know I mean? Taylor the shit out of yeah, this. Yeah, I mean, 100%. without a doubt. Without and he's doubt. doing that. Yeah, man. It, he's still managing to stay on his... Oh, 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 oh right hook doesn't land. Tommy looked like he might have hurt JJ a little bit. And he, yes, no. ducks when, that when Tommy's stepping in with that jab every single time. He needs to either throw that jab or feint that jab. Take a step back and he'll have a bit of room to work. But he's front foot heavy and he's going in every time with it. There. Oh, uh, yeah. He's smothering himself. It's like every time. <sighs> you know what I mean? It's because he's, he's wary of that right hand. Yeah. I'd like to see JJ throw the left hook, though, because... Jake Paul had a lot of success with that left hook over and over again, and he's only been throwing the the, the, the big right when he's coming in, and it just might be worth switching it up um, a little bit there. What I have seen from KSI when he throws that left hook is he does square his hips up. Uh, he squares oh. his hips up after the right hand a little bit, whereas Jake Paul's a bit more. Uh, Tommy's getting a lot of shit from the uh, KSI coaches for throwing after the bell there. Just a word. I'd say, who would you say wins that round? I, I would have thought Tommy. 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 I, I think it's two all, but I'd have KSI a point up because of the points. Because imagine if he KSI wins again because of a points deduction. You know, like against Logan, there was that. Yeah, I'll take that right now, but yeah. <laughs> but but is there an element reckon, within him that's like I, I'd like I like to win convincingly? Where that, it's like there's no there's no oh, you, yeah. got point, you know what I mean? Is the worry though that the knockout punch it's less and less likely now yes. given the fact that you're seeing. The, so much of the game plan in the early rounds was the legs of KSI mm. covering that distance, mm. that acceleration. It's calming down, and I'm not saying he won't get another wind and he can't do it, but it, it becomes less likely, right? Yeah. If we take away the points deduction, and if we take away the fact that we know that one man has had a wealth of experience in terms of being in and around boxing gyms, mm. come from a boxing family, and we just looked at it for what it is, are we all agreeing that right now, four rounds in, it's even, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. And the audience are saying that at home as well. They're saying it's two. All. My worry is, is the last two rounds have both went to Tommy's, um, and you just yeah. you don't want the tide to turn completely. Yeah. Like, this is where you want to win one back. And Ooh, KSI's it's a roughing him up. Right He's hand from KSI there. Yeah. Nice inside right hand from KSI, and it's a dirty fight, but that's what we want. Yeah, I've just had in my group chat. So this fight is so bad. KSI is lunging in like it's rugby. <laughs> KSI. Ain't a boxer. This is embarrassing for boxing. What do we think? I don't think so. I think he's he's shown boxing up. If anything, that's what you want to say. But yeah, I mean, Tommy's the boxer. It's on, the all the onus is on him to deliver. Exactly. There's mm -hmm. no expectation on KSI. Tommy is in there, and it's like, go on then. You're yeah. the pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tommy said he was going to give a master class. Yeah. I mean, it's, oh mate, this is even if Tommy wins by knockout now, they say in a master class, bro. No, no way. Not at all. Oh. Oh, fucking hell, I'm panicking every time. I, thi I think if Tommy was to win by knockout now, it shows adaptability and it yeah, shows yeah. that he's able to come through styles that maybe he didn't anticipate. Yeah, because this KSI style, like, it is very awkward for even the most, like, seasoned, like, boxer, like, because it's kind of not really boxing, it's, it's fighting. And he's like, I'm either going to, you know, he's tying him up and wrestling or he's way out of distance. Like, there's no actual, like... Mm -hmm. And you, uh, let's see, let's box. Do you know what I mean? Shout out to everyone watching. If you could hit that like button and subscribe, we're in one minute, 30 seconds of KSI versus Fury. They're clinched up right now. And uh, it, it's been a scrappy fight. And this is a, the game plan of KSI is yeah. working to a degree right now, for yeah. sure. Yeah, for sure. He's not, it's not a skill uh, based fight right now. It's a who wants it more. And that's what he needed to do. Yeah. And that's what Jake Paul didn't do. Jake Paul yeah. tried to box him. Yeah. And it was obvious how that fight was going. Whereas at least in this fight, I think... I mean, I, I think Jake had great moments, don't get me wrong, but I, I prefer this game plan right now. The only, I think for the fans, what's quite frustrating is that we'd, we'd like, isn't it interesting how the, the whole of the undercard was so entertaining and then the two main events have been quite scrappy. It's a, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I hear It's you. quite frustrating, actually. That's when there's the level of pressure for a fight, you know what I mean? Sometimes yeah. it does. There's pressure on Tommy to turn it into a boxing match, though, and he's not doing that right but it's now. But it's like the Anthony Taylor fight against Kenny. It's, it's difficult to make it a boxing match when you've got a guy that just wants to lean on your chest the whole time. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. KSI looks tired, man. Yeah, Tommy, I mean, he should be, if, right? Yeah. But the thing is, for this, if it stays scrappy like this, what Tommy needs to do to swing it in his favour is even if it's scrappy, he needs to land one or two eye-catching shots per round. Agreed. At the minute, he's not doing that. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, and then... then it, KSI's you know. brought him down to his yes. level. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's I exactly that. what's happened. I love that. That's actually... This, as you know, that's very common, though. Oh, it does. When you fight an unorthodox or a more... Go on, JJ! 
Ooh, that was I'd, dicey. I, I, I'd that actually say cool. there, though, that Tommy might have had the better of that exchange. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But they were both throwing windmills yeah. there, weren't they? Mm. One so round now, left, lads. Final round. Like, I, Tommy's, just... Tommy's probably on top, but there was a point deduction. It's, it's been close. <sighs> so, I, I don't know where this goes, man. Like, because realistically... If... You know the beauty of this last round? What? You're like, one more round, son. Go out there and give us one million percent and make this fight yours. Both camps will be saying that to this day, yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. You've got one round to prove you won this. Yeah. yeah. Make it a clear round. Um, and because so much energy has been taken from JJ, he doesn't have to worry about like going another few rounds. Mm. It's just one more. Mm. The problem is Tommy has adapted. I would say he's adapted over the rounds because he probably did lose the first two, but it's still not enough. It's, he's it's just, not good, is it? It's not good enough. It's, he needs that little bit more to make sure it's convincing. I don't think Tommy has really caught JJ with one single eye-catching wow shot. Uh, not really, no. Like, There's a few um, left hooks in close, but not... Nothing anything. that we've gone, whoa! Nah, 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 not nah, one nah. reaction, yeah. So for him, he can't be happy with this. And, and actually, the happiest of the two will be KSI. And generally speaking, when a f rounds are close, you do need that eye-catching punch yeah. To, yeah. to sway it either way. I mean, there's. If this round goes the way that the others have gone, this is probably a draw. Yeah. Be good if they could box. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, start uh, it's, like, so it's meant to be boxing, mate. Do you know what I mean? It's quite frustrating. And it, uh, imagine it is a draw. Oh, that's that's a win for KSI. Oh, massively. Immediate rematch though, if it's a draw, right? Yeah. Surely. Oh, Straight away. just fucking like just actual box. Is it, Do you know what I mean? Tommy's adapted to the what's coming back, but he hasn't adapted to what he's actually doing. He hasn't adapted to a point where he's inflicting damage. No. Yeah, he's doing no damage in there. He's fr from round one, when he has punched, he smothered himself. He yeah. hasn't. Why is his corner not to just yeah take a half a step back? Oh, go on, JJ. Come on, son. He connected there, JJ. Yeah, I think, I think they, they both, both kind of grazed each other there, but it, again, it wasn't the most. Oh. KSI landed, and then Tommy kind of replied with a similar shot. Interested to see what Big John makes of this. Nice job from JJ. Another job from JJ. Come on, son. Oh, man. I mean, this round, who's winning it? It's very hard. It's, it's very even. So even. There's an argument for either way. It's going to be a draw, isn't it? It's, it's going well, to be. I just don't know if that, that the whole, the, the point getting yeah, taken yeah, away, if, man. If you think of Tommy Fury, right? Let's, you, you know the level we're talking about. It, KSI, whenever Tommy Fury comes close, KSI dips his head at the same side every time. Yeah. Tommy Fury is, is all the experience he has, hasn't timed that yet. No. Six no. fucking rounds. Yeah. Like, for all, like, for all Tommy is the experienced pro, it's, it, the opportunities have been there for him to work out what's going on. And it, has he made some adjustments? A little bit, but it's not been great from him. Like, and I, and I, there is no pressure on JJ to come out there and put on a boxing clinic or a masterclass. He just has to be in there and be competitive. All the pressure's on Tommy here. He said, I will do this to you. I will do that to you. And uh, it ain't happened so far. Like When he's still saying he's got ambitions yeah. to become a world champion. Ah. No chance. Is, the, is it looking that way? Is it bollocks? <laughs> Is it bollocks, mate? Honestly, welcome to Misfits. You better make it your home, bro, because you ain't got anywhere else to be. Imagine Vidal Riley in there with Tommy Fury. Fucking yeah, hell. Yeah, be a school. Jesus, we'll, put, yeah, we'll have your body bag ready. Mm. Yeah. That's an assassination. Yeah. 20 seconds left of this fight. Oh, I cannot Tommy, call Tommy's it. tired, isn't he? Yeah. Mm, and, and actually. Oh, oh, good right hand by JJ, but Tommy, Tommy answers. Good right hand by both. KSI yeah. has kept up that bouncy style. It has. Yeah, man. He, he's got, he's Mate, got, he's a got great an engine. engine, like. Yeah. He's like fucking Kante, you know? Yeah. yeah. Chelsea lad. Uh, he just never stops. And not, it's all over. Not the shots. Oh, I mean, there's not a conclusive winner. Um, it's probably a draw. I, 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 I. What are you thinking, Brian? If you had to say, call it. I mean, was was Tommy the one who was a little bit better? Yeah, T but Tommy like... was probably initiating in most of the exchanges. He was probably landing more more of the shots, but none of which were very clear. There was no meaningful shot. Well, like glancing blows. Yeah. Um, it's. But then, but then also. Like, we uh, again, like, the fact we know the context behind the fight plays into this massively. So true. If you're just looking at it, on a fight, you go, that's a draw. Because of the point deduction. Because you actually go, okay, that fella, in terms of Tommy, he edged it ever so slightly. Mm. He got a point taken off. It's a draw. And I'll tell you what now, 
I'd, I'd put, and I know it's very hard to do this with a draw, but I'd put a lot of money on it. We see a draw here. But would you say Tommy lost the first two, potentially, and then won the next four, so he lost the points? He still technically won round I don't round even up. know if he won that last I don't, round. No, was, I don't know if he did even he win lost the, last the second. Round? I don't know if he even lost the second. But this is why... Well, I think he lost the second. Like, I don't know if he lost the first, but I don't even know if he won the last one. People are automatically saying he won the last one. I didn't see there was nothing in that last one apart from one good exchange when 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 rightly yeah. so we we all gave a reaction when KSI landed that right hand but not not all of us give the biggest reaction was straight away Tommy landed a right little screw shot uppercut there so are we, are we all are we in agreement and correct me if I'm wrong lads mm -hmm. in a fight like this it's kind of difficult to know what the fuck the judges are going to think and I bet you those judges deep down are thinking fucking hell I they're gonna get. It's gonna, a hard one. They're oh, gonna give very a draw. Hard. I, would have I think. So. I think the draw is a very fair outcome. Mm. Yeah, and I yeah. think. I think really, that's the JJ win then. What? If they draw, if they're drawing this fight, that's the yeah. JJ. And do you know what the goal from JJ a... was? I want to be better than Jake Paul. Well, yeah. if you get a draw against Tommy Fury and he lost, yeah, mission accomplished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but then all of a sudden, fuck off, Tommy. Get Jake in here and yeah, let's get the yeah, fight yeah, everyone yeah, yeah. actually yeah, wanted. Because yeah, yeah. we, no offense to Tommy, you're lovely, but no one fucking wanted you in this scene. No. Yeah, yeah. We wanted Jake Paul versus KSI. That but performance if, is good enough for them two to fight. Mate, that's what we wanted. I wanted, all, uh, I wanted that. Win or lose, yeah. he's, he's put on a good performance. Yeah, he's put on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Showed he's competitive if, with Tommy. So is Jake. We've got our answer. Yeah. We're, you're around the similar level. Yes. So let's see who the better man yeah, is. Yeah, now let's get the fight. And a proper want. 10 rounder or something like that. Yeah, because this is the thing. The six round bollocks, like, like it enables, no, it enables the wrestling and all that yeah, shit. Yeah. We need a boxing match. 10 to 12 fucking rounds, mate. Yeah. 100%. I want even, 10 rounds. Even though that was six rounds, though, Tommy looked just as tired as uh, Agreed. Jake Paul. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. I don't think there was much That last round was really close, in my opinion. Yeah. That's why I'm not like, mm. oh, it was 2-4. Yeah. Can so someone how, tell me what's happening? Yeah, yeah, how do we know who wins? Alex? Did they give... All right, they're teeing it up now. And in the build-up, we were told that Tommy has gone way harder in this he did see. Than, he, than, he, than he had in the Jake he Paul He did eight camp. rounds against Jake Paul. He looked just as tired, if not more, in this T fight. Tyson's Tyson. not looking confident there, he d uh, does he, he, he at all? Tyson don't care. I think Ty Tyson's, Tyson's very nervous when he's, his family are fighting. Yeah. He doesn't look happy. He's only confident when he's fighting. It's mm. cause kind of it's out of your hand. It's out of your control. And you, <laughs> and you can tell he's a control freak. You know what I mean? Mm. Logan's in the ring with KSI as well. Put the uh, prime chain on him. All right, just waiting to hear what's being said. Scores coming now. <sighs> like and subscribe if you haven't already. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone call it. I'm, I'm going to go draw. I'm going to go draw. I mean, I think the fair result is a draw. Yeah. I think no fighter de deserves the win, oh, if no, I'm honest. No, no, no. Sorry, say that again? 57-57 first <gasps> judge. We might have a majority. <laughs> 57 56 to who? Fury. Tommy Fury? Fury won. They've given it to him. Fury, Fury won. win? Fury won. Look at him. No. Oh my God. He's like he's won the lottery again. What? It's Tommy Fury, the winner. No, to be honest, I was going edging that way, but it was like, it's, it was. I was oh, ironically, oh, we got, a, we got, we got a, another uh, like split decision. Um, or a majority win, rather. It's almost identical to the Jake Paul fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So oh, now, can we get Tommy Fury the fuck nah. out of here? Because we didn't want you here anyway. Let's get Jake Paul, yeah. KSI, the fight everyone really wanted. The, the, the Jake Paul fight was a much, much clearer win for Tommy Fury than that. Yeah. I watched that Jake Paul fight earlier. I was having a little watch yeah. it and I was thinking, it's a much clearer win. But I, I would say, I feel like a bit of a snide saying, now the decision's been announced. But exactly like can, you say, can there, I ask you a question? if either man was going to win. Can I ask yeah, you a question, though? Yeah. To be fair to Jake Paul... No slight on KSI. Jake Paul landed possibly more meaningful punches on Tommy, though. Correct. It was more of a real a, a back and forward. It wasn't anywhere near as much clinching, and it was more of a boxing match. It was a so, cleaner fight, so, wasn't it? So as, mu as much as Jake was taking more punishment, it's because he was trying to punch more and trying to engage more in an actual, you know... The ironic thing match. here is Tommy's took the win there. KSI's took the loss. If there's either fighter out of the two of them now, you're saying, where do they go from here? It's Tommy. Oh, where, what's, mate, what is the logical get the, fight? Tommy for... can fuck off, man. I've got no interest in watching him fight again after that. Like, with all due respect, you fought two YouTubers and scraped the decision. I don't care what your last name is. You ain't needed here, mate. You were here for personality, big game, uh, big names and all of that. You don't bring that, man. So the thing, the thing the is, I'll be, I'll be real. I think against KSI... 
almost any professional boxer, not any, I won't say any, but the style in which he fought then, I feel like any traditional boxer would struggle to box mm, and yeah. it would be and it would be a scrapage of a win because KSI nullified the game plan of Tommy very, very well there. And I feel like, yeah, Tommy, you know. But the point with Tommy is you've shown that you're not a level above these guys. You, no. are, uh, you are the same level. You've gone to a split decision with one and a draw and you've edged it on, on the judges' scorecards. You haven't shown anything that says you're any like pro boxer that you've made out to be. No. It's bollocks. I do disagree with that because I think there's a lot of pro boxers who would make light work of KSI. Of my, like, I, I, you disagree with Joe? Yeah, like I think yeah. he's a one-trick prony. Like He's got that... Leap in right hand. I don't think he's got much else really, mm. and I think there's a lot of pro boxers who would have dealt with that Mate. a lot. It, to me, all it does is confirm the level at which Tommy Fury's at. That's all it does yeah. for me. KSI's right where he should be. Really, yeah, he's an influencer, an influencer boxing. Yeah, yeah. whereas Tommy Fury is not what he's claiming to be in my eyes. The thing is now as well, right? So you can see KSI is completely rejecting that what's just happened. He's not accepting it, which is fair. I mean, which you can argue enough, the decision without yeah. a doubt. But where now? Do, do, like, do you think KSI will go with this? It's got to be Jake Paul, man. Tommy, you go do the dishes for Molly, and we want to see a real fight now. We want to see the one everyone really wanted. We never wanted Tommy. Fuck but, him. But do you not think He's, KSI you know would want to get back? Yeah, but do you not this think KSI is going to want to so get back? so much money off of being a fraud. Yes, but irrelevant. <laughs> He's taken something from KSI now. He's going to want to get that back, I think. You think... Oh. You think... Of, I would love to... Oh, oh, I'd love to hear this. It. I'd love to He's hear saying, this. You didn't win. How many jabs did you land? How many jabs did you land? You mean you... It's got rematch all over it. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I want the Jake Paul fight. But man. if it I is a rematch, it's, it's got to be over I don't need to round. see Tommy Fury ever again. I want to go to the pro ranks and meet a switch off from him and I never want to watch him again because you're Why? only here because you're the pro. Can, can I, You've shown you're not that much better than them. What the fuck are you doing? Can here I then? say something though? Like uh, we, we've said it time and time again that context is everything here, right? If Tommy Fury wasn't Tyson Fury's little brother, we'd look at it and we'd go, you've come into the influencer boxing scene. You beat Anthony Taylor, who we all know is a bogeyman of influencer boxing, very dangerous. Mm. You beat Jake Paul, you've beat KSI. Well, they're all very close fights. Yeah, fair enough. Mm. But he has beat these guys. So because the fact that he said, I aim for world titles and because the fact uh. he's like, Last name is Fury. We're obviously, you know, you know, feeling this way about him. But if you just judge him in the industry he's in right now, which is influencer boxing, I don't think you'd actually say that. I think you'd actually go, all right, no, let's see you against that, Idris Virgo. I mean, if me auntie had bollocks, should be me uncle, is the old saying. Like, yeah. This man has been boxing since he was six years old. KSI took this up, fought Joe Weller, had a couple more fights with Logan Paul a year later, took three years off, come back, I'll have a few more fights, then fought Tommy Fury. In no way, shape or form on any planet should he be able to go that close with Tommy Fury. If you're, if, if John Fury sips his little whiskey at night and he looks at it, he'd go, fuck me, you're not a lot. You're not, you're not made for this. Like, you're like not what you're taught. World titles, forget it. If a Prince Nassim was watching this, he'd go, he should quit. Yeah. It's over for him. <laughs> Sometimes in, in fights, like I remember Froch v. Groves, once, yeah. they, 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 no matter who gets uh, the result in the fight and who's the winner, there is a person that will come away with a moral victory in those fights. And obviously in this one, KSI is the one that not only has come away with a moral victory here, he's the one that's come away with more options here, that, that has more possibilities of different avenues Correct. we'd like to yeah. see him go down. Whereas for Tommy Fury... The disappointing thing <laughs> for him here is the only fight I really want to see him in is Idris Virgo, and that don't pay a oh, tenth of and, and what you know, KSI And you know you're, you're in the minority in that. Like, would other people watch it? Yeah, I mean, they'd tune in, but they ain't paying pay-per-view money that no, you've man. been getting. So I, I hope you saved what you've made off the last two because they, they should just fuck him off. The whole point of Misfits was, to, like, we want Jake Paul KSI. But this guy was just brought in because Jake Paul thought, yeah, fuck it, mm. I'll, I'll, I'll have a fight with him. Like, I don't know but why we need him again. I will say one thing. I remember I had a fight with someone. I actually won it. It was a close decision, and I was desperate to rematch him. Knowing a fighter's mentality, mm -hmm. Jake Paul and Tommy, uh, Jake Paul and KSI, sorry, both now sit there knowing that Tommy Fury has got a win over both of them. And that means there's two real legitimate options out there for him for a next fight. And those are? Jake Paul and KSI. I think they should just fight each other. Yeah, they should. No, they know. should. That and I'd rather we watch want. that. That is what everybody wants. fighter's mindset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the thing. It's like, there's going to be, he's, gonna, he's got, got to go to sleep every single night knowing this man beat me. And KSI being KSI... He's going to want to fucking avenge that before anything. And I think he's going to look at what Jake Paul did. Jake Paul, he, he gave the opportunity to fight Jake Paul. 
after Jake Paul lost to Tommy Fury and Jake Paul was like, now nah, I want to do some comeback fights and get my confidence up. And KSI, there's going to be an ele element where he's like, well, I've just lost. I, I now want to fucking get back and get back on my, you know, on the horse in, in that sense. So I wouldn't be surprised if you see that Tommy rematch. You, you, you know the reason I'm, I'm, I'm and I know I'm, I'm drunk and all of that, right? But I'm actually thinking like, so the whole point of Tommy Fury and the context of it was, is he's a Fury, he's a pro, he is the gold standard. We've seen he ain't the gold standard. Yeah. The, the cloak of deception has been revealed and we now know you're just a decent boxer who should be way better than you are for all the years that you've been getting coached by your family and you've turned up, you're marginally better yes. than the best guys we have. However... But you should be way better. Yes, correct. But this actually lays into the rematch happening more because it gives KSI the feeling that he could actually beat him more. If it was a schooling, he'd probably go, you know what? I got beat fair and square. He's the better man. Let me now go to Jake Paul. But because it was quite close, mm. KSI is going to feel he can get him back. And I think that's what he's going to do. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You, as you, much as we think all of this, and that's what we want, this is the facts, I think. You know what the other option is here? The other option is we get what we want in terms of KSI and Jake Paul fighting each other. Logan Paul, like I said before, looks at that and goes, Tommy limped over the line. I'm going to be the man that beats him. Yeah, now. so you have Jake Paul, KSI, main event, Tommy Fury, Logan Paul, Co-main of the next And that part. is pay-per-view. <laughs> <laughs> Back in hell, guys. Yes, boys. Yes. It was a great oh. night. I mean, look. Protect this hell. Uh, the last... <laughs> 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 we fucking hate this outfit. Um, shout out to everyone uh, who watched. Big love to all of you lot out there. Don't forget to hit that like button. And uh, big love to all of the boys. Um, it was a great night. Uh, what was your fight of the night, lads? Let me oh, know. I think Slim doing what he did, I thought that was phenomenal. Joint with what Wallage Sharks did with Dean the Great. I yeah. thought that was fantastic. What are you saying, Loza? Probably, Pierre, yeah, probably the, what Slim did, to be fair, stopping, because I, 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 even though I did, was probably the only one who predicted the win. Was <laughs> I, or, did. But yep. I wasn't expecting to stop him. I wasn't expecting that, so I'd probably go to him. I'd go Wallage Sharks against Dean the Great. Dean the Great did very, very well. And I'm very much looking forward to going through him like a hot knife through butter. Hey! <laughs> we got it. We got it. Joshua's your favourite I, I think the Salt Pappy fight was a really, really good one. I yeah. enjoyed that a lot. What about you? Uh, do you know what? Early on in the night, the heavyweight boys, um, <laughs> I, we haven't mentioned it, so I'm going to mention it because obviously the, the, the Dean the Great Waleed was fucking box office. Uh, but the heavyweight lads early on, I got to give them respect. I mean, it wasn't the most pretty, but man, were they digging deep and they were like, mm. you know, getting the fuck beaten out of them, the pair of them. Um, so yeah, we're going to wrap this up here. Big love to all of you lot. Don't forget to keep it locked on the True Jody YouTube channel. Shout out to Joe Weller. We're in there, lad. Shout out to Loza Osweki. Shout out to my boy Joey and Josh. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot. <laughs>